The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Monday, May 24th, 2000, and 21 years after zero, and we have a lot to talk about. Yeah! Shout to Twine for that beat drop, and just... A few days ago, I felt as if there was a chance we were in a sports drought. We were in a time where there wasn't going to be a lot to talk about. Turns out, I was 100% wrong. Yesterday was one of the greatest sports days I've had in some time. There was a 50-year-old man trying to climb back to the top of the PGA mountain. The lefty, the degenerate gambling. Other stories have been told to me via text messages from A.J. Hawk immediately after his triumph yesterday and his win. But anyways, legendary man, massive Cavs, hits a 366-yard bomb in closing time to win a PGA championship and become the oldest human ever in the history of golf to win a major. That happened yesterday. That in and of itself, Amazing. Yeah. Congrats, Phil. Amazing. Thank you, Phil. Congrats to Phil Mickelson. The scene became a wild one. It looked like Happy Gilmore while ever he was walking. They said that they shot some scenes from the legend of Bagger Vance down there at Kiwa Island. It looked like a little bit of Bagger Vance at the end of that thing whenever they're walking down the end. Phil Mickelson, I believe, got bombarded a little bit. Saw him stressed out a little bit. Thought his back was hurt from all the drunks that were... I didn't see one mask down. No, nope. no, no. So, a bunch of drunk whites 
that beat COVID, mm -hmm. <laughs> were harassing Phil, making it an electric environment. Mal Brooks Kepka had quite a bad day. Then he came on strong at the end. It was amazing. It was magnificent. It was like, okay, we have a Sunday. It reminded us of when Tiger made the run back in the day. It was two nostalgia pops on a golf course when the world needed it most. And you would think to yourself, like, that can't be the only thing that happened here. New York Knicks, Madison Square Garden oh, sold out. How you yeah. doing? Keep it moving. Incredible. Trey Young sucks the soul out of that whole place. But mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden all the way back. How you doing? Keep it moving. Did we beat COVID? Feels like we beat COVID. Not only that, then also LeBron James loses yesterday in Phoenix to one of Kardashian's boyfriends. That guy was on fire, absolutely. <laughs> then the Bruins, they beat the Capitals, yeah. move on. Yesterday was an amazing day in the sports world. Honestly thought we had 2,000 things to talk about on this beautiful Monday here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, uh -huh. and YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. But to be honest, a lot of conversation has to happen around two things today as well. Aaron Rodgers is singing karaoke in Hawaii. Ooh. Okay, yeah. he's dancing and singing, having the time of his life in Hawaii, which, by the way, earned and deserved. He's out there with the son of a bitch that's in Top Gun. What's yeah, his name? Miles Taylor. And his lady, I guess they're having a blast out there. OTA started today for the Green Bay Packers. He is not there. Okay, he is still in the middle of whatever's going on with the Packers. Who knows if an extension's coming? Who knows if a trade is happening? Right now, he's in Hawaii having a great time, getting exploited by at Aloha dot Akoni, who is probably losing his job as these videos continue <laughs> to surface. I, I would assume Aaron is not staying at a cheap place. I would assume the workers at this place aren't supposed to, uh, you know, record the people that are, are staying there and broadcast it, even if it is fucking Aaron Rodgers, but he's living his best life yep. as a Packers fan at Ty Schmidt. How do you feel about this, knowing that he's happy? They'll be able to figure things out. Is this a sign of good things that come for the Green Bay Packers or a bad thing for the Green Bay Packers? Well, like you said, I mean, obviously, he's he's earned it. He deserves it. I'm glad to see that he's happy, but... You see this, you see how happy he is. He's strumming that guitar like he's been playing it for 15 years, and we got football going on, and it does not look like he is in any hurry to either fix that or get back to Green Bay, which I guess I don't I don't blame him, but, yeah, it's it's not great. So that could be the story for us to talk about, okay, mm -hmm. because OTAs are happening. A lot of buildings are getting filled with players right now. Now, there are still some buildings that don't have any players, but Aaron Rodgers doing anything, getting documented and publicly seen is always going to be – then another one popped off this morning in other NFL storylines. Um, Shannon Sharp, who is legend of a football player, have no idea how he was a seventh round draft pick just at the end of the day. Hall of Fame stud. Him and Skip go after it every single morning, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is amazing. This morning, Shannon Sharp I don't know if he called or somebody who did he call? Yeah, I think so. He called. He, he calls Julio Jones, who was seen in a Cowboys jersey this week or a Cowboys hoodie this weekend. He calls Julio Jones on the spot to ask him, hey, what's going on? Because I assume Skip is getting very excited about him potentially being a cowboy and right. all this. Julio Jones answers. And we get some information out of the Atlanta Falcons Julio Jones situation that is just live on the air and absolutely incredible reporting by Shannon Sharp. Did Julio know he was being recorded or he was live? We have no idea, but I do know this came out of that conversation this morning. Uncle, what's going on, bro? Man, nothing much. Got to go meet up with my brother. What's happening with you? Man, look, you want to go to the Cowboys, Julio, or you want to stay in Atlanta? Oh, man, no, nah, I'm out of there, man. You He's out. out. He's out of there. Oh, Are you scared. going to? <laughs> ideally, where would you like to go? Uh, right now, I'm just. See, I want to win. Okay. Yeah. We don't go to Dallas. If you go, to, you ain't winning in Dallas, Julio. Uh, I, yeah, I well, then after that, actually, he, he laughs and says, oh, I already know. So, yeah. like, <laughs> so there was like quite a shot, that whole thing. But him saying, I'm out of there. Is that the first time? I mean, Atlanta has come out. It's been you know, kind of, uh, I guess, reported a couple of, they were asking for a one going into uh, the draft. That's allegedly out there. Now they're definitely looking to shop him. Now you're Julio, like, I'm out of there. So I don't know what Chris Ballard is doing. 
But what Chris Ballard needs to do is get in on the game. Mm. And I, by the way, I'm sure I'm not the only fan of a team that's thinking this exact thing. God. At Boston Connor was thinking this this morning with the New England Patriots. Get them up there, especially with the whole offensive revamp that they have. Packers, even though your quarterback's singing uh, a little karaoke in Hawaii, you get Julio that's Jones. How you bring him home. You mm. get him two. Uh-uh. You get him two fucking guitars if you want to. People are saying the Niners. Obviously, there's a lot of teams that would want Julio Jones. I think this could become a little bit of a. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a who can out offer who? Yeah. A little bit of a auction? Shall yeah. We say? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you could say that. Oh. A little bit of a, uh, okay, you got uh, one and a three in the NFL. This weekend, Connor and I were able to go to something that was absolutely electrifying. Yep. Everybody knows that uh, me and my wife sit at home and watch random shit. <laughs> one of the most random things we've encountered that has become a binge watch for us almost every single week at this point. Mika Motto auctions, okay? It's on NBC Sports. NBC Sports actually plays this more than they play Sidney Crosby, which by the way, I think they should split time equally, but yeah. Meekum has become one of my go-tos at this point because I'm a car guy, love cars. Then Meekum comes to Indianapolis, okay? So the show is in town. Got a chance to go on Saturday. Connor came. My wife got the tickets all set up. We had a table. We did the whole thing. We walk in there. Welcome to the fucking show. Yeah. We, you're literally dropped in there, and it's like, oh, my God, this is exactly what the show. You got these cars passing. Some of them, there was a bid for $2.8 million for a car, okay? And I don't know if it was on the wow. phone, on the internet, or in the room. And they said, all right, well, actually, not good enough. Gonna have to keep going. We'll, we'll move this one. Two po- Somebody said, I'll pay $2.8 million for that car down there. And they're like, yeah, not enough. Sorry, we're gonna have to do this later. It, we're talking electricity. You're talking, it was awesome. It was amazing. I, if a Mecham auto auction comes to your town, and you like cars at all, I'm a big fan of cars. Big, big fan of cars. It is worth the watch, just the shit that they have there behind the scenes and everything. But what I didn't realize from watching on TV that I got to experience live is the quarterback of that whole thing, mm-hmm. okay, the lead man. Oh, yeah. The, uh, what is that, the... the, the Auctioneer? What? No, the, yes, but you just gave it away. But the, um, who sings uh, in the band? Who who sings in the band? Like the vocalist? The lead singer, what is it? Like the front man is yeah, what yeah. Mm-hmm. The front man, every, the star of this entire auction is the auctioneer, okay? And they get up there and their mouths, I don't know how the hell it operates, I don't know how the hell it goes, it's one of the most impressive things, but they are controlling the room, okay? Yeah. And then you got these little guys and girls around the room and they're supposed to like find the people in their area who potentially and by the way there's a there's seats up here too so there's people up in the crowd it is it is a real thing and i think the auctioneers are communicating with all these people at the same time and they're saying things there was this one particular guy okay he has a cowboy they had numerous auctioneers up there cowboy hat on all right all black flipping the hammer pointing at people ho 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 a couple of those he came over as soon as we walked in i tweet the auctioneer at this place is a weapon he comes over, shakes my hand. We're talking country boy. Now, hey, we got this oh, guy. Yeah. Doesn't have Twitter. All right, doesn't do any of this shit. Gave me a card. He said, hey, here's my card. Do you ever want to reach out and have me on? Or ever want to reach out for anything good? I said, hey, any chance you come on the show today? He said, yes, ladies and gentlemen, the most electrifying human I have ever watched live. Matt Moore. Yeah! yeah! How are you, pal? Good, Pat. How are you guys doing? Okay, so where, where are you? You just went right back to the woods. So you go auctioneer here in Indianapolis, and you go right back into the woods right there. It looks like you're in a you're in the middle of a camp somewhere, in a cabin somewhere. Where are you, Matt? No, I'm in my bar, up in my barn. Oh, that's Ooh, beautiful. Huh? You're a Miller Lite guy, I see? Oh, well, yeah, we've got Miller Lite. We've got uh, Bud Dry, Coors Light, everything. There's a little bit of everything in here. Well, so, A.J. Uh, Hawk's going to be pumped about that Miller Lite. He's an influencer for them. Uh, Matt. <laughs> When I walked into that auction, I had no idea what to expect. I might have been on cloud I don't know, 30 or 40 when we came in. Got home mm-hmm. late from uh, SmackDown as well. When I walked in there, though, it, w- the environment was, we're talking, it was awesome in there. You're up there with it. The, I did not know what to expect. Is that what it's like every single week with Meekum? And you guys just kind of travel around and do this everywhere? And is it the same result? It was magnificent to be there in person, Matt. We travel all around the country. We we hold auctions just about every corner of the of the lower forty eight. But yeah, you wanna you wanna create an electrifying environment. You're talking people into spending, like you were just saying before, two point eight million dollars on a car and I've got four minutes to sell it to you. 
So I'm not going to, I'm not just going to walk up and say, well, would you like to bid 2.8 million or, or I'm going to go, yeah, but if I'm going to get 2.8, get it, get nine, get it, 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 get $3 million. Now get it, get $3 million. Come on, give it two. Get it, get two. Get it. Okay. That, that got you up out of your seat. That makes you want to bid. <laughs> causes momentum momentum causes people to give more than probably what they're willing to give on the spots or even in thinking when you come into a room and you see a Duesenberg model j and you think i need that thing in my garage so we as auctioneers as the people on the floor what we call the ring men or the ring women or ring persons we need to create that environment of excitement and mecham is more than just an auction it's an event it's a lot of entertainment. Oh. Uh, an auctioneer told me years ago, the auction business is 90% entertainment and 10% BS. Well, so. <laughs> let's talk about the 10% BS then, because as you're up there, do you have to practice? I assume you have to practice that, or is that just a natural thing? How did you get to the point where you're able to 10? Well, How'd you get to that point there? A lot of practice, but I was born into a family of auctioneers. My mom and dad uh, owned an auction business. Fucking phenom, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Are yeah. you the LeBron James of auctioneering? I'm sorry? Are you like the LeBron James, Peyton Manning of auctioneering? Like, did they know oh, from no. a young age, hey, Matt's going to have He's this got guy. it. This guy's going to have Did they know that? Is, have you been, like, bred to be an auctioneer at this point? Kind of. Yeah, kind of. When I when I first got into it, Meekum was was a lot smaller. Uh, it, it's been it's been family run since day one, which I like about it. I think the best auction companies out there are family run businesses. So I got introduced before television, years before we went on uh, TV for the first time. And we kind of worked our way up to that status with our clientele and eventually got into the mainstream. The company grew three, four hundred percent. And here we are today. But yeah, I was I was recruited young because I worked with some of the auctioneers that worked for the company at the time. And there I was I started working with a couple of them when I was 13. And they're like, you on the road with us someday. So yeah, I was, I was, uh, I, I'm the Tiger Woods maybe since everybody knew about him, he was an up and comer. Okay, he's coming on the scene, coming on the scene, and here we are. Well, so. I don't know what you do with your personal life, but stay away from the Denny's because it could get you. <laughs> but if you're the Tiger Woods of, uh, if you're the Tiger Woods of auctioneering, <laughs> yeah. we're talking to Matt. Or like tur turkey hunting this morning. Oh, oh hey, how did we do? How'd you do? Uh, too windy, stunned them. They went off the other direction. Uh. Can you call them back? <laughs> yeah. Hey, fight the yeah. wind a little bit there, Turk. Because uh, when you're saying those things, and I think, you know, I mean, everybody knows about auctioneers. I've been to, you know, a couple galas or whatever, and they've asked me to auctioneer and like try to MC and kind of run it up or whatever. It is an impossible gig. Okay, it is impossible. That you using your voice though inflection and like getting people ready to go i was bullied into buying the jeep that i buy i mean by yep. by the yep. auctioneer he was like oh you don't look like a guy that's going to quit I, you he actually said that you guys say things in between the numbers i think that's what i was it's hard not to just pay attention to you guys the entire time by the way you you sit in there and me and connor and my wife like cars were going you get a look at him you're like oh that's an awesome car not one i'm gonna buy and then you immediately just watch the auction it's like you're a live show in the world you guys are saying things in those quick little beats. Like, I think I heard a couple times, like, gun any more than blah, 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 blah. Like, you're like, there's little, how, what are you saying in there? Does that change? Do you pre, do you have to write that shit down beforehand? Or is that just all coming naturally while you're up there? You got to figure it out. Well, for me, it comes natural, but it, it's, they're called filler words and filler phrases. So in, in auctioneer school, the basics, they're going to teach you uh, one, got her down, two, got a bid now, three, got a bid down, four. And then with enough practice, you can start throwing in filler phrases like, I'm bid, anybody want to give? So I'm bid, anybody want to give one? I'm bid, anybody want to give one? I'm bid, anybody you you speed it up and you add to it. And to, for me, I don't even, I really don't think about it. I can be up on the block thinking about, uh, you know what, I, th I think we should probably go to this some restaurant downtown and be, let's make reservations for seven. But I'm, I, I don't really think about what I'm saying up on the block unless something's going on. Maybe one of my maybe one of my ring guys are talking with you and I might 
I might throw a little bit in there. Better video, better video. I got watch him. Better video, better video. You're going to be on his podcast tomorrow. I'll give it about him. Better video, better video. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, we we, commu- we communicate. We say things all the time on the block that a lot of the public doesn't catch, but a lot of the ring people will because they know me. I'm going to say something completely off the wall, and they're going to s- Oh, he talked about that. Yeah, you're right. Then, <laughs> so, yeah, we get laughs all the time about it. So all those ring people in there, you up there, the people that are running the cars, moving the cars, they all travel yeah. every single week. That's everybody is kind of together there. Because I think whatever you and I chatted, you said something about maybe 21 years or 2013, you going up to the block, I forget when, but you used to be one of the uh, yeah. ring uh, person. Ring yeah, and then you kind of like moved up onto the block to be an auctioneer. But then we walked around the building. There was people auctioning auctioning off like uh postcards in the yeah. back there's like so is that it's it's very similar to the wwe now very obviously different yeah. worlds or whatever but it feels like is that just one big family on the road because we talked to one person and they're like uh debbie will actually help you with that or whatever and they're like when you see debbie show now and then david will be able. it felt like everybody was together is that you guys just pick up the whole operation, just move it city to city, because I think that's why it works so well. The only time where it felt like there was a little bit of a delay was after I had bought the Jeep that I got bullied into by the auctioneer. I mean, it was a magical moment, but I did get bullied into it a little bit publicly. And, you know, I mean, I thought I had the right plan to, hey, listen, Matt, you came up to me too. You you told me exactly what was gonna happen, by the way. Matt, Matt came in, he sat next to me, he came down and we talked a little bit. And he was like, you know, some people come in here and they got like $100,000 just burning a hole in their pocket and they're probably going to spend a little bit more but they're going to get something cool then you got some dealers here that could potentially try to make some plays where exactly what you said was going to happen to me happened to me you know i mean literally exactly but the only thing after i bought it buying a car takes a lot like like signatures and all that we had to wait like maybe 45 minutes but doing so we just walked around then we go to the back the closing process was very efficient. Yeah. It felt like it felt like they all knew exactly what it was. It's a machine you guys have over there. I'm very thankful as a fan of the show that you guys are doing it right over there, though. Like I, I think it, I was very, very fucking impressed with what you guys are doing. Thank you. Well, we we like to think of it as a well-oiled machine. And what you, what you were watching on the other side of the wall that was the memorabilia portion. So we're selling cars in one building, and on the other side we were selling a lot of car memorabilia. So, like, when Parnelli Jones Bronco came across the auction block, uh, later on that day, we sold his helmet, we sold a lot of the race suits, we sold things from his office and everything like that. And that was in the other building that uh, I think you were going to refer to our side as maybe the SmackDown while well, NXT was going on. Ooh! And, okay. and, yeah, wrestling fan, too. So, them guys were, wow. they were holding, the huge wrestling fan. Uh, them guys were holding a lot of uh, a lot of the memorabilia portion in the backside. Uh, my brother was over there. Another a young lady from the state of Illinois who's a great auctioneer. I don't know if you got to hear her at all. Uh, the, the, another yeah. a really big yeah, guy that was a big boisterous voice up on the block. He was from Pennsylvania. He's helped us with cars for years. So yeah, we've got a lot of other factions going on in that auction. But from from the check in procedure to buying a car to the checkout process to getting it from our our auction floor to your garage door your garage floor that's kind of our motto within the company Mecham is a very uh very step-by-step process and we're very customer oriented because that's what makes us one of the top auction companies in the world is we want you to come we want you to experience the Mecham experience we we'll want you to have fun be entertained oh yeah like you're as like you're saying and uh and we want we want it to be a fun process where we want these people to come back and Believe it or not, we actually have what I'd kind of call auction groupies. We have not only just our our auction personnel that comes from auction to auction, we actually have followers that come to every single auction across the country. Uh, And they will sit sit in the front row and write down every price, and they they watch us absolutely religiously. It's a show. It's a live show. It is is very – because I'm somebody – a lot of people don't know this, but I'm, like, super cultured, dude. Oh, yeah? Saw Hamilton live. No Mm, deal. Love that. Yeah, he got killed by Aaron Burr, (laughs) sir. He's a real son of a bitch. But, like, the – I enjoy watching people perform in front of others because whenever you're standing up – and, by the way, the set – 
awesome Top set. Of the line. I mean, this set is vast. It's big. It's raised. There's great lighting. They even got their sponsors, State Farm, I think. They're, they're sponsored across the top in like a cool fashion. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful. But you got to perform because everybody's sitting there like, like, hey, guy in a cowboy hat, let's go. And then you... For 30 minutes at a time, you guys went in there. It was just like a new show, a new act was happening. Do you guys all get along? All the auctioneers? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We uh, most of us, most of us between myself and and the personnel on the floor, the ring men and ring women that are working down there, we we work together. Most of us on a on a weekly, if if not almost a daily basis. So we we, we we hold a lot of chemistry, and then we bring that chemistry around. Once or twice a month, we get to work with one another. I see most of these people than I do than I see my own family most of the time. So we're we're a very tight knit bunch. Well, it's a hundred million dollars in sales. It just at the Indianapolis one. I mean, congrats! Yeah. I'm happy I could contribute that. I mean the uh, the processing fee. I. I, I I seen the uh, stage, you know, whenever I, I saw that. But, hey, you got to do what you got to do. I would have never seen that cheap if it wasn't for Meekum. What do you have? Con Connor was here as well. I think you got a chance to meet him. Yeah, unbelievable job on Saturday, man. I'm sure all the uh, auctions go that well. But there's a few times where you were double tapping the hammer and, you know, you felt like you were really in the zone. Is that how you kind of feel it is when you're double tapping, you're just going? Yeah, sometimes I'll rap on that thing several times. I'll get to go on. This is long, long story short, but we had we actually had a uh, somebody who served overseas that heard me hitting the gavel too many times. He says, I got to leave the room. I think there's going to be shrapnel. Oh, here. geez. PTSD. <laughs> is <Lord. going> <laughs> yeah. So I, I tend to I tend to rap on a little bit loud. But uh, but yeah, sometimes, you know, I, I need oh, yeah. to get these people's attention. So I'll rap on it a, a three, four times or something like that. But uh, the the gavel thing really has nothing to do with what I'm doing up there. It's it's just a prop. But and it all comes down to with the fall of the gavel. When I say sold, that's really when it comes into play. But the rest of the time I'm flipping it. I'm pointing it this direction or that direction. I might be thinking of something, but it yeah, Bro. it's. I so, listen, NBC Sports. I've watched this a, a lot of it because just strictly the cars, like the cars, are a show in of itself. You on your card, you have the bullet Mustang. What was it like? How many millions? Three point four. Three point four <laughs> million dollars. Like you, the cars are unbelievable. You're talking about like seeing cars that you've never seen. The bubble car that was there, the oh, Batmobile. Yeah. There's like such a wide variety of things that are showing up because they know that money's in the room, on the phones, and on the internet. So like people want to get their shit through there. So you're getting to see, but. They need to have, they need to have an ISO on that block yes. up there. Uh, you guys are the show. Then like the whenever you guys hit a button, I think it like a chicken pops up over your head, and you even say yeah. like, ah, don't bet a chicken, don't bet a chicken. <laughs> and then like the, the 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 chicken is on this massive screen, like pecking at the person who's like contemplating like, do I want to spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on it? It's like a chicken, like yeah, 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 you do, bitch. You know, <laughs> it's awesome. It is, it is yeah. an incredible show. Go ahead, Ty. Matt, Pat just kind of alluded to it about knowing that there's money in the room like when you guys travel around do you earmark or, or like uh look at who's going to be there and say like hey this is a potentially like you know pretty big fish that uh we should you know try to go after and also uh, about like people on the phone does that take you out of the rhythm at all like when you have to kind of placate to who's on the phone as well as who's there live not really we've uh, in in the last year with uh, the whole pandemic and everything that's gone on, a, a lot of our auctions we were only able to hold to a certain capacity. So, and it, and and then by choice, a lot of people decided to stay home, and so we have phone bidding on one side of the block, and then we actually have another clerk that's down below that's holding internet bidding. So it, it really doesn't take a whole lot out of our rhythm. It's just you're just hearing where where the direction of where the bids are coming from because the clerk that's taking in the internet bids, she's sounding off just like anybody that's out on the floor. So really, you, you take it all in stride. It's it's not really that hard to learn, but, but we, it's something that we've definitely uh, taken into use here. In the, it, definitely in the last year, our, our phone and internet bidding has, has become so popular now, and a lot of people um, felt that was the way they wanted to go in the last year, but we still, we still, as you guys saw, we still have thousands of people coming in attendance because they want to be there and they want to see the cars. But then there's you get the kind of buyers that they want to remain anonymous. 
and they've probably they were probably there earlier in the week they saw the cars in person and then they might go back to their hotel room or they might go back to their house or somewhere and they just we 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 do have a lot of anonymous bidders that just want to remain anonymous and that's still that's okay too but we take that all in stride one hundred sixty thousand dollars to the internet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's how yep. it, it's a very like funny like tagline at the end to the phone <laughs> mm -hmm. that's not in the room the 2.8 million dollar big goes on thing that mm -hmm. was that was insane to me because i think it was in the room i think it was in the room somebody made that offer it might have been on the internet i'm not 100 yep. sure i don't remember but i thought to myself somebody in here just said i will pay 2.8 million today i will write a check for 2.8 million dollars for that car right there and they're sitting amongst us here. who the fuck is that <laughs> like, yeah. like you know what i mean like i i that's i would assume a lot of people are thinking that whenever you see like me walk into the room if anybody even knew i existed but if you see somebody that you know is potentially a big fish i assume that there is a thought amongst everybody in me i'm like okay hey that person is gonna like for me Everybody knew I was going to buy a car. I was going to buy a car on Saturday. It was like, which one? Don't know, but I was going to buy a car. Is that even a thought, a strategy, or do you kind of just let it play out however it is? Or do you know when some big fish come in there? So, yeah, some do. We do, we know a lot of, like I said, a lot of our regular clientele. We know, okay, this guy likes to buy Porsches. This guy's really big on uh, foreign muscle, anything that's fast. If it's got two turbos in it, or okay, we know he's going to bid on it. Or even even the, the smaller stuff, uh, a lot of guys like F body uh, Camaros and, and Firebirds. And so, yeah, a lot of our a lot of our clientele, we do know. And if they are there in attendance, uh, they probably keyed us in a little bit on what they're interested in, what they want to buy. And yeah, we'll we'll key on them. We don't want to point them out. We don't want to we don't want to you know totally call them out because everybody wants to r remain and have that level of privacy when they're bidding on something but yeah we as as professionals we you do have to know your crowd you do have to know your surroundings and and we we key to that pretty well i think with within our company we like i said we've got a lot of the regulars and they're the reason they are regulars is because they love the way mika auctions handles them <sighs> i fuck i i connor after i bought the jeep because it was a, but I think you guys were in commercial break or something too, yeah. which is great for us because we have, you know, some cell phone stuff and nobody's really seen it. it I mean, I was standing at one point. I, I screamed. The other person was going. There was some clapping happening in the arena. And then as soon as I win, I sit back down or whatever. It's like, okay, I just fucking bought it. I mean, I didn't expend it. I didn't expect to buy a Jeep for that much money, but I mean, it is Let's a Jeep go. with a Hemi. Let's go. And then the next car comes up and Connor sitting right next to me. He's like, I don't know how you're not just buying this thing. <laughs> Every single just one. Just because like the energy of just like, hey, 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 yeah. hey, how do it? You know? And it's like, it's infectious in there. I can see how people want to come back for sure. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Matt, you mentioned the increase in the internet and phone sales. Has there been a thought to maybe put up like a scoreboard to motivate one of the groups to, you know, start buying a little bit more cars or no? Yeah. But Matt, by the way, before you answer that, we were, I was at least, I mean, can't help it. But as we're watching, we're like, well, this would be something pretty cool if we could add. <laughs> this would be something pretty cool to add. The scoreboard from the internet, the phones in the room on who bought what and how much money has been spent would be a great piece of information for people to have, I think. It might be. I could, I could see where something like that could be done. You know, I have to talk to our AV and our IT people about it, but I'm sure something, I'm okay. sure something like that could be done could be thought of i mean your set is 45 yards long That's there has to be it yeah. is it's a 11, 11 semis it takes to haul that the entire set all of our booths the the set the stage the lighting and everything else behind us, the tote board that's behind the one that's usually behind me. Yeah. That tote board and all the screens that's all interlocked together. It's it's eleven semis worth. It takes it uh I actually was just talking to one of the guys that's on the crew. It it takes them about uh, a little less than a day to put it up when everybody gets in sync and and they they come in. But we have engineers have, that have to design how the lighting hangs from the ceiling. <laughs> Where everything's got to go, where the wiring's got to come in, the electricity and all that. So yeah, it's it's a it's a process. It's just more than just walking in and go. Okay, 
we'll put up some of this stuff over here. We'll put this over here. <laughs> hey, add a scoreboard. Yeah, yeah. That's what we just did. Put it right there. Yeah, we apologize for doing that. Uh, nothing but the utmost respect for what you guys do. Would have never right. guessed that the first 30 minutes of my show would be dedicated to it, but you guys do a hell of a job, and uh, I appreciate the uh, hospitality. Any way you could give us a... Uh, a uh, uh, brr into break here. You know what I mean? Like run us into break. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, just somehow get us into a commercial break here. We can do that. I could have been a million dollar bid. Get 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 a million Get a million dollar bid. Now get a million dollar bid. Get a million Get two. Get a million dollar bid. 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 Get Thank you, Matt. So close. So close. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, man. Well, I thought we were friends. Yeah, I know. What are you going to do? I mean, we, that would have been a clip we would have used there. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Can't use it now. Really like that guy, too. Me, too. Loved him. Yeah. But he does. He doesn't. He literally, you know, business card. Hey, do you have any social? No, no socials. I'm, no. Doing mm. I'm doing this for like 21 years now at this point yeah. or whatever. But I mean, come on, dude. Just fucking should have gone me to me. One time. Yeah. <laughs> one time. Only one C. I don't get it. I mean, yeah. Makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, still talented as all hell. I appreciate him for joining us. It was a spectacle. Yeah. Need to go. Need to go. That car is awesome, too. Yeah, it's, you, it is. The boys are so it's a monster truck. Yeah, it's fucking mm -hmm. awesome. It's a monster truck. They got to prop those auctioneers up. That's something you don't get from watching it on television. They need to put, I asked them, I was like, have they ever put you like on a beat? Yeah. You know, like they're, they're, there's oh, good yeah. content, I would assume, that could happen, but it's a monster truck. The Jeep that I got is a monster truck. The picture does not do it justice. No. In the lot, too. It's like, the biggest one yeah, in the it's lot. Towering Those wheels are fucking audio. huge. Yeah. Sitting next to my F-150 at the house, by the way, just looking down on it. Really? Yeah. And when you're driving, it does feel like you're at the top of like a giraffe's head. Oh, sure. Because, you know, you're sitting real propped up real high. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's supposed to go like 75, 80, like I was moving it this morning. But I'll tell you what, if you need me to fucking move some shit, I can get it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got some deep power down there. Mm -hmm. Plus, so, you got those headlamps that could penetrate deep space. You could see anything with those. Yeah, I, I turned them on and I lit up the entire Nick's neighborhood. That's awesome. Ooh. It was pitch black and then it became daylight with one little <laughs> flip of the thing. I also got them shooting back too, which could blind the people behind you. You got that tow hook on the front? The yeah. wrench, yeah. That yeah. thing is awesome. Uh -huh. You can pull a Haas down with that. Now... It says like country rough or something in the wheel panel. Yes. And I do believe a lot of people were disappointed that it was me that bought this Jeep because it came with a Carhartt tool sleeve. You know, like it came with all the all not. ropes and the oh, whole yeah. thing, you know? And there's me walking in with some fresh air forces and things. I just want to let you know, I went to work on that thing yesterday. <laughs> it was pretty nice to kind of get back to the roots. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who knows how long this thing will last in the house? But I got a monster truck with a Hemi in it that I bought live at an auction that I got bullied into spending the amount of money that I spent. But boy, I don't regret it for a second. Drove it into work this morning, amazing. At the auction after I won, amazing. Yep. You can't, you can't put a price on those two feelings. No, you can't. Now you can regret it later in life. Maybe. Which is potentially going to happen because I do have to roll those windows down by hand. It's old school. Okay. I have to lock every door by hand. Uh -huh. Sure. Okay. Interior's nice. There is a new radio setup. Yeah. There it is. Which yeah. is nice. Has leather. I hope it's uh hope it's waterproof, by Ooh. the way, because I took the roof off immediately. <laughs> Cannot put the roof back on either. No. Anyways, it was a great weekend. We get we'll get back to you uh on the other side with some sports. Yeah. Yeah. A lot to talk about. And your phone calls one eight three three four McAfee. Big thanks to Matt for joining us. God. God. So damn close. I thought we were gonna be best friends that guy. Yeah. He doesn't know, dude. He's well, out he, in the woods, this guy. He was saying sometimes he doesn't even use his brain. He's not even thinking. He's just yeah. so he might have just you know. Hey, he'll got go. Lost. They'll go foot up on the thing, hammer pointing at you. But hey, oh, turn the phone. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. Then the hammer goes around the other side, and then, oh, hey, next one in. 
we'll start at one million, one five, one six, one seven, two, two. It was just like, it's a show for Spectrum. six hours straight. Yeah. We went in, left, one in, left, went back in, left. So you just get like a wristband and you can, you can just kind of pass. Yeah, you get a pass. So you walk around with gold credentials. Bear. Yeah, mm -hmm. credentials. No big deal. All right, we got to get to a break. We'll be back in four minutes. We'll talk to you then. And that's, that's how you fix a little problem on Jeep. This particular problem is uh, not having your hood, okay, secured down. So while you were driving it, it could have, you see, popped up right in your face, but it didn't with a little bit of grit, okay? A little bit of work in a lot of fashion. <laughs> Jeep waved all of you, okay. I'd also potentially taken over their 30 edibles <laughs> because I thought more teammates of mine were going to want to indulge in that either before the game or after the game. And to get to London, you go through your own TSA here. Mm -hmm. The team has TSA that you have to check in. Here's my passport. The Colts already have it. They took it all from everybody. It's literally you get your bags checked and then you're through. Put them in a little thing. We're good to go. It's the team's TSA. Get on the bus. Fly over there. I forgot all about them. Didn't utilize them at all because how things quickly changed. Right. After we lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars, we're on a team bus. They go, hey, we're going through Heathrow Airport through the real life TSA. And at that moment, I look around. I go, oh, no, I have a lot of I have some things in my bag right now that have vitamins in them. I have to get rid of them. And at that point, I'd whittled it down to like 15 of them. And I look at Vinatieri and I'm like, buddy, not good. He was like, what are you going to do? I was like, I guess I'm just going to throw him away in here. Couldn't do that because right next to the trash can was an English police officer. So I couldn't just walk up and dump a bunch of edibles into the thing next to the guy. He's going to ask questions. We're going to the Heathrow Airport. Now i got to do what i got to do. We finally get there. Police escorts, a lot going on. So I just take down 13 edibles. Duh, yikes. See you later. <laughs> Vinatieri looks at me and goes, how you doing, bub? I was like, I'm good now, but things are about to happen. He goes, I got you, little buddy. I'm like, thank you. So we go through the little check-in thing. And right before we get to the scan of the bags thing, it all hits me. Mm. I might as well have been on cloud 45 over there in London. They check my bag, boom, boom, boom. I get selected. Something was in my bag. So now all of a sudden I'm like, oh, no. Did I leave a couple in there? Oh, my God. Vinatieri starts walking ahead. He turns around. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, they got my bag, man. <laughs> he's like, what's going on? I'm like, I have no idea. So he comes and stands with me. He's like, I got you, bub. I was like, I, uh, they might got me, for real. I might be staying the night in England. They go through my bag. Turns out, had a vibrating uh, toothbrush. <laughs> Thing was vibrating in my bag. Yep. They're like, oh, it must have been this. Or it must have been my big-ass toothpaste, because you can't fly with that. <laughs> I was like, you got it, pal. I get all the way back to the, to the plane. Lost my ticket somewhere. Somehow I don't have a ticket. So now I got to check into the gate, people, that I don't have a ticket. I'm like, I I'm on this plane. I promise I am, but I don't have a ticket. They're like, what's your name? I'm like, Patrick McAfee. The McAfee? No, yeah, whatever you want to call me. I just need a ticket. So now I have to sit there and wait as somebody brings me a ticket from the front while my entire team walks by me, knowing that I'm on cloud 50, just having a good time. Grigson walks by, just upset, obviously. I wish he would have known that I was in a mood where he should have talked to me there. It was just a night the London trip for me from beginning to end was not good, and I think that happens for a lot of NFL players. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. 
Father's Day is just around the corner, and you probably need a gift for your hairy ass dad, dude. Yeah. yeah. Make your dad proud this year and get him and yourself the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 and Ultra Smooth Package. The brand new Lawnmower 4.0 and Ultra Smooth Package is perfect for you and the dad in your life to complete your grooming game. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code PAT at manscaped.com. That's M A N S C A P E D dot. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is now available in the U.S. and Canada. What makes this waterproof trimmer different from all the other trimmers, you ask? Hmm. Now, it doesn't have a Hemi like my Jeep trimmer. No, uh -uh. it doesn't. But it does have a 7,000 RPM trimmer, which features skin-safe technology to keep your balls in check and has helped reduce manscaping accidents around the globe. Hell yeah. A new multifunction on and off switch can engage a travel lock created for jet setters. The lawnmower 4.0 gives you the ability to turn on a 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Additional guard lengths with sizes one through four to let you trim to your liking. Get 20% off and free shipping with code PAT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code pat at manscaped.com it's dad bod season time to get that thing smooth Woo. okay shout out to manscaped we appreciate the hell out of them uh this morning julio told um shannon sharp on undisputed undisputed uh on fox sports one w sorry i just know it is skipping shannon mm -hmm. i i that is 100 it's on undisputed on fox sports one shannon sharp electrifying he calls julio jones in the middle of the show i assume because skip bayless was losing his mind because julio jones was spotted in a dallas cowboys hoodie this weekend all in the middle of a conversation of the falcons saying they are okay trading julio 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 asking to be traded them parting their ways with shannon sharp on the phone on undisputed live Julio Jones says, I'm out of there. I just want to go to a winner as well. So now this is obviously throwing a little bit of gasoline into the fire that Julio is going to be on the move. Where's he going to go? Previously to the draft, allegedly it is being reported that they wanted a one overall for Julio Jones. I, in my eyes, would have given that up immediately for Julio Jones. And a lot of people are saying a 34-year-old uh, old wide receiver is not worth a one. It's like, if he comes on your team and you win a Super Bowl next year, who who gives a damn about that one? Yeah. It's about winning Super Bowls, is it not? There's a lot of teams, I think, that if you add Julio to them, immediately Super Bowl conversation participants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly believe that. Now, there's obviously Kansas City and Tampa Bay, and there's other teams that we're always going to consider to be up in the upper echelon. Uh, Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers, who is currently singing in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. But there's teams that we have in that upper echelon. But there's a lot of teams, like the Titans, for instance. Titans are just, what, one year removed from losing to the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs after having quite a substantial lead in them. Then they lose to the Baltimore Ravens in playoffs this year. But if the Tennessee Titans add Julio Jones to that offense, is that not immediately? make them a much better team in the AFC in which they were already a great team. The Colts, although we have no idea what Carson Wentz is going to be able to do. Okay? Carson Wentz could be, you know, completely broken. Frank Reich doesn't like hearing that. Okay? Frank Reich says, I, I kind of cringe whenever I hear people say that Carson could be broken because Carson still has the ability to be great. He Loves Frank Reich. It looks like he's enjoying the hell out of his time with the Indianapolis Colts thus far. Balls are flying out of his hand beautifully. Jonathan Taylor is catching go routes. I mean, there is a chance that Carson Wentz and the Colts are unbelievable. He could stink, though. Yeah, that could absolutely. happen. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I don't think it's going to happen with the offensive line and Frank Reich seeming to bring him out of his shell a little bit and back into what he was when he was an MVP-like player. But he could stink. But let's say he doesn't stink. Let's say he's good. You bring Julio to this Colts team, I think everybody in Indianapolis is like, okay, now we got a guy. Yeah. Now we got, not that we don't have uh, T.Y. absolute stud. T.Y. on his Twitter, by the way, last week, who's the best receiver in the NFL outside the Colts? Julio, he said. Mm -hmm. uh, you bring Julio to that team, it opens up a lot for T.Y. because they can't just triple team him on the defensive side, which, by the way, might also help Michael Pittman. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hey, rookie last year. 13 yards and a touchdown in his uh, his debut season. Number 11 for the Indianapolis Colts. I don't know how Julio's going to do with that. Carson Wentz had to bow down to Michael Pittman, who, you know, obviously has a huge upside after yep. that. Last year, he had 12 yards and a touchdown. Yep. He could potentially come into his own this year. And number 11 is his cemented. Paris Campbell also. Potential injury problems could come, but also he could be electrifying. You had Julio there. I'm thinking with that defense, okay. 
we're in the AFC Championship game at yeah. least. Mm -hmm. Titans fans are thinking that. Packers fans like, we have Julio. Okay, we're probably getting to the Super Bowl unlike last year. Yeah. There's a 49ers probably thinking that the Patriots, although they oh, have yeah. spent $157 million on one day in guaranteed contracts, first day of tampering period. They had Julio there. It's like Cam Newton allegedly looks a lot better at throwing the ball than he did last year. Allegedly. There's a tweet coming out that he worked on some of his mechanics that he might have forgotten or, or kind of fell out of after this past offseason where he was released and was working out. His mechanics might not have been as great last season. This offseason, he worked back on the fundamentals, and his teammates are saying it's showing off or it's proven itself, and it's working, and he's throwing the ball much better. He would have to, obviously, because he had eight touchdowns last year. Okay, that's not great for any NFL quarterback, Yikes. but he also did have COVID, and he had no weapons. Now they have a plethora of weapons, a – Tight end that's going down to tight end university in Hunter Henry. Mm -hmm. I think Yanu Smith is also going. Yep. They If they bring in Julio and Cam and everything like that, they're going to succeed. But let's say Cam can't. Let's say Cam can't do it. I think he will be able to, but let's say he can't. Mac Jones can throw the ball all over the yard yeah. if he can be protected. That is what everybody has said about him. You get Julio on that team, two dominant tight ends, great running backs, oh, yeah. and another. I mean, there is a chance that the Patriots – all the way back in the conversation. Absolutely. And they have, I think, the ammo to make the move, both mm -hmm. in uh, uh, draft capital. I think they have cap space still somehow. Oh, yeah. I think they could make the move, but the Patriots all the way back in there. I think this is a pivotal moment for who's going to make a real run next year with who Julio goes to. Because it's not just adding Julio's production. It's opening up the rest of the defense when you get a Julio on your team. And I think if he lands in a lot of places, it's going to be – a devastating blow for the rest of their division. And uh, the Atlanta Falcons said they would prefer not to trade him to an NFC team. But if, the, if, if it's right, they will do it. Yeah, and it feels like one of those things like last year with you know Brady where it's like, hey, why aren't there 32 teams going after Julio right now? Because what you just said, he makes your wide receivers, your tight ends, your running backs, your quarterbacks exponentially better. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning when Julio – the Falcons traded up to get Julio in the draft to number six overall. PFF just tweeted out what it has been. It's been nearly 10 years since the Falcons traded up to number six to get Julio Jones. What did they give to the Cleveland Browns? They gave a first rounder, a second rounder, and a fourth rounder in 2011, and a first rounder and a fourth rounder in the next year. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five picks for Julio Jones. I would assume all the geniuses... All the geniuses, oh, they overpaid. They overpaid. Well, you can't give up that much draft capital and be good. You can't do it. The Browns fleeced the Falcons in this trade. I assume that is what was said by these people who are experts on the thing. This is who they got for that. D-tackle Phil Taylor, wide receiver Greg Little, fullback Owen Maricic, and Brandon Weed in a quarterback. So I don't know what happened to the other pick. They must have traded it away. I will take the, hey, give me the guarantee of who's going to be what yeah. over the possibility of what the future can hold. That's it. It's going to come out what the Falcons trade Julio for. And it's going to happen after June 1 because the contract is basically set up for that. It'll be a lot more money saved for the Falcons if they trade them after June 1. But they could trade them today and it'd be designated post-June 1. These are all semantics, basically. But if, when it comes out what he was traded for, I think there's going to be 31 fan bases that are going to be pissed off about it. Oh, yeah. Well, and everyone talks about like how no one wants to give away a one. And the longer we are removed from the draft and like his, you know, I mean, if he's going for a second and a third, it just it makes no sense that you would even if he is a little banged up or whatever, like he definitely still has good football. And I mean, he's a freak. So like if he is healthy or at least healthy enough to give you, you know. Uh, I mean, he's Julio Jones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, there's no reason you don't go after him. And, and did was Julio injured last year? Uh, yeah, a little bit. He missed, he missed games. seven games. Yeah. But he closed, right? Didn't he end the season? Yeah. He ended the season. Him and Matt Ryan were playing their best football. I thought it was potentially an audition to get them out of there. Matt Ryan's contract is basically saying that Arthur Smith has to keep him around. Not that... I don't think they would have been able to trade him, by the way. $100 million, I think, in guarantees. Everybody's like, if, if they wanted to move on from Matt, they could. I don't know if that's accurate. I, I'm not, yeah. especially with the way salaries are and contracts with this cap and everything. And by the way, Matt, I was told by a source Ooh. that whenever I say that Matt Ryan doesn't have any more, I'm an idiot. Okay, and mm. I've never said Matt Ryan doesn't have it anymore. I'm just saying is Matt Ryan the guy who's going to win you a Super Bowl? I've been told that there's a couple passes in the old route tree that he's the best in the NFL at throwing. Now 
Is he the best in the NFL at throwing certain routes, like seven, because Julio Jones is there? Potentially. That's that catch on the sideline that you remember from the Super Bowl. Maybe he is the best at that. I think Herbert throws that ball well as well. But whenever you talk about a quarterback with Julio Jones, I think you're setting them up for massive amounts of success. Matt Ryan has come out and said, I have no idea what it would be like without Julio Jones. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like, they're still talented for sure. They got pits. They have a couple of those other guys. But, like, I mean, you we will noticeably see a difference in their offense if Julio's not there. Think about Kyle Pitts, Ridley, and also Julio Jones potentially on the same offense. That seems like that seems like one that you would want to have. Yeah. So I don't know why they're so gung ho on trading him. I guess it's because the contract and mm-hmm. they can't get rid of Matt Ryan for the contract he has. But for me, it's just like d- Julio Jones, dude. Yeah. When Randy Moss was traded to New England, everybody was like, oh, bad trade, bad trade. I was like, okay, all right, bad. This guy is a guy. You know you're getting a guy. Last year, Chris Ballard traded a first for DeForest Buckner. I assume everybody's like, oh, you don't know who you could get there. Well, he got a fucking all-pro in DeForest Buckner, mm-hmm. okay? He's going to be there. You get a, Julio, guess what you're getting? You're getting an all-pro at wide receiver yeah. alongside your all-pro wide receiver, T.Y., with a potential former MVP, if he can remember how to play football at quarterback and one of the best offensive lines in football. Let's go win the fucking Lombardi. It's got to happen this week, right? This week, next week? Yeah, June 1, I guess, is mm-hmm. when everybody thinks it's going to happen. But also, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, June 1, oh, too. June yeah. 1. What's going to happen with that? I mean, Watson and Well, I mean, Wilson no too. one wants like, – I, I, I have a feeling like Packers fans, you, you do – they do want to get him, but also, like, I mean, it, they could – they really could give up a second and third and trade Jordan Love – and then, you know, you'd still have to reske- uh, restructure Devontae Adams and Rodgers to make it work financially. But I feel like, like that is something that they could offer that the Falcons would be interested in that would maybe put a nice little bow tie on this whole Rodgers thing and be like, all right, I'll, the, I'll be back. The thing about uh, a minute 45, I think, the um, the thing about, uh, right, yeah, 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 Zito's counting down in my ear and he's off by a minute, you know. <laughs> but I appreciate you, Zito. Thank you, Z. The thing, DeAndre Hopkins has already come out and said, hey, I'll restructure my contract. You guys want to get Julio over here because Nuke knows with Fitz there or without Fitz there, with A.J. Green there, they're all going to see one-on-one. Yeah. They're all going to see one-on-one. So Kyler Murray is in a situation where he is going to be set up for greatness already, let alone if they bring in Julio. Now, people are going to say, oh, you don't need – they already got their weapons or whatever. What, somebody can get injured. Okay, in these particular positions with the type of athletes that are at skill positions, I mean, muscles can get pulled. Bruises can happen. And for a lot of teams previously to this, let's stack the weapons era that we're currently in, you lose a guy, your offense is fucked. Okay, we don't have that guy anymore. Kansas City, Tampa, LA tried this years ago. It's going to get to a point where, it's going to get to a point where if you just stack doesn't matter if somebody gets hurt. You've got more weapons. you got more weapons. I just... Good for Julio. It seems like he's probably going to be falling into a pretty aggressive market. Yeah. But that could just be the fans talking. Who knows what the GMs are saying. Mm-hmm. I texted Chris Ballard again this morning. No response. Oh. It was a gif of Julio making that catch. <laughs> I sent him the gif of Julio making that catch in the Super Bowl or whatever. Something to think about, I said. Something to think Go about. Go get him, Chris. I assume I'll never get a response from him again. <laughs> But that's okay. I just want to let everybody know I am on board with bringing in a 34-year-old wide receiver who is considered an anomaly amongst anomalies in the NFL. Hour two is on the other side of this break. We'll see you in six minutes. This is the Pat McAfee Show. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question and pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls guy, oh, fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant which I'm in right now, and uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> and I looked, you know, what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a 
big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, it's yeah. right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell a straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down. And, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dauphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, you know, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and, a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your hey, former you know, teammates. Hey. Yeah, hey, everybody wins. You're helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them teammates. owned up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name that he Willie. owned up. Willie, <laughs> Willie owned up to Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you. You okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy, Willie, man. <laughs> I was told by Del Curry, Scotty Pippen struggles on a golf course. Right? Right. I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day, match play, heads up, one-on-one Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we'll probably have a couple drinks at the casino a little bit longer than we should. <laughs> Representing the NFL out of the shoeless golf club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent, representing the NBA, Scotty Pippen. You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today, he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just, like, starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. You. We were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like, we were really, like, we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking hot. I was down three with seven left. And I looked right in the camera, and I go, so we're down three, with like seven holes left. Scotty Pippen's about to get this work. Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. <laughs> 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 fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, camera's on him, and he goes, Pippen ain't easy. Down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips him from fucking 400 yards out. I, I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippen yeah. ain't easy. <laughs> By the way, best he's ever performed at golf because I'm around. Better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I told Dell. I was like, Dell, what the fuck are you lying to me? He was like, well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me. And I was like, Dell, he... Buried me, Del Curry. He buried me. He was like, Pippin ain't easy. <laughs> yes, baby, it's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun of beer after he had beat me, obviously. I, I like teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spray a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're going to go here, and then you're going to open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple of times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. <laughs> Cheers, we say. Hey, 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 hey. Damn. Okay, That's Scotty. the best blood light I ever had. <laughs> hey, there's no stock in the three years anyway. You're right. <laughs>
The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Monday, May 24th, 2021, years after zero, hour two with the Hammered Down Boys and AJ Hawk. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. Welcome back to the show. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Hey, AJ. AJ, how you doing, pal? I'm good, pal. How you doing? I'm good. Your thoughts on Phil Mickelson? I, that was fun to watch, wasn't it? I mean, I, I felt I was nervous for the dude uh, after Saturday heading into Sunday, but yeah, he, he somehow found a way. And so I feel bad for old Brooks. You hear Brooks say he got smacked around his knee a little bit, his surgically repaired knee, and it was just too much of a cluster. So hopefully Brooks' knee is, is going to be all right, too. You're talking about in the chaos that ensued on the uh, fairway of 18 there? Yeah, I, I read something afterwards where they were asking Brooks about it. He's like, yeah, it would have been great if I didn't get dinged a few times. Like, I, He's coming back from this, this knee surgery, and he, he said he was – I don't know, walking gingerly and going to ice up tonight. I would like to let Brooks know that that does stink. And Phil also took a couple shots as well. Yeah. He was doing some big stretching on the other side with the back. I was worried that he was potentially going to four putt after yeah. getting yeah. beat up over there. He might have lost the touch, but he didn't. And for Brooks, I, I've gotten a chance to, you know, ride the coattails of a lot of very important people, uh, very famous people. I've been in the way of a potential stampede before. It stinks because nobody cares about you at all. You're not there for the same reason they are, but you kind of have to kind of go with the crowd. It's a tough thing to be. Phil Mickelson was beloved on that key a while. I mean, it was in the lefty chance coming out of nowhere. Now, I think if Brooks you know, during the earlier part of the round, plays a little bit better. You know, now he came out hot with a birdie. He was like, all right, here we go. Brooks is going to take over. Then he kind of just slid. I think maybe it, it, they remain on Brooks' side. But I think from like whole six and seven, maybe all the way through, they were like, hey, this is Phil's. This is lefty. Yeah. This is legendary. In the entire course, felt like, they, hey, we're a part of history here. Like, it's going to be awesome. They turned completely, I think. Yeah, after he chipped out of the sand, Bingo. they made that. You're correct. They yeah, I, I, I think that was the feeling like everybody's like all right brooks we love you hey you just came back from knee surgery that's cool we understand it's major time which is also big brooks time but this is history we're watching a guy who was <sighs> forever power rate yeah mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. like forever power rate <laughs> forever i mean his entire career Powerade, get this win at 50, be the story of golf. I'd assume move the needle for golf when it had always been Tiger, 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 Tiger. Phil has really come into his own as somebody that the world has liked here as of late, whether it's because of social media, whether it's because we're getting to learn more about him. But that old narrative about Phil Mickelson that he was just some California douchebag who couldn't beat Tiger Woods has changed immensely over like the last decade. And now Tiger Woods is tweeting, like, hey, that's incredibly inspiring. I assume Tiger seen that, seen the pop from the crowd, seen everybody follow him, was incredibly proud and happy for Phil. I think they're very tight at this point. But, man, what a moment for Phil Mickelson. Had to feel great to finally just be like, it was all worth it. And I think you said that, 15 years or something like that, he'd been doing something, and as he got older, he continued to dream and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was it was very cool to see, very cool to watch, and this just goes down as another legendary thing that Phil Mickelson's a part of, and I'm happy for the guy. Well, I'm kind of surprised that nobody at the age of 50 has won a major until now. Like, Phil's the first guy to do it, but I think everybody was on Phil's side right from the jump. He had to get an exemption to get into this tournament. Like, he didn't qualify to make it, and I think when he came out of the gates hot, everyone started thinking and dreaming like, oh, man, how cool to be if Phil would do this. But they never thought it was possible, probably until, what, the back nine of yesterday? A lot of gamblers, okay, loved Brooks in there because he was 50-1 to one going into the weekend because of the yeah. knee surgery. So there was a lot of gamblers that saw that number and were like, Brooks in a major, he's got, what, two months, I think, or a month and a half after this one until the next really important. So you can kind of – I don't want to say – 
leave it all out there. But if you're injured, it's like, okay, I don't have to fear potentially re-irritating because I will have time on the other this because it's the PGA Championship. Here we go. So the 50 to 1 betters, plus it being Brooks, he's just like, cool dude. I think everybody thinks Brooks is a super cool guy. The goatee, fucking legendary. Yeah, okay. Crush. So it was, I think a lot of people were, were pulling for Brooks. And then the Phil story, like golf had to compete against LeBron. All right, LeBron was on at the same time as this. And I was, as everybody else was, kind of bouncing back and forth. There was, you know, you see LeBron do his thing, you know, his whole thing. You know, is he just, all right? Is he okay? I think he's okay. He's blinded in one arm, but he's still going to win this goddamn series. Yeah. Okay, he's, uh, he's sure. LeBron James. I saw LaFlop was trending. I mean, Chris Paul put him in an arm bar. What are you do? Nobody's talking about that. Yeah. Try to break his arm off yeah. like a chicken wing. Yeah, right. And everybody's talking about him being, oh, stop flopping around. It's like, Draymond Green was two knuckles deep in his eyeball, yeah. okay? He might hurt for a second. No. And then all of a sudden, Chris Paul is doing a Ronda Rousey arm bar over his shoulder. <laughs> I mean, it's on, just no insane way. what he has to go through, and the internet refuses to see it. Game one, disinterested, doesn't matter. Kardashian's boyfriend, let you get the spotlight, Chris Paul. Welcome back to primetime TV. Why does he get traded so much? Everywhere he goes, they win. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. LeBron's just letting them have their moment. Anthony Davis, he wasn't trying. No. He had, what, one rebound in the first he's seven foot seven he had one rebound they weren't trying at all this is nothing everybody needs to take it easy but anyways golf was competing with that and then you go i flip over you see that lebron's doing his thing they kind of stink then you go back over here and it's a crowd of people around phil and a crowd of people around Brooks, and they're just walking through the course. It was in Woostazen or whatever, Woosties. <laughs> Woo, Louis, 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 Louis. He was kind of getting back in it a little bit. You know, they would cut to him. But, man, that was two guys going head-to-head -head with the NBA, and I think they won. Yeah. I would, I would oh, assume yeah. they won. I loved what – I enjoyed it a lot. Golf had a massive Sunday in a big sports field Sunday. I think they absolutely won. Like, Phil, maybe people younger, I guess. Like I'm 37. People younger than me definitely don't know a whole lot about Phil, I'm guessing. But uh, I think for people my age and above, absolutely, Phil was the story yesterday. You knew a lot about Phil yesterday when I was talking with you. You knew a lot. I've been a big fan. Yeah, I've been a fan of Phil for a long time. Yeah. Sure. I mean, immediately after that guy having his one shining moment, I get a text message from you just... No, you sent me a text message. I did not send you first. The text I sent you was shit talking, I assume, about my bet that I'd never beat <laughs> Phil. I told him I'll never beat Phil, but yeah. I don't have to. Nope. You know what I mean? But as soon as I send that, this guy unloads. Just, whoa. Have you ever heard, insert name of, I'm getting a call. This is OJ Howard, I think. Oh, I just got Simpson. I think he just accepted I'm it. Not an answer. I'm not doing that. I don't know him anywhere near well enough to OJ do that. OJ Simpson or who? I mean, no, not, not your OJ. Hey, hey, I, said, I thought that's what you were going to say. OJ Howard. OJ. I said OJ Howard. He was put I on. I know you know everybody. You have, yeah, it's either OJ or it's Piv in one of the two. But I don't know. I don't know Phil, obviously, because you were enlightening me on a lot of information I did not know about. Phil's but, a good gambler. Yeah, I heard he is a good gambler. Uh -huh. Likes to watch the action. But you had to watch Phil yesterday. I mean, as soon as you saw that LeBron was still hung over from his tequila party and he wasn't interested in the NBA playoffs, you had to watch the golf. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree completely. Let's talk about Braun Braun. Okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah. We saw him with Mr. Loverboy, Drake. Mm -hmm. All right? Night before the game, photos come out of them dancing, bebopping around. Thought they were drinking wine because... LeBron James is one of the biggest winos on this planet. One of the greatest sommeliers this world has ever seen. One of the best palates that has ever been created inside of a human resides in the king of basketball, LeBron James's mouth. Okay, so I assume this was a sommelier operation, a celebration. How you doing? Keep it moving. And I, I was intrigued by the fact there didn't seem to be any social distancing and there was no uh, masks. But when you see, you know, old Drizzy uh, in there and you see LeBron and you see others, you're like, okay, I assume these people, high end people, they're all kind of about about it or whatever. Turns out they were not bad about it. Adam Silver said that was definitely an infraction. Okay, yeah. can't have it. All right. But it's LeBron James. What the hell do you want us to do? I had no idea he was a tequila entrepreneur. I had no idea he was an anti-vaxxer. I'm learning a lot about him at this point. <laughs> I'm learning a lot about LeBron, but I do know that the NBA not punishing LeBron James for this is the most obvious thing of all time. And there was a little bit of pushback on the internet that LeBron James is getting special treatment. Well, no shit. Hey, no shit. He's getting special treatment. Once again, we don't love it. 
okay? We don't like that that happens, that people get special treatment and get treated differently and people get, you know, be who you can afford to be and act out. We don't like that that happens, but it's LeBron James and it's playoff basketball. If you thought Adam Silver was going to be like, excuse me, that tequila, that's probably incredibly good, I assume. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Terramana, uh, okay? But <laughs> if you thought Adam Silver was going to say, don't know the tequila, I know Drizzy, by the way, who's a part of the promotion on TNT. It's him in the background doing this entire oh, thing. Yeah. He doesn't even say anything. If you thought they were going to punish him for that, I hate that you live in the same world as us because you're oblivious to shit that we need you not to be oblivious to. This is the world. We need your help changing it. And we're going to try every single day to change that. But there was no way he was getting punished there. But punished as in how? Like, do people really think that he's going to be suspended? Like, what if Adam Silver oh, yeah. wants to? I mean, it was COVID. It's a pretty big deal. I mean, we beat COVID. Yeah, COVID is long gone. I mean, we beat COVID. Shout out Madison then, Square Garden. Shout out, out Kiowa out. Island. Yeah. Shout out everywhere. We beat COVID for sure. But their protocols are still in place. And would he have done that? Would Devin Booker, if he was found in one of them Kardashian parties, would he have been able to play yesterday if that happened? The answer. No, he would have been suspended. It would have been a big, uh, big deal. One day, Devin Booker might be LeBron. I mean, it's going to take a, lo a lot of games like he played yesterday, but that's just how it is. It, it, be who you can afford to be is a real thing at this point. Well, protocols have changed, though. Has the NBA come out and tried to say, like, our pro if I think if they test negative day of game, they're okay, aren't they? Well, there's no way that um, there's no way that the rest of the NBA players would it, are cool with this. Oh, yeah. No. There's no, there's no. no you know, they want to be there. Days. They want to be invited. Probably. No, not invited. I just know that a lot of NBA guys, okay, I know a lot of NBA guys, maybe they don't have their own tequila, but maybe they got burgers or something. Yeah. And they were going to have fucking Jack Harlow over, uh -huh. you know, and they were going to do an entire mm -hmm. thing for their burger promo. company that yeah. they're, they're launching. Couldn't do it. Couldn't promote their company like LeBron was able to promote their company. But that's just, that's just how it goes. Hey. One day, maybe you'll be a king too, all right? I mean, it was anointed to him when he was 16, getting paid in high school. He has lived up to the billing. He has put the NBA on his back. He makes the playoffs every single year. He is, uh, you know, he's LeBron James. One day when you are, that'll also be the same way. Don't like it. Don't like, once again, I do not like it. I don't think this is good. I don't think it's how things should go. But it is the world we live in. That's yeah. just kind of how it is. All in all, it also helped out LeBron. Because I didn't know he had a tequila company or anything. And now yeah. we do strictly because of this. Jordan's yeah. is better. Jordan's got a tequila? Oh, Him it's too. so good. It's better. Hey, it's really LeBron's. expensive, isn't it? Very expensive. It's worth it. Is it like Terramana? Or? Uh, I think it's called Cincoro. Cincoro. You know, Ron mm. White has a, uh, he's a comedian. He has a Cinco tequila Oro. as well called Number One. Tequila. Ooh, number one. Yeah. Number one tequila. That's pretty good. Juan. Jordan's yeah. bottle is yeah, it's a good looking bottle. It's not. Nice. Does it have a bell on the top? What's that kind one tequila of. that has the uh the uh, it's uh it's kind of built like a sex toy, real tall? Oh, the blue and white bottle? It has the silver thing on top that acts as a What kind of sex toy is it built like? Probably all the ones that you I you did. probably buy on the mm -hmm. internet. Still though, you weirdo. It didn't describe it to me. No, it didn't I didn't understand what you meant. It kind of looks like if uh Oh, tequila bottle or sex toy. There's a Reddit thread about it. And then there's like this on top of it. And it's a bell. And then there's like a bell on Ding. it. But yeah, Jeez. maybe make this a little fat. What was that? My bad. Sorry, right, Don't worry about it. Here's, here's yeah, the bottle right bingo. here. Yeah, bingo. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, That's pretty good. that is. Go <laughs> there it is. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, and then if I had a red solo cup. I'll I'm put you move. right up here there to it make it look good. <laughs> There's a lot of ash yeah, in here. Uh, <laughs> anyways, this is the one that uh, I was at a party. Warren Moon showed up with this bottle. Whoa. Yeah. Classic Warren yeah, the Moon. Uh, yeah, me and Warren Moon, we got after it with that bottle right there. <laughs> got after it. was my first time. But I think that's a pretty expensive tequila as well. The tequila business is a vast one. Yeah. But I don't think anybody's using the same... Uh, what are those things called? The green things in Mexico that they use to Avocados? make... Avocados? Agave. Agave. <laughs> Avocados, I think, those by the way. That's ice cream. Yep. It's also in yeah. Mexico. But the agave that The Rock is using for Terramana yeah. comes from a barn that's been stored there for 2,000 yes. years. So I don't think I think everybody's trying to catch up to The Rock. This, this is, this is uh, yeah, He James. found it when he was filming uh, Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> Smart. This is MJ right here. He though. drove his car I mean, through a cave. And was, I, I hope there's some truth to that. That's a good looking bottle right there. Yeah, it is, is a good looking bottle. It kind of looks like a Ciroc bottle, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, he How much it. is it, Zeke, for a bottle? 
Ah, too much. Sincoro. 500 S- bucks? It's Sin- really expensive, I heard. Is what it Sincoro like- or Sincoro? Some of those bottles Sincoro. are 1000 I saw, but then the cheapest one was like 180 well, How much? Bad. What's the standard? I don't know. I don't think I bought Tequila? A- I don't know. Like I think that bucks. blue bottle, 30, 30 for a small one, was 185 How about the one that I would... The- LeBron's is 50 so he's trying Horrible. to undercut the Jordan tequila yeah, market. Yeah, tequila hey, the Jordan, hey, LeBron's the people's champ. Oh, oh, no, affordable pizza. tequila, oh, dude. Yeah. With Drake and their shoulder shimmies. Mm-hmm. Baby. That crybaby tequila. Rocket. All right, um, AJ, let's talk about Dak Prescott tells Sage Steele that if he had to, he could go play a game right now and would not worry at all about his foot. That's wild to me. That's incredible to me because the mentality of getting over an injury is just as difficult as physically getting over an injury. He said, I'm not even worried about the leg right now. That's got to be great news if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan. But the Dallas Cowboys fans, I assume, thought that he was definitely going to be back as soon as they signed him to the highest contract of all time after working out in the Dallas Cowboys facility. Um, That one video we've seen where he was throwing just uh, out kind of like right to the wide receiver, a a stop route almost, or what you get it just standing over there he he stumbled out back but a lot of progress can be made in a quick amount of time whenever you're talking about rehab uh Dak seems to be all the way back all systems go it sounds like is what's being said AJ well Dak is such a tough dude of course like it wouldn't be the ideal situation if he had to play a game tomorrow but him saying that he can uh, I feel like for Cowboys fans and for for Mike McCarthy they got to feel pretty good about where they're at right now what how many days until their first regular season game that's all that matters well I was looking at the schedule, you know, calendar. We are fucking got some time, pal. 109 days. They said, we have some time here. Now, I don't love it, but we're going to have to talk about things like Julio Jones and Shannon Sharp having a phone call on television. Did he know it was public? Who knows? He had to, he had to right? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Seem like People it. who are averagely good friends of mine, and by good friends, I mean like in the world, kind of understand my life. They'll call me whenever I'm on air and not know we're live. You know what I mean? So yeah. unless this was all something that was potentially premeditated, which could have been, uh, Shannon could have said like, hey, I'm going to call you during the show. As soon as Skip says, Julio, you're going to Dallas. Can I call you? And Julio might know that. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I love Aren't the rules, though. Hey, aren't there rules to put like don't isn't that why you you do have to tell hey you're on air like before they say a word you let them know like hey you're on the radio we're recording this anything I have no there idea are, there are some states that recorded phones yeah you can't, you can't record without both parties there's Correct. one party knowledge but there are some states where you don't have to I would assume California's one where you probably got to let them know I'd assume mm-hmm. yeah is California back I saw know. New York was back I think they're getting back. there but. Not not like New York's. Did back, you see I don't New think. York was half and half though? Did you see that picture? What's that? So half of the stadium was vaccinated people, and then the other half was non-vaccinated oh, like people, that. which they didn't show much. Oh, so on camera side, go yeah. ahead and put all Wait, MSG. All, yeah, yeah, all the vaccinated folks just put them in there. Tell yeah. them they have to wear masks or whatever. We can pack it out. Yeah. On the other side, it's. Probably what ten percent capacity. It was very so. spaced out. Still, they didn't show that much. Well, it doesn't matter. Didn't need it because yeah. that place, Tracy Morgan, was vibing. Mm-hmm. It. I mean, he was having a good time. Spike was losing his mind. I mean, most Knicks thing of all time to have that environment. We're back in the playoffs. How you doing? Keep <laughs> moving, and then have a dagger take yeah. their soul out at the end and name a Trey Young. Uh, but that was awesome. I am not a noted Knicks fan or Hawks fan or really going to be glued to my TV for anything, but the environment for anything NBA, the environment in MSG yesterday was worth the watch. That was awesome in there. When the, like this time where like the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs are going, the PGA championship, yeah. it really is unbelievable. If we can add a little like Rogers news, a little Julio news to this, it would be a hell of a week. Okay. It? So let's get to some Aaron Rodgers news. AJ, you saw uh, Aaron and Shailene and Miles Teller and Miles Lady. They're dancing, singing, having a good time, getting exploited by somebody that works at the uh, resort, I believe, with a selfie video. Aaron's playing the guitar, singing. He's having a good time. I think it was in selfie mode in that video, so it was flipped. I assume he's a right-handed guitar player. I've never seen him play, but in this video, it appeared as if he was uh, playing lefty as they were singing. Uh, He was crushing it on the guitar, by the way. I mean, absolutely crushing it on the guitar. He's living his best life right now. 
Uh, have you talked? Oh, there it is. Wow. In front of a wine cellar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Ooh. selfie mode. He's not playing lefty. Yeah, he's a right. Okay, perfect. He, he's uh, Tim McAfee was like, wow, he plays left-handed. <laughs> is this McCartney up here? Like, so <laughs> now, with all this coming out, do you think this affects Aaron at all, knowing that this is coming out, this is being released, or do you think he'll come out and speak uh, tonight on Kenny Main, but if that doesn't cover anything, maybe it does. I'm not sure. Do you think he's ever going to come out and say anything? And have you talked to him? Maybe even sent him an aloha and a shaka since he's been out there. No, I have not uh, talked to him. I didn't. I mean, I learned Why? of this video 45 minutes ago, pretty much. I, I don't know when it came out, but I, he obviously was okay with it. The guy's in selfie mode. Why Aaron's playing the guitar? If he's if Aaron's not cool with it, I'm guessing he's going to tell the guy put it away. I don't know who he is. That's an awkward that position is. though, isn't it? Especially if you're a little bit drunk and this person feels as comfortable to do that. What's Aaron no. supposed to say? Hey, take the fuck. What if he yeah. takes that yes. guitar? You would too. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's an uncomfortable, it's an awkward thing to do, especially at the resort that they're at. I'm assuming that guy's getting fired. He's a musician. I, I looked into it He's- a little bit. I don't know if he works at the resort, but I mean, yeah, he posted it on his own and you know, I mean, I don't know. You look at it. It does seem like it's kind of, yeah, it's, but I don't know. The, I don't know what resort he's at. Okay, I don't have Aaron Rodgers' money. All right. It seems like pretty soon I might. But I don't currently, okay, <laughs> have have Aaron Rodgers' money nowhere near the world that you and him live in or anything like that. But I have been to Hawaii resorts, okay? I think that one actually looked kind of familiar. Those types of resorts, I, I don't think it's known for like, hey, where when you're here... Uh, we're going to hire somebody who's going to expose everything you're yeah. doing. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. It feels like a little bit of an interesting... Does that guy work there? Does he work at the resort? I assume I, he gets hired to come in and play. Right. That's what it sounds like. Oh, so that was the musician. Aaron was playing his guitar. Is what you're saying. Yeah, it seems like. Or maybe the guitar was just in there. I don't know. I have no idea. You know what I mean? Who knows? But maybe Miles got, brought it. Maybe Miles Teller. He usually takes it. his guitar he everywhere. Does. Nonetheless... Whatever the case, looks like he's having a time of his life. Does he even know that all this shit's going on in the world, or do you think he's that uh, secluded? I mean, I don't, he honestly, he, he may be blind to a lot of what is going on, and I tell you what, it does look like fun. Like, we should probably get to Hawaii sometime soon. It seems like you should have been invited to that. Oh. I don't like that you weren't. Yeah. I'm not happy about it. That's not, that's not a thing you, uh, yeah. Someone want to watch my four kids? I need 13 different adults to help watch my kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you were invited. Okay, so no, AJ I was, was oh, invited. Wow. Okay. Okay. Breaking. I was not. Oh, seems like you ah! close to that. Okay, like it matters. This is so dumb, but I was not. I'm not a, I wouldn't here. be a part of that. Anyway. You know Miles asked if you wanted to go, AJ. Come on. So, just Miles, so we have this Miles clear. Miles the man. I like Miles. Since, since AJ has spoken about the Aaron Rodgers situation so much, their friendship has died. Oh, man. AJ was not invited oh, no. to I hope so. Yeah. I hope so bummer. at this point. I'm gonna, I might just have to cut it off at this point. <laughs> oh, you're, <laughs> wow. you can't fire me, I quit? Is that what you just said? No, I'm just saying that to you. I would never do that. But. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you're a good friend, man. You are in a terrible spot as this continues to go. And wait until we, we hear what he no, says. No, I'm not. I'm really not, though. I'm not, because I don't know anything. Like, I, don't, I, know, I know less than you. I really do. No, I know less than most people because I didn't see this video until a couple minutes ago. Yeah, but uh, that's bullshit. Let's get some phone calls, shall we? Yeah, what you're doing is lying, though. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I know. We know you got knock out, out in the front driveway with Axel. Mm-hmm. Okay, we know mm-hmm. that whole thing. But if, if one of my very close friends was in the middle of an epic public potential battle with some, it would be tough not to be like... Uh, Hey, man, I hate that I got to go on the air every day, but I guess we'll just talk down the road. Is that yeah. what we're going to do? You you are in a terrible spot. You know it. I know it. We know it. But I do like the fact that you just continue to act like it's not. But it's a beautiful thing. You've handled it very well. You've handled it well very done, well. Well done, AJ. Good yeah. job, AJ. To the detriment of this show. For sure. Yeah. Kind of I know. Sure. Rap, Rappaport told me, like, I got to use my sources, man. I'm not pushing my sources hard enough. Well, f- well I, I, to be honest, that's a weird situation for you to be in it really it's is not, he's not a source like aaron's that, not a source well that's what i'm saying though but everything you say about it w- is yeah. considered okay oh he's speaking it's for from, from Raj. it's a tough situation to be in. it really is like could I, reach out to miles though miles could be a source well what? we will yeah. try to book miles yeah, yeah. okay he yeah. will yeah miles said he'll come on sometime for sure whoa miles, did he tell you that cracking. from hawaii no, I, I talked to him uh, like a week or two ago. I said, yeah, you definitely oh. need to come on. Whenever Whoa. they do, when is Top Gun 2 coming out? He's Last year, dude? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. 2028. Tell us, Miles. I mean, it's, been, it's been pushed back like three times. Was that after he invited you to Hawaii? 
<laughs> no, but they've been done filming for oh, what, a year or two. Never done at least. Years. Listen, Avatar's been pushed back a couple times because it's great. This Top Gun movie probably going to fucking be terrible. That's oh, no. it's oh, absolutely oh, terrible. Oh, you kidding me? That's why they're it's delaying. It's going to be way better. Than Avatar. Hey, 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 they're delaying it. Wow. They're delaying oh, it because it's so bad. This is just like the Travolta Gotti movie. Oh, they oh, like it so oh, much because oh, it's so bad. Travolta not that stupid. Hey, we're talking TC here. TC, yeah. baby. You don't think Cruise is going to be better than Avatar? And that Gaudi movie was not, not Travolta's yeah. fault. But it was delayed a hundred times because of how terrible it was. Yep. Avatar, this was COVID. Yeah, COVID's for this one. Yeah. Cruise is putting they the industry theaters, on baby. back okay, right You now. put that yeah. thing on a streaming service, Cruise it gets will, two billion views immediately. Cruise will never. No. He is yeah. movies. Yeah. He said, I'm, I'm trying to keep this fucking industry alive right now. Yeah. He's yeah. not stopping now. You know why he was yelling about it? wasn't because the protocols. It was because he saw the movie that was being made. <laughs> no. Yeah, he said, I'm trying to keep this industry alive, and the movie stunk so bad. That's why he was yelling. Nobody talked about that. I think that, that, many in. that was on the set of Mission Impossible. That is coming out, and we all know that ain't going to fucking stink. Mm. He's Cruise insane. is a machine. I trust, I trust Mission Impossible to be good. Have you seen <laughs> Top Gun, Pat? What? You haven't seen Top Gun. I'm bro, sure. I've seen him play volleyball, okay, bro? Exactly. You haven't you seen have Top seen Gun. Come on, oh, yeah, they're on the it. fucking piano. You love that love and feeling. Oh, that love and feeling. Yeah, I've seen it. Come on, they're in the bar thing. Hell they're doing yeah. karaoke. He chases her outside. They Goose. do the thing. Yeah, he shouldn't have hit a jack, dude. Anyways. <laughs> What should he have done? Just spun off and just rode the plane into the water? Yes. I mean, I don't know. I saw Sully do it. Don't. Yeah, hero's journey, dude. Let's go to the phones. What? Don't. I don't. I don't agree with that. What? Hero's you journey. You and I had very different. <laughs> what? There's answers. I mean, they have ejected seats for a reason, right? Yeah, you've been in there, by the way. I watched you. Uh, I watched you take your mask off <laughs> on a video and do a full. <laughs> I watched a video of you struggling in there for yeah. an hour. I think it was an hour long one. Why would you ever sign up for that? Hey, thank you for your to, service. Not telling to land the plane. I got it. I had to gut it out. Thank oh. you for your service, AJ. Thank, thank you, AJ. You, AJ. I did nothing. Anyways, I assume Top Gun's going to be good, but it's nice to get the boys riled up. Yeah. I'm never going to watch it. But what Mission Impossible? Hey, speaking of that, though, is this Mission Impossible 14? Like, which one? What are we on? Eight, yeah, dude. whatever the next one. Am I eight? Come I saw on. that one. I saw that one. He was flying a helicopter in a cliff and he spun it. Oh he, yeah, he did oh, like yeah. MI seven. Uh, yeah, I did a, a fish tail on that goddamn helicopter. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the only scene I saw. But I think Bob backstabbed him in that one. Yeah, I think he. I think he got backstabbed. Had to go find something. He's been getting backstabbed it, way too often. Believe it or not, he gets backstabbed quite a bit in those. No way. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's have wild. You, have you guys seen that Borat one yet? The, the second one? The espionage, uh, <sighs> Borat's that espionage guy mm -mm. over in England. Have you seen this? No. Oh, yeah, I did. It's pretty good. It is. I agree. Is it? Is it a true story? What's it called? That's what I don't know. If it is a true story, awesome. It says based on a true story, but it also could just be completely fairy tale, like Rudy or something like that. <laughs> I, the, the based on a true story hooks me in because I'm like, okay, so this could happen. All right, because we all know how I do with the whole, uh, like I saw a dragon on Game of Thrones. I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm not creative enough to buy into this shit. I can't do it. All right, can't do it. Probably why I've never really gotten into the religion as much as I probably should have, like that type of thing. But if it's based on a true story, I'm 100% in. I think they have gotten a little bit fucking careless with that. I, oh, yeah. I, I think they, they're they stamping that on the front of everything. Yeah. Strictly for me and people like me, I think. But we could start doing something like that based off real events or whatever. Mm -hmm. What Bingo. does that mean? Somebody took that a means shoot. nothing. That, that mean means anything. like something in the realm of this happened one day. Yeah, it's like Tom Cruise, American Made. Like, yeah, Pat, if you're right. Comparing someone, that to the actual cocaine cowboys. Okay, someone was did it, take a shit one That wasn't the cocaine cowboys. That was He's a very different, different story. It's a different one, yeah. 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 That actually oh, Gumpy, one. you didn't know that. Hey, listen, Gumpy, American Made, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. No, but it was the pilot that was connected to the cocaine cowboys no. at no. some point. No, no. He was working for the CIA or whatever. Cocaine cowboys are in the documentary. All those guys that were <laughs> yeah, yeah, are yeah. in it. Okay, I misunderstood. No, it's a good one, though. Have You, you have watched it. American Made? Yeah. 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 Now that's based on a true story. I don't know how true it is, but yeah. in my head, this is 100% true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like the drugs fell in the field, they know that. They know how he died the same way they showed in the movie. Like I don't know how much, but it seems like a lot of it. And then you watch that Borat is a spy movie. It's like, how much shady shit is going on? Especially with the fact that, you know, UFOs have been seen every day. Sorry. 
UAOs yeah. or UAPs. There right? it is. Why, why is everybody going to do it? It's a fucking UFO. Okay, I understand that this thing is a phenomenon or whatever, but every single day for years, how many people saw that? Hundreds of people every single day mm-hmm. saw that, and somehow we don't find out about it? That's unbelievable to me. Uh, there has to be so much shit popping Shout off. Shout out Classified Files. Declassified files. Now they are. It's the ones that we're shot now. <laughs> no, I was I would say respect to those hundreds of people that oh, keep their mouths shut. Shout out to the handshake agreement. Yeah. We, we we saw nothing. <laughs> Last thing. They were dubbed crazy. I think those hundreds of people that did see these things were like, finally, hey, I told you guys what I saw, and now the government's coming out and clarifying it. Shout out to Lazar. Yeah. Yeah, Bob. There you go. Let's get to a break. Hey, I can't wait for you and me to go to a Meekum event. And for me and the auctioneer to bully you into buying a car you don't need. Yeah, it's not going to happen with me, but I would love to go watch. <laughs> Auctioneers are great. I know you had them on. Believe me, I know auction- we have an au- we have two auctioneers at our charity event every year. And those dudes absolutely are worth what they cost to bring in. They're showmen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And ladies, has show business changed that? Show people. Show, he did yeah. say he did say show people. No, he said ring people. Yeah. Ring people for the people that are out there. I'm talking about show business with the showman, because I meant that as a generalization. But sure. it is right there at the end. Man, Man. You can ask my tie when he comes on. I'm gonna let him know that movie probably stinks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking keep singing and dancing, pal. <laughs> I'm joking. It's Who? Right. Miles Teller. Oh, it's a, okay. Yeah, we'll have him on. I think you'll like him. I think so too. I, he gave us one of those at a Super Bowl. Right he did. Here, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Your point. Yeah, he gave us one of those. Nice. Right here. You guys. Hey. By the way, can't do that in an auction. Cannot point at anything. No. Cannot say, "Hey, look at that," because there's <laughs> immediately a huh. And it's like, "Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. where are we at? One point four? No." Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost got yeah. caught. That's no. why I always sit next to sit next to your buddies and always try to throw their arm up. I'll sit next to my brother and try to throw his arm up. <laughs> I feel like that was potentially. There was a car, 2.8 million, somebody said. Did it fly? Did not. It sat, but it was long. It was very long and very nice. 2.8 million. They looked this guy right in the face and said, that's not enough. Bid goes on. Just drive it right across the front. See you later. It's out of there. <laughs> that guy had a checkbook in his whatever that he, he was going to. I had to write out the price of mine. I had to write a check for it. I mean, I filled in the work, the space just. Yeah, oh, I couldn't even imagine two million eight hundred thousand with zero zero. I mean, he was ready to do that in the room that we were sitting in, and he said, "Nah, not enough, pal. Fucking take a hike." Well, it sucks for that guy because now he's got to go out bid someone else on you know the internet or the phones. The internet was. Is that it right there? Yeah, he he referenced this car. You kidding me? Yeah, that was two point eight million. Oh, the dog. Mm-hmm. It's longer a, than a semi. That thing yeah, actually is pretty sweet. They also had a jet limo. I don't know how much that actual ended up How much going did you pay for, for your deal, Pat? Did you say yet? That'll be debuted in the vlog that's coming on Friday. Who well, we should guess for, for prizes. No, I think it's potentially out there somewhere. Yeah. Oh, you know? it definitely is, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you were on the television. Mm-hmm. Interview. Yeah. They were at commercial when I was doing uh. it. So we have the footage that has never been, and by the way, pretty good footage. Yeah. The Connor cam, there's a Connor cam, oh, yeah. and my wife also has a selfie video of my face, and then Connor has me and the guy, and then the crowd, you hear the crowd in the back, hey, yeah, come on, here we go, you know, it is. You got the auctioneer. So somebody was coming, someone was, was bad on you for the car? Okay, so. Let me pause this. Listen, this show stinks today. I fucking hate to break it to you. We covered everything that's happened in the sports world. <laughs> fucking go elsewhere if you have to. I apologize. The, um, well, I, yeah, actually, I don't do it. For the good of your life, if you want to, I understand. But Because I woke up this morning and was like, mm, can't wait to talk about stuff I don't know much about. Once I talk about it, am I going to talk about it again? Probably not. <laughs> so what are we going to do for three hours? Then the Julio thing happens. I'm like, okay, we can do that Here for three go. hours. I feel like we've run that one into the ground already. <laughs> so let's just get back into this. Uh, what was your exact question again for the, uh, the thing? What did I say? How much did you pay for the, your Wrangler? Okay, so I had a plan going in. With a Hemi, by the way, please. Big Hemi to yeah. it, not one of them vroom, little, vroom. little soft uh, It's a no, Jeep with a Hemi. Okay, Big body. I was going to buy a car in there. Everybody knew I was going to buy something 
That was legitimately the only one I could have seen myself in driving. You know what I mean? A lot of collector cars, a lot of things like that. With our roads here, there's no way I could have got any of like the super, you know, nice cars. Everybody knew I was gonna buy something. The Jeep was really the only one that I think we saw and I was like, ah, that Jeep is dope. Okay, that Jeep is dope. We just seen it. So we sit down, cars come through, we're kind of scoping it out. I have to go pee. Everybody knows my bladder is not great. So I go to the bathroom. The bathroom is outside the arena to the left. A little bit of a haul, probably 80, 90 yards. Oh yeah. 100, 100 yards yeah, probably from field. where we're at. I go to the bathroom. I come back and I see the Jeep taking a stroll across the front. And then I see my wife like looking at me from the table. So I come running over, you know, and I sit down. And uh, she goes, I thought when you heard the engine, this was definitely coming home with us. I was like, I hadn't heard the engine because whenever I came out, it was just in a spot. So as she says that, this thing, oh, and I was like, oh, is that the Jeep? <laughs> she was like, yeah. So I look up, I start reading about the Jeep, you know, because I've just seen it. And the first thing I see is like the six point whatever Hemi. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, here we go. I had a plan going in because I am a newbie and I don't know much about much. I'm gonna wait for this thing to stop. I'm gonna wait for the bidding to stop. And then I'm gonna jump in because then I at least know about where the cost should be. You know what I mean? Because I don't know these things well enough. Let's assume the others in here know. So when that thing gets to a price where it's about to be hammered, then I'm gonna come in. And then we're gonna find out, you know, who, mm -hmm. who really wants it. So as it was about, I go, yep. Yeah, so now I'm in the game, okay? And as soon as I get into the game, I got the ring guy standing right here. I got the auctioneer now leg up on the thing, staring at me. The other person that was bidding right up like five rows in front of me to the left so I could like literally see him while this whole thing's going on. And it got good. We're talking... Hey, we're talking a little bit of a scrap now. Oh yeah. Hey, we're talking people getting involved. Hey, we're from talking everywhere. We're, it was electrifying, but that's how I know I definitely overpaid because <laughs> when it was over, I got in and then it it had gotten a lot longer. Yeah, it kept you know? going. So I think whenever the footage is seen on Friday and Foxy's new vlog, I think people will be like, of course, but honestly, it was the only one I think that I could have drove away in. And uh, everybody knew I was gonna fucking buy one. So I might've got run up maybe, but it felt like there was a couple other people in the room that really wanted that thing. Whenever we walked back to the, uh, to the Jeep, whenever, after it was sold, you know, it's like going and seeing a dog you just adopted. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like going to check it out. I go back. There's two people standing around it, looking inside of it. It was somebody who was in the bid earlier. You know, they uh. lost out. Yeah. So there was a lot of, and by the way, the guy, was very nice, but he was in the, the bidding for it early. He had, you know, shit kickers on his feet. Mm -hmm. He had boots on. It was almost like when he saw me, he was like disappointed. Oh, yeah. Like, everybody in there was like, this fucking guy should not have got this Jeep. <laughs> but it was, uh, it's beautiful. I'm pumped about it. And the Meekum people were very hospitable. But it is, it's electrifying. And my wife, she might be Scorsese. <laughs> she, like the... The shots that she got of the Meekum, uh, the car, of me, she's like, she's real. She might be like one of the greatest camera people of all time <laughs> yeah. after seeing the, the clips and everything like that. It is, it was awesome in there, AJ. I mean, it was, God, I mean, I got, I got, I stood yeah. up at one point. I mean, it was real. It was the arena. I mean, it was, and then was, Connor Cam is yeah, like, it's infectious. It, it, it was like, a whole the thing. energy. Was anyone else though? Was anyone else there as excited as you were? Everybody in there was excited for the joust that we got into. Oh, yeah. It was People like, that's what, they're, that's what they're waiting for. Yeah. And it wasn't on TV. You know, so it was like, yeah. Meek, I almost feel like bad for Meekum, like, because I think the, the moment was between me and the guy, oh, potentially, yeah. just from what we saw, like the most amount of action, at least. And it was during commercial break, I think, or something. They should, be able to, they should have ran it later then. Like, well, they should put it back on, on that's, the broadcast. By the way, I thought a hundred times that they would have done. I don't think they were even filming. No. It. They got some photos of me doing the thing, but I don't think they have the video at all. And I'm like, man, I feel like I gave you guys quite a good little run here. Yeah, they fucked up big time. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> even if it is commercial, it's like, hey, still get this on camera. During the break. Yeah. During the break, this is what, I mean, it was, it was good. Now I paid a lot more than I should have for a car that you got to roll up the windows, though. 
Okay, I got no, a, it's old school. I got to roll up those windows. It's a throwback. I got to lock every one of them individually. <laughs> okay, I got to. Is there air conditioning? Uh, there is good air conditioning, but I got to move the side mirrors with my hands. You know what uh, I mean? I, like, sure. It's, I was looking for the little knob, maybe. No, of course not. No. Of course not. Doesn't have that. Got to do this. Got to do this. <laughs> it, it does connect Bluetooth very quickly, though. Okay. Nice. Which is cool. And when that thing. I mean, when it hums, it hums. It's geared low, though, for power. Okay, so first gear, second gear, got to shift quickly out of those because we're trying to pull some shit out of some shit. Mm -hmm. But once we get into fourth, fifth, and sixth gear, she does fly a little bit. Okay. She she really starts spreading her wings. You know what I mean? She really starts going. But this thing is a monster truck, AJ. A fucking monster truck. I mean, you need to take that off roading somewhere and climb the mountains with that. Deal. Yeah, Everest. <laughs> yeah, Everest. He's probably good. Uh, let's get to a break. At least Kilimanjaro. Uh, let's get to a break. We'll answer some phone calls on the other side. Hey, maybe we'll have OJ Howard on the show. Oh, okay. Here we go. He's, sure. at, he's at the summit. Yeah, he's going to the tight end. Yeah. yeah. I think the offensive linemen are doing something, too. I was like kind of texted about it. Oh. But once again, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it or not. Oh, on you. L-O-U. I don't think it's being called L-O-U because the uh, tight ends did it, but they do have a cool name. Oh, nice. Oh. On the back end of it. They have a cool name. He breaks that? No, nah, I don't think so. That's for them to do. And I don't want to piss off the offensive linemen. No. Smart. That's not a good idea. They're actually pretty big to our show, the offensive linemen. They oh, yeah. Our show. Love the track. I feel like we're a very pro offensive line show. Yeah, for absolutely. sure. I think so. All right, let's get to a break. We'll answer phone calls on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show. And I assume there's going to be stories around the uh, Meekum people about, you remember when McAfee paid, insert ridiculous price here for a GP tried to sell one week later? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we'll be back in four minutes. <laughs> Cheers. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful... 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make and no hard feelings. And uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. Boys, so, uh, how you? congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, boys. All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is. Marshall, I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton, <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady, you becoming friends with him. I, it was interesting to watch. Oh, yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic offseason no time to meet with his receivers he met with his coaches illegally by breaking into byron levis <laughs> uh, so besides that uh it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish and uh he deserves all the credit his leadership is, is what put the bucks in this game today and uh i have great respect for him because i know how hard it is but uh, he deserves all the credit hey how did you know red 18 was coming Pat, I mean, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was <laughs> 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the... Some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Hey! 
Hey, listen, tonight, you in the red, you in the blue. I hate you both, and fuck you too. Before I leave here, I'm knocking all you out. Cheers. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You too. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Bang. And I'm out. Give me out. Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. Don't want to talk over Marty Vicks here. <laughs> Shout out to Maneke. Welcome back. AJ Hawk still here. AJ, how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. How are you? Not too. You all right? Yeah, Whoa. What the hell was that about? You sure? What happened? You sounded like a little pissed off or yeah. whatever. Is yeah. that because oh, you're not no. in Hawaii, dude? It's all right. <laughs> no, I'm okay. I didn't. I didn't mean to sound like that. Why? Well, we got to remember he has four kids. It was a long weekend. True. Yeah. Who knows what AJ's been through? You know, he's seeing the singing, the dancing in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. We're sorry, dude. We didn't do it either, man. We we are so sorry. Uh, you know, but I, you want to let anything off your chest? You want to let anything out? Wait, so when I said I'm I'm doing well, how are you? You said I sounded angry in that? Yeah, it's not yeah. how you said it, it's how you said it. You know, it's, it's classic tone versus uh, uh, content thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. You know what, it, what got me thinking is that, you know, when you're not mad, but people keep asking you what's wrong, oh, and if you are mad, oh. then, it, then you turn into an angry person. Yeah, I was actually going to think about doing that to you, but then my batteries just died. So <laughs> I started still... laughing because I started. I knew that your brain was starting to go there. Yeah, is everything okay? Are you all right? <laughs> what are you no, mad I'm about? Terrible, terrible. Doing really bad. Knew it. Oh, what are you mad about? So if I say that, but if I'm cheery, then you're, it's okay. Yeah, but like I wasn't going to let it slide regardless. There, you know. What I mean, as soon as I heard the "I'm well, man, how are you?" <laughs> whoa. Like, whoa, 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 whoa! Let's peel back the onion a little bit. Yeah. Here. By the way, I'm as hyped. expected, let off the show, talking about everything happening in the sports world. Then had a conversation with an auctioneer. People not happy about it. People what? not that happy that we had that on our show. 30 minutes we talked about the auctioneer in the car. I knew it was going to happen. You mm. brought it back up, too. How much you, you were trying to tank the show. People are not happy that that's what today's show is. Fucking what, you, you think that I knew that people weren't happy, so I wanted to bring the auctioneer stuff back into it? We see you in the YouTube chat. That would be chat, a move AJ. you would do. We know what your name is. <laughs> see, I, I don't even look at the YouTube chat anymore, uh, but I saw it on Twitter. I saw that on Twitter. That's ridiculous. Yeah, hey, uh, YouTube chat. What'd they probably. say? Huh? What'd they say? They say this is a sports show, a lot of sports stuff to talk about. Why are we talking to a fucking auctioneer? It was like, well, you weren't in there. It was pretty sports-like atmosphere. Yeah, you clearly have never been to a Meek and Motto auction. Then. There was some real competition going on. In this particular one, it was me and older white battling. <laughs> battling. They I gave mean, you the stick to sports? Yeah, I did. Oh, get the oh wow. I did. Shut up and talk. Shut up and talk sports. That's bullshit. Yeah, well... I think they'll understand why after the price tag is fully revealed. <laughs> <laughs> why we're trying to drain this thing dry potentially. Let's go to Benjamin in Canada. What's going on, Benjamin? Hey, what's up, Bad and the boys? AJ, how are you doing today? Hey, not too bad, <laughs> baby. Good. I, I, I just want a quick shout out to all my Canadian pals. Uh, uh, happy Victoria Day today and uh, Gumpy too. Shout George out Saint to Pierre. you boys. Shout out to Canada. Yeah. 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 What is it? So, um, Sorry, yeah, uh, like I heard a couple weeks ago, uh, first of all, please <laughs> excuse question. my weird uh, French accent, you know. Um, oui. Yeah. Oui. Hola, <laughs> so uh, wanna... ça va? Ça va? 
Hola. Ah, oh, ça va, Pat. Euh, merci. Et puis toi? Euh, comme c'est comme ça. Euh, oh. euh, tu es... I, I appreciate the effort every time, Pat. Oh. I just want to say that. Oui, oui. Uh, merci. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, very cool. So, uh, uh, yeah, I just très, want uh, to talk about... I heard a couple of weeks ago Energique. that uh, there was a talk <laughs> between uh, XFL and CFL uh, to, uh, you know, uh, an association to uh, a league in, uh, in Canada. So, uh, Stop. but Stop. It, it probably won't won't gonna Just happen. Go. But w wouldn't that be cool to have, uh, you know, uh, our two country united <laughs> with the best sports in the world <laughs> when uh, on the same league? You know, I agree completely. I couldn't even fathom the to on you, you, oh, you, you man. Know, when, when the uh, to on oh. uh, on on <laughs> on the. <laughs> Why don't we get trois, 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 trois yeah, quatre, sure. cinq, six, sept, oui, neuf, dix, onze, deux, treize, brr, something. One. <laughs> That's one. In God, English. I think. <laughs> they were calling him French Pepe in the chat. That's not. Whoa. Hey, oh, come on. All right. But the XFL becoming the IFL, the International Football League, I'm here for it. I'd assume the CFL and the XFL would be thankful for that business-wise, promotion-wise, team-wise. Uh, and if anybody can get it done, Dewey Johnson can get it done. Yep. Ain't that right, AJ? I guess I had no clue what the poor guy was saying. He seemed like such a nice person. I was just watching you. It's, it's truly amazing how your brain works as you're just farting around, doing whatever, saying random <laughs> things, breaking into song. But then you actually hear his question. Like, I didn't hear his question because... I'm just paying attention to you. Well, that's a compartmentalizing thing in this whole game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just like the auctioneer, how he is auctioning, and then he's thinking about eating at Denny's 7 o'clock. That's right. Now, that's not like him being the Tiger Woods of auctioneering, that type of Denny's. He's talking about moons <laughs> over my hammy in the back of his brain while he's hanging around. Yeah. That's just being able to put things in different places, you know? I'm listening to everybody. Some people don't deserve it either. French Pepe does, though. Yeah. That guy deserves it. I hope he calls back again. Let's go to Chris in Virginia. What's going on, Chris? What's up, guys? How you guys doing today? Hey, uh, muy bien, eh, toi? Uh, hey, man, that's that's way above my pay grade. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> speak dumb American, please. I got Hell you, Chris. Yeah. What do you want yeah, to talk yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, no, man. I'm, I'm here to talk about LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I heard y'all's segment a little bit earlier uh, about how, like, people are kind of questioning why LeBron hasn't been punished yet or, you know what I'm saying, if the NBA is going to come out and stuff. So apparently the party was very, uh, very like free vaccinated. It was you had to show proof of vaccination or proof of a false test is what I read from uh, oh, I believe ESPN. PR guy? No, no, that that everyone kind of everyone's kind of comparing that situation to the will. And uh, yeah, are people more upset about the? Thank you, the, Chris. Was that windy? The shoulder thing. I thought not, people would be talking more about that. That was not Brian Windhorse. Uh, that was Chris, I believe, <laughs> in Virginia. But he's saying that, that that particular event was locked down. Because if you think about, for instance, for the WWE, yeah. we have everybody that gets into the building has to have a negative test. Uh, I, even now, even if you're vaccinated, still have to have proof of a negative test. We knew that LeBron was upholding the standards yeah. of basically everybody else. Yeah. Obviously, the internet's not going to react that way because it does appear as him getting special treatment. But if he's handing out COVID tests to everybody and they're all negative, I assume you can't be mad at him because that's what everybody else is doing. It's just who knows if it's accurate or not. Yeah, who, exactly. But there, are, is someone gonna gonna dive into this party they had and go contract trace everybody and see if there's an outbreak? If um, I would assume somebody hates LeBron enough to do that, yeah, yeah. probably. Absolutely. Yeah, I think because oh, yeah. there was a risk. I mean, his arm. Luckily, he's so big and strong because his arm should have been ripped out of its socket. Yes. Almost did. And been laying there and blood all over the floor, and that would have been an issue. <laughs> yeah, and then Chris Paul, by the way, tried to come help him up afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, Chris, okay, we don't need to attack his other arm, too. What was he going to Because he, he grabs his left arm, breaks it over his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, what a flop. And then he goes to reach for the other one. Imagine if if Chris Paul at that moment just takes that thing and drops down and just hits oh, the other man, one. Yeah. Arm bar. Phoenix Suns, we're getting a playoff win tonight. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Should have. LeBron survived, though, after a vicious eye attack and yeah. an arm bar. He is going into game two, down 0-1. He's been here before. Look for them to win yeah. in five in this entire thing. Probably. Big injuries. AJ, hour two is wrapping up here. Anything to say to the serious listeners as we get into hour three on the other side? 
No, and, and hopefully we don't start doing this at the end of hour two in shows as well, where you try to get me to say something inspirational. Well, I just think like there's some stuff that not inspirational, but maybe a tease. For instance, the Jacksonville oh, yeah. Jaguars have released pictures that have all of their draft grades on them. They had Waddle as the same grade or higher than Trevor Lawrence. The, uh, this is a new new game for the Jacksonville Jaguars and Urban Meyer. They're going to have to keep this thing locked with a key. Hour three, we'll talk about that and more. This is the Pat McAfee Show Monday, May. 24th. The goalie finds his way, and Sidney Crosby, oh. the captain, the greatest of all time, according to Pat McAfee, <laughs> he wins tonight, and that is my lock of the night. The Pittsburgh Penguins money line. Hell, you might as well take them minus one and a half oh, no. at plus 202. There's no chance. Oh, no. Zero percent chance. Yeah. The Where's Penguins the lose tonight. What's this all about? <laughs> I mean, I've been listening to you for the last 48 hours. Talk about the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, I'm a talk Man, about, talk about the Stanley Cup. Talk about Sidney Crosby. This is because your Red Wings stink. And, they're not and in you the want to take it out on a real one. Get out. And Get that out is why I'm taking Get out. the Pens. Your Do bet. you think they're going to win tonight? Your bet. No. Your bet. Just because the Red Wings, okay? Can't make it into the fucking dance. Doesn't mean you need to waltz your ass over to the Pittsburgh Look, Penguins like you did to the Steelers. Put a puck right in his teeth, dude. I will. We led off the Pat McAfee show today by you saying, basically, hockey stinks and no one cares about hockey. Here we go. That's not Penguins. Happening. Here we go. That's not the chance. Hey, it's going to the Stanley Cup. Get out. Here we go. That's not how chant goes, dudes. Let's God go. God damn it. Let's go, Pens. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we have a casualty. Oh, no. Man, I'm going to need you to zoom in on that. I'm gonna need you to lower the camera. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Take your Mickey Mouse, play it, and get out. Of, Mick, camera. get rid of the money line. Kindly leave. Now, fo- now, scroll down, Other zoom camera. down, Mick. Other camera. <laughs> I'm so confused. Yes. Other camera. I'm so confused. Straight <laughs> down that one. Yeah. Why'd you do that? Mitt, with a Nick and Gumpy camera, will you zoom in on the ground, please? What, 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 what happened? <laughs> what, I Thank just you. left. He what happened. happened. Nick spiked that plant. <laughs> I can't not- have it, Pat. I only care about a few things in this world. Oh, you can you know that. Now, and but... hockey is one of them. The Pittsburgh Penguins are right at the top of that goddamn list, and he's pissing all over him right now. I mean, fair. I mean, this is going to take a while to clean up. There's shrouds everywhere. Shrap metal, dude. Yeah. Shrap metal, dude. Hey, thanks, Foxy. I have to pick that up now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll believe it. What, where was that? What, it was what's going on, though? It was on his plan. It was on his... So listen, Foxy. What? You fuck over his life. Yeah. what you did. He I said did. fuck over Connor's life. This is this is a, a trend now. Do we not think that the Pens are going to win tonight? That's all they got to do. We do. We did. That's all we got to do. We got to get a goalie in that that's not Swiss cheese, and we're all happy at the end of the day. What happened? Like, what? Is this immediately after I left? Yeah. yeah. Luck. It's yeah. Like, dude, dude. You're lucky you weren't here, dude. You would have caught one in the neck, probably. I, I couldn't risk. But who has a cactus? Connor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to get Connor's thoughts on this plant being fucking broken. <laughs> Luckily, the styrofoam is still good. Just get this succulent out of my sight. <laughs> the death of the succulent is not on me. <laughs> you're fucking going to hell, dude! Oh, you, you want to go to hell? Oh, you stupid go. fucking go. go. And I'm taking the go. Go. And I'm taking the go. Go. And I'm taking the go. Go. You didn't go. 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 the go. Scrap, boys. Good scrap. Fucking stick tap. Can we get a goddamn socially distant contest? What did you guys do? What was this? We lost the thing. Oh, no, the Iowa. You two fucking cool it down. The Iowa. Fight him. No. The Hawkeye popcorn's on him. I'm going to hell then. Get the hell out of here. Screw you. Get out. What are you doing? 
the Hawkeye popcorn's done. Just ready for and war. I'm taking whoever's playing the Penguins because he's destroying the Steelers and the Penguins for you two clowns. <laughs> you guys need to figure it out. You hear me? What are you still out. doing in here? You made your pick. Get out. Fade Foxy. <laughs> are you all right? Good scrap. Hey, good scrap. I'm good. Scrap. Fucking, I stick tapped you. No, physically fine, mentally destroyed. Had to. Guys ruined everything. Call the money line. One eight three four two 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 three three. Some people. What do you think the plan is with Justin Fields in Chicago? I know we we heard Andy Dalton was the starter and all this yeah. stuff. What do you think Fields plays from day one? Fudge, yeah. And AJ, you play that Joker from the first snap of the season. Now, I think the pressure one hundred percent falls on Matt Nagy. Going, you know what? I failed Mitchell Trubisky. Wow. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hour three on this Monday, May 24th. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. There it is. Here we go. AJ Hawk joining me and the boys here live on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, <coughs> and YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. Your calls can be taken at one 833 4 mcafee The lines are full. Whenever we hang up on somebody, that's your time to get into the club after security has bounced somebody out of the club. Very fascinating Instagram post by DeAndre Hopkins, who has said publicly that he would restructure his contract to get Julio Jones on the Arizona Cardinals. Now, he has released an Instagram post in which it is him, Julio Jones, A.J. Green, and Michael Irvin. A.J. Green, now a member of the Arizona Cardinals. DeAndre Hopkins, now a member of the Arizona Cardinals. Julio Jones, the last person in his picture who still plays football, who could be a member of the Arizona Cardinals, had a conversation, it seems like, somewhere at the Pro Bowl, and I assume it said, if we were ever to link up on the same team, we'd fucking dominate. How are they going to cover us all? It would be a single, a, a single all across the defense we wouldn't have anybody shading toward us towards us what is the safety gonna do whether it's me on one side you on the other AJ there as well do we have enough balls who cares at this point we're all rich let's go win a Super Bowl Kyler Murray's on a rookie contract he's also an incredibly cool dude and electrifying uh, Cliff Kingsbury knows how to draw up plays let's make this happen here we are staring down the potential Julio Jones DeAndre Hopkins A.J. Green, wide receiver core, maybe even Larry Fitzgerald if he comes back. Good luck to a defense who has to prepare for that. But if Julio goes anywhere, it's going to be crazy. This particular time, if he was alongside Nuke and A.J., I think that is must-see television if this happens. I mean, first off, look how good Michael Irvin looks. He looks like he can still play, and he's, what, 50-something? He's drinking that game-time wine with Lonnie mm-hmm. Pax. Ooh. Oh, yeah, you're right. But, okay, if they do, let's say Julio does sign with the Cardinals, does it make – does that – is that – make the chances of Larry Fitzgerald coming back, is there a, a better chance he comes back or less chance if Julio's on the team? Could you imagine old Larry working the slot, I mean, with <laughs> – I mean, just imagine Kyler in shotgun. Who's the running back? Uh, Chase Edmonds. Yeah. Edmonds. Him and James Conner as well. Right, James Conner just signed. Imagine him standing in shotgun – Okay, he's got Edmonds next to him. Then he looks to his left, and in a bunch, in a bunch, okay, it's A.J. Green, Julio Jones, 
and DeAndre Hopkins. That's in a bunch, right, where Cliff can draw that to go wherever. They'll probably have five, six defenders over there. And then on the other side, Larry Fitzgerald. Or put Larry in that bunch and have Julio all by himself over here. I mean, it's just the amount of things you can do with the defense. You can dictate and control exactly what they're going to do. And if you have a quarterback that can shake everybody if it's a one-on-one, I mean, that is... That is a designed team to try and win a Super Bowl. But once again, it's Julio Jones. You add him anywhere, they're going to immediately be much better. I assume for Falcons fans, this sucks because, damn, Julio was trending on Twitter. And I think it was all the Falcons fans saying, damn, Julio, I'm out of there on national television, which we don't know if he knew he was on national TV or not with Shannon Sharp. There's actually some lawyers getting involved on Twitter about the legalities of this whole thing. Uh, But the Julio Jones story is one where everybody waits with bated breath to see what the next team is that is going to join the Super Bowl conversation immediately upon his arrival. So, so they must have told him, obviously, like, we're, we're shopping you. And he, he gets a feeling from his agent talking to the team and, and speaking that, what, I'm not going to be there, right? He didn't say, like, I don't want to be there. It sounds like they've told him, hey, oh, we're yeah. shopping you and it's probably going to get done. Oh, yeah, I'm out of there. Yeah, yeah, they're moving me, dude. They can't yeah. afford me and Matt, and I'm not restructuring for that. There's or been other articles and stuff, though, that said he requested a trade months ago. Okay. Well, if they were shopping him before the draft, then it- – I That's mean, we're a month before the draft. That, right? Yeah, the the remember this happened a couple of years ago, right before an extension he signed. Yeah, where he erased all the Falcon stuff off his Instagram. Yep. Ooh. he was gone. He was out of there. Everybody's like, "Oh no, Julio's going to have a new home." And then they get an extension done. He's back, hunky dory. How you doing? Then I'd assume the you know we will potentially think. I assume they had a conversation, Julio and the Falcons, new management and everything. What's his name? Pontno. 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 Pontno probably told him like, "Hey, we are going to listen to offers and everything." He's like, "Yeah, I do want out." I assume that there was some sort of give and take there, but man, Julio on the move would be awesome for any team at this point, and it's really the only thing popping off. Hmm. Uh, Peyton Manning <laughs> used to call out Adam Gase. Uh, during team meetings and other meetings. And this comes from an offensive lineman named Ben Garland, Garland, who also was in uh, the Air Force. I believe he is currently in the National Guard somewhere. And he talked about how it was crazy to him to watch this because in the military, uh, nobody would ever call out their their superiors or whatever in the the rank. Uh, My quick question for Ben Garland okay is uh who do you think is the uh colonel in this fucking thing and who do you think is the uh sergeant or or (laughs) or staff sergeant or whatever the hell you want peyton manning is probably and i don't know how old adam gase is peyton manning's been in the nfl longer uh he's probably been around football longer he's the one that probably had to okay adam gase even still having a job on the team so him calling out adam gase in the meetings uh is exactly what john elway brought in peyton manning to do whenever he gave him the keys that's what peyton manning has done i'm sure there are many other stories that could come out from Peyton in meetings to coaches. We could have Clyde Christensen on here, quarterback coach for him for a long time, who's now down with the Buccaneers, and he would say, "What? Right, right, right. Get a text one, two a.m. Got to have the answers. Got to have, <laughs> got to have the answers." But that is what Peyton Manning is, Ben. I don't know how to tell you that the the demanding of you know accountability and a standard to be set. That is why Peyton Manning was Peyton Manning. Everybody in Denver knew what they were getting, and since. Uh, Ben left the team. That he lo- he left after an AFC Championship game. They won a Super Bowl that next year, Ben. So, I, Ben, thank you for your service. I appreciate thank you. you. Thank you, Ben. But this headline was like, yeah, no shit. What do we? Has anybody heard any stories about how how this whole thing operates? Whenever Peyton is your quarterback, by the way. This is what Tom had heard as well, by yes. the way, uh, whenever Peyton and Tom became friends. Aaron, by the way, probably has heard this stuff. Mm-hmm. That's why he and LaFleur had a full Zoom call. Where it was like, hey, this is what I need to see. Like, this is the empowerment of a, a quarterback who has earned the responsibility to do that. But Peyton, it was said that he walked in with a briefcase to interview Polian yeah. when he walked in there. It's like, that's what Peyton was. And by the way, a lot of success. There's a lot of reason behind it. He was groomed to be an NFL quarterback since he was like three years old. He, uh, he watched Peyton places. He is the game of football. Uh, like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to title him like, you know, he is, he wouldn't like that either, but you're talking about football knowledge and the way he operates. Like this is not a headline. And I think it's, uh, you know, Ben, like, Thank you for your service, Ben. But what the fuck is it? What, what, what are we even? You're talking out of pocket right now. This is not how it is in the military. It's like, 
No shit. <laughs> yeah. No, what do we even like? I respect and appreciate the military so much, but like to just have that whole statement, I was like, all right, Ben, shut. But up. to your point, Peyton's two years older and already had two MVPs by the time Adam Gates was in the NFL. Yeah. So who's yeah. what here? You know what I mean? I, I've never seen that in the military. It was like, well, well, you're talking about the colonel allowing a lieutenant to speak in front of the the rest of the men. Is that what you're saying? And then when he gets it wrong, going, no, nah, that's not what we're doing. We're not doing that. that. That is not how this goes. Now, if he wasn't older in the NFL longer, I assume he would still do that, uh, by the way, just because he's the one on the field making the whole thing happen. And that's the type of stuff that other quarterbacks see. And they see organizations buying in behind a great quarterback because, you know, they don't grow on trees. And then other people potentially get upset about it. Mm-hmm. Maybe. We don't know. Also, sheriff is the highest of highs that you could possibly be. Yeah, because you true. get voted in. Yeah. That's right. You don't even got to know anything about the goddamn law. <clears throat> you get voted in the sheriff. AJ Hawk could be the sheriff yep. of uh, Old Columbus over That's there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm qualified. But you mentioned the Jags. What they what they put out? Did they leak it out or somebody else? So Yahoo. I, I assume their social did a video or a picture. It was on Yahoo. I think they had their draft board with their scores on them. They had their draft board with their scores on them, and uh, they forgot to blur out their draft board showing a wide receiver with the same grade as Trevor Lawrence. I believe the wide receiver was uh, Waddle. Yeah. yeah. And who knows if the scoring for wide receivers and quarterbacks are on the same scale? Trevor Lawrence was their overall number one, but this is classic NFL uh, draft board blur out mistake here. <laughs> you watch some of these videos. And Chris Ballard, for instance, in the um, with the next pick series for the Colts, incredible access. You're allowed to see things or whatever, but somebody's got to blur out all the shit behind it. And it's like Chris is walking in front of a green screen because they got to move the blurs behind because every little scouting point is on all these walls. You walk in there, it's like a beautiful mind for all these scouts, like positions, uh, potential cost. Uh, scores, pros that are like that, colleges that are like that, sophomores that are potentially going to be next year. It's just like all this shit. And with great access comes great responsibility. Here at the Jags, they're like, ah, fuck it, put out the point system. Jalen Waddle's really good, we thought. I mean, I guess it, it really doesn't matter. Are people surprised that the fact that Trevor Lawrence, there's somebody with an equal grade, even though it's a different position, it's not like there's another quarterback with an equal grade as Trevor. Yeah, and maybe that, that just means that that's That our- would be news. Well, if there was another quarterback that had an eight like Trevor, then I'd be like, okay, well, what made you so sure about Trevor? The score might be in the position. This is our highest. You know, like it might have like, uh, that might be the point. Like per position, this is our highest rated QB, highest rated wide receiver. You know, like who knows exactly what that number means, which leads me to believe, are they wasting their time blurring out everything? Because that has to fucking take forever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. They are, but they don't There's want their... Yeah. yeah, yeah, frame by frame. Every single time he moves, you have to follow along with it. That would take probably, you know, a couple hours. Just one for... That's for one particular shot, right? Exactly. Let alone if it's like a six-minute video where you go in and out of yes, that. Yes, exactly. So shout out to the Colts if they actually did that. They did, it. yeah. Chris Ballard's standing in front of a, a thing, and he's like standing there, and the whole wall behind him is blurred, and it's like uh, around his body, basically. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I, I immediately was like, that had to take forever to do over there. And the Jaguars are like, anybody know what the score means? Nah, fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That saves me like four hours of doing tedious nonsense if we could do that. Go ahead, Connor. Probably great news for, I mean, if you're the Dolphins, you probably feel great about it. It's like, hey, Jalen Waddle, they thought he was just like Trevor Lawrence. So here we go. I don't think Dolphins care about how Urban Meyer is scoring them. <laughs> you kidding me? They see that eight draft score? They're fired up. They're probably thinking about taking Jalen Waddle number one overall. That's just like the Minnesota Vikings laughing at the Philadelphia Eagles for drafting <laughs> another. I, I assume, you know, you see a lot of people stay within the same group. You know, like uh, like Ballard comes from old buddy in Kansas City, I think. So it's kind of like, I assume there's different ways to go about the entire scouting process. That'd be fascinating to learn about. Also very boring, I bet, to explain. Yeah, it would be boring. I, and I have uh, different buddies I've talked to that have worked at front office gigs and I've asked them questions like, well, how do they do it different compared to like, different places? Like most places do things like this, very similar, like in the front office, how they scout players, what they do. But I think the, the Patriots are definitely a team that scout or how they grade players is different than a lot of other teams in the league. And I'm sure there's oh, one yeah. or two other teams where I think they got they have like the answer. They the Patriots the might get Julio, by the way. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, what do they what do they give up for him? I don't think Bill cares. Have you nope. seen what Bill has been doing? Yeah. This Bill, off season. Bill does not fuck it. Whole different Bill. It's a fire sale. Everything must go, dude. Everything must go. Because we got to get everything in here. We got to turn this around quick. And I think, 
You know, they say Bill Belichick and Saban. Real tight, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Down at the pro day, Bill and Saban chuckling, laughing, having a good time together. He drafts Mac Jones. You know what I mean? HBO doc with the two. Sitting down. Together. Yeah, they're doing the whole thing. I think they're very close. And I don't know how many people are very close to either of those men, you know, aside from their immediate family. I don't know. At that point, I assume it's tough to have friends. I, I, I yeah. just, especially with uh, the type of mindset, like love football. Nick Saban came out for the first time ever in Nick Saban's football life last year and said, I used to think that you had to run the ball well, you had to stop the run, and have good defense. Uh, but that is no longer what football is. And if you if you think that, you are going to get passed by. He, it was like, it was very big coming from Saban because everybody remembers the Alabama teams. They're going to run the ball. They're going to have a huge offensive line. Yep. Their quarterback, you know, he has to be good because he's going to have to complete a pass at some point. But there's going to be a lot of handing off and play action. You're going to be able to do that. And then the defense is going to hunt. Like, it is going to be a fast defense, a good defense. Is Saban coming out and saying, that's not what football is anymore, by the way. Football is wide open. you got to throw. you got to have weapons. I assume he and Bill have chatted about this, right? And Bill Belichick in the first day of free agency tampering period there uh, spend all that money, get weapons on the offensive side of the ball. I assume Bill and Nick are on the same page football philosophy-wise. For sure. It would make a lot of sense if he brought in Julio if that was his new philosophy. Like, hey, you need weapons. you got to score. Like, it is no longer run the ball, uh, win in special teams, and stop the ball. It is. You got to score, and you got to get stops when it's necessary. You got to have uh, prime time stops, but you're not going to be able to stop everybody the entire game. This is football now. I just, I think back to that, and I assume they have chatted about that, don't you think? Well, yeah, that's why I think Belichick and Saban have both been able to have this consistent success. Like how they go about it, their whole process, their attention to detail, all of that I think has always probably stayed very similar to what it was when they first got into coaching. But they evolve, man. Like hearing Saban say that, that's a that's a big deal. There's I agree. A lot of old school coaches that have won numerous national championships could easily sit there and be like, no, that's, we're not playing that kind of ball. That's not what we do at Alabama. Like you could sit there and – and act like you're too good for that and it's going to work how you want to do it but for saving to be like hey man no this is this is where it's going i need to get there or i'm gonna uh, you know the end of my coaching career my, the, my legacy may be affected by my stubbornness to stick with this same plan I, i've had for a long time so i think belichick is very similar he doesn't maybe explain it as much as saban did in that time but i think belichick the reason he is able to do this is because yeah he may have the patriot way and people want to say it's not fun and everything but he can evolve like offensively and defensively and also by the way fun i think they're having a lot more fun cam newton last year there's just videos of the whole thing but it wasn't the saban quote wasn't as intense as like quit asking but mm -hmm. close it was it was very close to like the you could hear him almost getting sick of hearing the people you're referring to talking about the, this is how you win a game he's like that's not how you win the game anymore like you could tell he was almost like fed up with people maybe questioning whether or not his team is different than it used to be or anything like that and maybe he was just covering up for his new team that he had and he doesn't really see that as all football but i don't think that's the case i think everything saban says is probably calculated for a reason and him saying like that's not football anymore it's just he was probably telling his fans probably uh alabama football experts you know yeah. they're probably saying like got to get back to this got to get back to this but also if nick saban's saying something i assume bill belichick who's a really close person is also thinking it unless they just what if those two get into knockdown drag out fights over that oh, oh man. Man. They're, they're sitting down at the dinner table covid social distance you know what i mean bill's got his thing on nick's got his thing on they're on the other side of the table and bill Bill's like, yeah, you got to run the ball. Okay, you got to be able to stop the ball. You got to win field position. Nick's like, that is not the game anymore, Bill. Bill, who the fuck you? Who are you? What if they just started yelling at the end? Yeah, you're right. I got to go spend $150 million in front of uh -huh. like, That's I, what I'm going to do. I wonder, you know, like, do you think they have meetings of the mind where you talk football? In yeah, that's all they talk is football, it seems like. 100%. How many people do they let into those convos? And do you, when Nobody. You no, Miss Terry, Saban's wife, Miss Terry. She's probably the only one that gets to even Nike, get a glimpse of it. And Steve Nike, Belichick. the dog, Steve. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if Steve Belichick's Steve's in there. Steve, yeah. He's probably like, hey, Steve, you worry yeah. about that mullet and the defense. This is. Take a hike, Steve. Because that's like the Illuminati there of football. You get invited to that conversation. Matt Patricia's definitely in there. Yeah, well, no way. Yeah. You yeah. think he's invited yeah. Patricia and not his own son? Oh, Who's sorry, the team coordinator Steve now, decision dude? For the draft? Is Steve Come signing on. the last person to sign each player? Come on. He's not. 
That's, Patricia, that's not, Patricia's job. His name's not like his signature's not in the contract. Patricia's number two in that organization. It, yeah, the last Above one to Ernie. sign off on anybody. Yeah, Ernie's retired. Ernie's, 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 Ernie's gone. still on the team Ernie's this whole entire Ernie's year. Ernie's retired. It's his last season. He's, he's not gone. retired yet. He's, he's gone. gone. So he's not retired yet. Long live Ernie. In that HBO documentary, though, they do at the end when they're done filming. Bill's like, "All right, now you guys gotta get out of here, man. We got yeah. something we gotta talk about." Like he kicks the cameraman out, and they keep going after they hey, filmed like their hey, segment. That's you when said, they you brought said something. Patricia, yeah. You said something very, very yeah, probably brought many. <laughs> hey, you said something like an hour ago that was very impressive. I need to learn more about. I, yeah, get, nobody else can see it though. <laughs> get the fuck out, please. Turn the mics off, please. So yeah, we're done with these. Yeah, and they yeah. just took them off. And... What are you saying about the game? The game's changing, Bill. It <laughs> <laughs> would be because who do you go to for advice if you're Bill Belichick? You know, I think Bill Belichick asked a lot of people for advice. I think I, I haven't you talked to college coaches? They're always impressed with how Belichick True. will come check on a guy that's probably not True. even get drafted. They want to get a heads up for him to, to sign him as an undrafted guy. Like, I think he guys like that that are elite at what they do like they're constantly curious and they're always asking questions yeah but how many people is he actually taking advice from you That's know? A, well he may ask 100 questions and only take only get one decent answer that he thinks will help him but i'm sure he's doing that they say you should never be worried about the opinions of somebody you wouldn't ask for their advice from or mm -hmm. something like that i assume bill belichick it's going to be hard to find somebody he gives a fuck about their opinions. Yeah, it's a small yeah. list. I would assume it's got to be very – just at this point, you know, like I assume it is tough for him to find. Nick Saban's probably one of those – different football here, mm -hmm. different college football, NFL football, different football. You tried my league, you stunk. I could have probably went to your league, dominated, but I don't. I'm up here. But still, I think they probably have a, a respect for each other. But you're right, I guess. Bill, it is – every time I did a game – you know, they talked about Bill Belichick, kind of like, oh, Bill called me, asked about this guy, and then the, the offense, he wanted to know what this, and that's, I assume, but how many friends you got up there, I wonder? Probably not a lot. Not many. Just Matt Patricia and Nick Saban. Sure. Tuna Parcells. Two. Bill. Two. Yeah. Did they get two Bills, right? That was yeah. all Doc, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. They still get along, you think? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Well, didn't it take them like 30 years to get those guys back together to do that? That's what I'm saying. Uh-huh. I wonder <laughs> if that was just a one-night affair. Yeah, it could have been. What a weird world, dude. They don't, I mean, they can't have a ton of friends. When are you going to be – like, do you think NFL head coaches, the majority of them are texting friends throughout the day and doing things, like, especially during the season? Never. They're gone. Hibernation. See you later. That's why Chris Ballard probably hasn't answered my text this morning, which was a gif of Julio making that Super Bowl catch. <laughs> I assume they're busy. That's kind of how it goes, but – Man, that's insane to think. There's one guy. There's one guy that'll respond to you during during the season throughout the year of the can, and he's DM'd with you before, and I think you'll know. Old Vrabes. Vrabes still stays in touch, I think, with the world while he's coaching. I did DM Vrabes. Oh, yeah, he did answer. Yeah, we followed each other. I've never met this man. Okay, obviously, massive fan of his. Just for everything I've heard about him as human, player, and coach. Okay, this is the trifecta here, Vrabes, <laughs> of, of things that I, I just find hilarious or whatever. And I made, uh, I made a, a, a snide remark in the DMs about him doing the draft instead of being at the Derby, you know, because mm -hmm. he's supposed to be at the Derby. Like yeah. him and him and Ty, he's a part of that group or whatever. And I'd never messaged him before he followed me. I sent it out there. He came back quicker than anything I've ever seen with a, it was a right hook. Hey, maker. Yeah, oh yeah, very quickly. I, I think I called him soft or something for oh. not, not doing the draft from the Kentucky Derby. He buried me in this show <laughs> in one sentence and a half and then uh, have a good one, pal, or something like that. And I just <laughs> laughed, I laughed so hard. He's a guy, that guy. Hey, they might get Julio. I mean, I think that would make sense. And it seems like for me, if I'm Julio, I think it would be an attractive place to go. Nashville's awesome, and, and I think that is not what you were referring to. But Derrick Henry in the backfield is always good for the wide receivers as well for that box that has to happen, let alone with A.J. there as well. The thought of Julio joining that team is not good for anybody else in the AFC South. And I'll tell you what, Chris Ballard, if Julio ends up at the Tennessee Titans oh. – and we got to stare him. He's only 32, by the way. I was saying he was 34. Early. And we got to stare him down for what? The next four years at least? Five years at least? And it's not worth what? A, a second and a third over? Ah, Get out of time. Good luck. Get out of here, Chris. I mean, if it only takes a second and a third, you have to. You have to try to get yeah, him. He said they were asking for a one. Nobody's done it. Now they're saying he's still on the market, so it's probably not going to be a one, right? So what is it? A second then? Two seconds? What? And is two seconds worth a one? How do we 
What's if it's a second and a third, that's a no-brainer for anybody. No, no, not for anybody. I got people on the internet telling me I'm a scumbag. I should not be spreading these false narratives. That's why I'm never going to be a GM. It's Pat, like, oh. even if it is a one. <laughs> Give and, it a fucking one. I, and mm-hmm. you're the Colts, and you get this guy. You're going to go on a run. Bingo. You're going to go deep. It's going to be a late one. Yeah, it, well, and, exactly. And there's just like the Carson Wentz one could become a one if he plays and they do well. But who cares? You're doing well. I, I just don't buy into the draft type as much as everybody else. I think you're that way too, AJ. And the reason why is because, uh, you know, I've been in the locker room and I've seen some of the greatest looking football players of all time come into the locker room. A lot of hype. And then they stink (laughs) for whatever. I have no idea why. Mentally, maybe they can't figure it out. They're not as bought in. Maybe now that they made money, they're a different person. That happened. They got hurt. They can get hurt early on to derail their career. What about like Tennessee? Their their first round pick from, was it two years ago? He's already off the team. One year ago. Last year. year. I just, I, I, you know, potential get your ass fired. Is what coaches say, and that's for a reason. Now, also, that draft pick could become another Julio, right? Yeah. That could become another Julio. But good news is, you got Julio already, okay? <laughs> so that's what you gave up the pick for. I, I just don't know why there is so much, so much weight in these draft picks, especially with the math saying there is a good chance this shit ain't going to work. Like, I, I just, it's a tough league. You find somebody who can dominate in the league. Okay, let's let's get that if we can afford it. Let's get that guy. We know he's going to do well. Like this is, we have done the research. The re- research has told us this guy will fucking dominate anywhere, anytime <laughs> mm-hmm. against anybody. Okay, you ask his opponents, you ask other his peers. Everybody says aside from this guy, you always want the guy on your team that is the aside from this guy in the conversation of who is the guy. It's just. Imagine if he goes to Arizona with Nuke and AJ Green and Fitzgerald. It's over. Do you think I it's mean, just recency bias? Like because he didn't play a full season last year, the people are just now like, uh, oh, two and a three. Like he's injury prone. He's always hurt. Like his contract's ridiculous. Like it's not worth it. Isn't that interesting that the people that that, that is potentially something? The people that are coming after me are the people who say I'm not seeing the big picture. But really, they might not be seeing the big picture. Mm -hmm. Hey, zoom out a little bit, okay? You're going to get cropped hot, all right? Nicki Minaj said that. You can get draft picks back, too. You can work angles and figure out how to get that two and three back. And contracts mean nothing. We've learned that. Yeah, yeah. With avoidable years, yeah, you can bring these guys on, too, probably restructure and still find a way to, to keep it under the cap. Imagine Carson Wentz coming back. Yeah, but can the Colts even trade there first? Because if they're on the hook for Wentz... Like is that is is that something that can work or no? That's a good question. That's a great question. I don't know. Because if they trade that first and then Carson Wentz plays so well, where they have to give up, you know what I'm saying? Like that wouldn't really. Yeah, because it's a conditional. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Figure it out. Yeah, give him next <laughs> in the year after. 2022. Who cares? Bro, give him 2031 through 2035 first round picks. Mm-hmm. We'll figure it out later, dude. Golly, man. Imagine him in Green Bay with Aaron and yeah. Devontae and big Bob Tunyon, who's already going to tight end you. He's only going to get better yeah. somehow. I mean, it is. Somehow the Chiefs will end up with him. Somehow the Chiefs no. or the Bucks will end up with him. It's going to happen. I wouldn't be Not surprised. Atlanta. I'm, Atlanta can't trade him. Yeah, if Tampa it wasn't Bay. the division, it, it would be the Bucks Chiefs, for sure. Though. That's the only reason. They why. said they will trade him to somebody in the NFC, but it's going to have to be right. Okay? <laughs> I think the Seahawks are there, too. To I want to see him in L.A. with the Rams. Anyone in, oh, yeah, with in Stafford. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, that that team was zero draft cap, I'm pretty sure. Who, the Rams? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they'll give up. They will give up 2040 yeah. through 2050. Shrake yeah. said they could make it happen. He tweeted about it. Oh, let's get to a break, dude. At the Bills. Bills, too. Oh, Stephon Diggs. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's not do that. And Josh Allen, by the way, is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Calibrated. They got Manuel Sanders, too. Maybe I should start sending texts to old Bean with those gifts. What are we doing? (laughs) Oh, no. Why would you do that? That hurts Indianapolis. Oh, that's because he's going to the AFC. Do you remember who beat you in the playoffs last year? Buffalo Bills. Yeah. yeah. That was only a three point game. That was Philip Rivers Colts, dude. Yeah. That's True. Philip Rivers Colts. Well, wins and losses, right? By the way, I heard he is a physical phenomenon. Phil. Yeah. They have no idea how he can run, they said. He is they said he is not flexible at all. <laughs> at all. They said he is a specimen. It, it makes no sense how his body can do what it does, they said. They said he's big, much more athletic than you think cannot really cannot move other than that that's why he's always up i guess during the games 
Oh, so I just get I think, stiff. I think, yeah, I started putting two and two together because I held the crown there for a long time as the least flexible human to ever go through the Indianapolis Colts organization. <laughs> and I was told that my crown was potentially close. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura. He, he didn't steal it, though. He goes, <laughs> oh, okay. Did you see Boogs, dude? Oh. Woo! No, Boogs win. No. Oh! We're back on the other side. Got to talk about Boogs. Got to take some phone calls. Got to wrap up this Monday, May 24th. AJ Hawk and the boys are here. We can't thank you enough for spending time with us. We'll see you in four minutes. Cheers. We are moments before going out onto the field and kicking some field goals to raise a crap ton of money for the kids. And uh, I'm about to become an old man. I said I do this, then I do this, then I do this. Oh, Kazi. Oh my God. <laughs> you want a little bit of that grandpa. Hey, you, you see you go, I'm just so excited we can raise some money because that's what we're here for. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, hey, hey. Oh hey. <laughs> it is hard to see down. <laughs> There's no way I live this long in real life. Ah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our contestant and cheer him on as he attempts to raise $70,000 for cancer research. On your mark, get set, go! The show recommended by zero out of five old white guys. It's the Pat McAfee Show. From deep in the hills of Humboldt County, the Dip Boys at Canadips have an exciting announcement for everybody listening and watching along. Canadips will be flying out five winners for an all-expense paid trip to Humboldt County, California for an off-road ex- 
off road excursion. Okay. Take it. Take the helmet. Off road excursion to see 20 foot cannabis plants and meet many innovators and farmers in the height of the season. Okay. The first winner was chosen last week from Oklahoma Sooner Country. The following winner. It might be Pokes country. I, I assume they know. I assume yeah. it's Oklahoma. Hey, Boomer. Sooner. The following winner will be chosen for the second round winner on May 31st. That's right. Next Monday. Head to CandidateCBD.com forward slash Croptober to enter. That's C-A-N-N-A-D-I-P-S-C-B-D.com forward slash C-R-O-P-T-O-B-E-R to enter. Candidates will be choosing a new winner every two weeks from May 1st to end of June. So remember to enter every two weeks. Each winner gets to bring a guest of their choice. Airfare, hotel, food, and unlimited cannabis are included. Oh my God. Man, it's going to get a bit pricey. You let me and my wife up in those hills. <laughs> Don't wait, head to CandidateCBD.com forward slash CropTober and get in on the action. Also, don't forget to go to CandidateCBD.com and use promo code LIPBOOMERS for 20% off so you can pack huge honkers on Humboldt County's finest flavors with the fellas. Once Hell again, that's yeah. Lip Boomers for 20% off at CandidateCBD.com. CandidateCBD.com forward slash CropTober. Potentially want to trip over to see some 20-foot dope trees. Yeah. Oh, AJ Hawk, you enter into that? I haven't entered yet. Maybe I should try it. Can I borrow your uh, Wrangler if I make it? Yeah, you can. I don't know. You're gonna have to ship it though, and that some bitch is heavy. It's a mountain. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a monster. It's a monster out there. It's a monster. Um, Julio Jones is gonna be a patriot, I think. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that? I don't know. Connor's got this conspiracy theory he just cooked up over mm -hmm. here. Go ahead and say what you were going to say. What did Cam Newton say? I mean, Cam Newton, you know, everything we've heard throughout the offseason about him talking about Belichick, all he cares about winning. He's dope as shit. He's the most misunderstood person, you know, in all of football. On top of, you know, Cam being friends with Julio and having that connection. If Julio probably believes in Cam, you know, more than he believes in a Carl Wentz or, you know, any of these other guys oh, that he's listen, considered. Chuck Wentz, okay, we'll yeah, swing the rock. Wentz. The pastor guy? Dude, what? what? Wake up. What was that? Right, I'm just telling you, Bieber's old pastor guy that got uh, removed from his position. He got Something removed? Went. That guy? I thought he saved Biebs life. I'm Biebs, by the way, cut off his dreads. Good move. Carl Good move. Lentz. Carl Lentz. Good move. Oh, Carl Mr. Lentz. Lentz. Mm. Hey, that son of a bitch was preaching, though. He was at Easterby long before Easterby. You remember? Uh -huh. He had all the boy bands in Oh, yeah. He was telling, hey, Biebs, come on. Let's come to the Lord. And then all of a sudden, Biebs gets a big old cross tattoo. Yep. Starts praying for people and all that stuff. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, Beebs came back around because of old Carl Lentz. I have no idea what oil he was pitching out there, but it did seem like he came and went pretty quickly, that guy. In like a lion, out like a lamb. The Jesus man, Carl Lentz. Fucking life story, dude. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Arnie up there in Canada. What's going on, Arnie? Dude. Hey, what's going on? How do you on? spell that? First time caller. It's A-W-N-I. It's Ownie. Uh, first time caller, shout out to you AJ, shout out to you Pat, shout out to all the boys. Huge fan. I think Jimmy the Colts from the Colts and Chris Ballard should get Julia Jones, but I want to ask you a question. Julius Randle. Uh, what do you think of the Winnipeg Jets now? Oh, okay. Big 4-1 yeah. comeback. Uh, congratulations. It was electrifying. Nice yeah. job. Good job, Winnipeg. They were down to Edmonton, obviously, you know, 4-1, yeah. and then all of a sudden, like a goddamn rally-capping baseball, they started rattling off. Busting twine. Busting twine. Busting twine. Yeah. Overtime. One more time. Mm -hmm. Big comeback. That's why the NHL playoffs are so amazing. I think that was that game, right? That Nick? was that mm -hmm. game. You nailed it. Uh, big performance from Connor McDavid, you know, not winning a single playoff game yet. Ooh. Oh, McJesus. Uh, still, no. not, we don't have to bury one to put over somebody else. Helps, though. It does help some people's <laughs> argument, but you can do it in a positive fashion. McJesus, if he ends up being anywhere near what Sidney Crosby has been, I think he should take a bow. He'll get stick taps for the rest of his life. Maybe do a lap like Putin does at the end of that hockey annual thing and get a round of applause. It's a incredible regular season. 100 points in 56 games. Nothing to sneeze at. Just seems like when the lights get a little bright. I, I'm not saying that, but I am saying this. 
When I tweet that Sidney Crosby is the greatest hockey player of all time, fucking keep McJesus out of the notifications. <laughs> you hear me? There's other people out there that you can put in there. McJesus might end up there one day, okay? He might. Hasn't won a playoff game yet, but he might, okay? Everybody else that comes in there with your, you know, Gretzky, and he's not even the greatest penguin of all time with Mario Lemieux. Listen, Mario's number two, okay? Gretzky's number three. How and Ora in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about hockey as a sport, not just goal scoring or playmaking or being marketable by a league pushing you into the forefront of superstardom so everybody remembers you as the great one because you're in Los Angeles and hockey was having a little bit of a push. I'm talking about a guy who plays goal line to goal line. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're talking... He's behind the net, he's in front of the net, he's fighting, he's scrapping, he's scoring, he's playmaking. He's a great teammate and he gets no push from the league because they don't know how to market anybody. We're talking about the greatest hockey player of all time. Even played goalie to get us a win in the playoffs a couple games ago. We're 2-2 now with fucking Islanders. We cannot lose this series. Okay, yeah, you hear me? Tonight we got a big <laughs> win. No but Sidney Crosby will not allow us to lose to the New York Islanders. Not tonight. Yeah, ha having said all that, completely agree. He needs to fucking score tonight because yeah. one goal in the four playoff games ain't cutting it. We need more from Sid tonight. This guy's oh. burying everybody. I agree though. Sid, uh, let's fucking go. Well, you <laughs> fucked me out of a plus 300 uh, last game. Wake right, up, two games ago. I need you to figure this out, Sid, all right? Enough with the focusing on how we make Jari better because he's a great captain, has a C on his chest, has for a long time, trying to make everybody better like Jari. He said, you know what, I'm going to work on goalie a little bit tonight as well. We need him to get back to going, you know, putting pucks in net as yep. opposed to stopping pucks from going in net. I'll, uh, just need a little bit more out of him. Uh, the FanDuel Sportsbook, if you don't believe a word that I'm saying about this guy being the greatest hockey player of all time, uh, FanDuel went ahead and boosted some uh, odds on a bet against the Pittsburgh Penguins, which Whoa. I don't appreciate. NHL odds boost for the Islanders to win this series uh, with the Penguins 4-3. It is currently 2-2. It was plus 270. Now it's plus 330. Okay. FanDuel is a bunch of fucking idiots for this. We mm -hmm. know that. Uh, don't take this bet unless you want to uh, lose money. That's just not how it's going to happen. It's going to be 4-2. We all know it. Sid's coming back. Gino's starting to play a little bit. Gino's getting back in the swing oh, yeah. of things. Jari's going to stop some pucks, hopefully. And the Pens are going to dominate tonight. And I think, I guess that's what FanDuel's accounting for is for them to win one more. But this is this is asinine. This is slanderous. This is libel because they wrote it down. This is bullshit. True. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if the Pens do get bounced early. We'll take you in Vegas because Flyer's getting hot. He's, he's been standing on his head. Oh, yeah. Stoner out there just fucking scoring goals left and right. The boys are buzzing right now. Well, the Bruins, by the way, have already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was a We're surprise. Yeah, by the way, this was a surprise to me. I thought the Capitals was bringing in Chara, you know, from Boston mm -mm. with Ovi. And Kuznets off. Every time they say his name, I honestly think there's about to be a stop in the play because the net would be off of the the little peg things that they're supposed to be on. With TJ and all the way, D.C. was a, a big-time hockey city there for a while. No way. Their fan base got very strong because they were always around. They lost to us every single year. Then they win the cup. It's awesome. Yeah, Ovechkin, greatest goal scorer of all time. Here we go. They lose to the Bruins quick, yeah. by the way. I oh, mean, that, yeah. was, that was quick. Okay, after we lost game one, I told everybody, hey, B's in five. And what do we do? One on one, four straight, it's over. And we're waiting for you guys in the second round to put Sid and the boys into the dumpster. No, See you later. You ain't going in the dumpster, yeah. okay? The, the Penguins ain't scared of going six wide in the penalty box. Oh, yeah. You hear me? Uh huh. We'll go six wide in there. We ain't coming around and go to no dumpster. What do you think this is? Bees ain't scared. You'll get your face washed right out of town. You come trying to put us in the dumpster, pal. Bees ain't scared. We're waiting for you. Hey, hopefully you guys can win tonight so we can actually hopefully play you. I am a little Doesn't bit worried. Doesn't feel like it, I am though. a little bit worried about team speed on that Penguins bench. Mm -hmm. The lightning are flying. Flying that around. That team is yeah. unreal. Flying. Well, Pat, you play a team like the Islanders, they're not just going to roll over and put on a gutless performance like the Caps did. Whoa, just let the bees whoa, whoa. Why over. is it burying everybody? They got Ovechkin and I mean, they put they put out their the Capitals best, but we were never, banged up okay. in Nick's defense. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> they were really banged up. Let's get to the phones. That's hockey talk. Let's go to Jacob in Columbus. What's going on, pal? Hey, what happened with Books? Oh, what's oh, going on? I'm Rick. Boys, AJ. <laughs> Jacob, Shut what's up. going on? What do you want to talk about? Hey, I just want to give some love to AJ Hawk, man. He's my favorite football player of all time. He's the reason I played football in high school. I'm from Columbus, longtime Buckeye fan. So, AJ, love you, man. OH. All right, oh, buddy. Thank you. Hey, what is your guys' favorite moment yeah. in all of sports history? So, you only played football because AJ played football. What would you have played instead? Hockey? Soccer. 
Really? So you were going to play soccer and you decided I'm going to play football because A.J. Hawk played football? Yeah, A.J. Hawk's a badass. Man, I love that. Congrats. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, Jacob. Hell yeah. Um, look at that. That dude was going to play soccer. Instead, play football because the Centerville Elk, who went on and represented the hometown for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and then the Green Bay Packers played football. He played football. That's got to feel pretty good, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, very nice. I, I appreciate the OH from him as well. It's always good to support the, the Bucks. All right. Just a quick question. Nobody's ever said they play football because of me, but if that guy ends up with CTE and something terrible, <laughs> will you feel terrible? Because he directly told you it was your fault he got into the I game. was Yeah, I was thinking that thing instantly when he said he chose the ball. <laughs> so I, I was like, well, maybe, I'm, that's not, maybe I was not a good influence on this young man. <laughs> I think you were, AJ. You're a great influence on all of us. Uh, my favorite sports moment of all time and this might be recency bias to be honest but i think it was when when boogs made his debut on friday night smack a thousand percent i think it was when rick boogs b-o-o-g-s made his appearance on Friday Night Smackdown. I cannot believe you missed it. I, Wait, the guitar, the guitar, you mean? Oh, uh, Him yeah. and his guitar Come on. and everything about him made an appearance. He jumped up on uh, the commentating table right in front of me at one point. I mean, it was it was amazing. It was favorite my, uh, probably my favorite sports memory of all time, uh, but I am living in the recency bias. Your thoughts, your takes on that, AJ? I mean, I, that was going to be my first choice, but you took it, so I guess I'm, I have to choose a different one. Um, and I have no idea. I honestly can't think of my favorite sports moment. How come you, uh, just real quick, there's a lot of sports moments. Phil it's, Mick, actually. Phil Mick winning go. yesterday was probably my favorite one. That a boy, Phil. That a baby, Mick. Congrats, Phil. Congrats, Congrats, Phil. Phil. Thank you, Lefty. And we, we do have to let you know that we both very much live in the moment because we do a daily show. There's probably much bigger moments that we have uh, kind of missed here. And our friends and family could potentially be mad at us for not mentioning a certain moment that we were a part of but when boogs came out there with his electric guitar oh. and uh you know hit the high notes that was you can roll time. his ours. nice oh yeah oh so you did see it you did see i it. saw him play the guitar i didn't know you acted like he got in the ring or something i didn't i didn't know if he just he introduced somebody right yeah he won a match for shinsuke nakamura over king corbin you know friend mm -hmm. of the show king corbin kind of ended up losing this entire thing because of boogs i was kind of split there but I had there was a whisper, you know, I had heard that maybe maybe Boogs is coming to town. Oh, oh. Smack down town. I, I had heard there was a whisper. Whenever he came onto the screen, okay, I almost immediately upon seeing him go, Boogs! Almost, yeah. I was told, wait, he's about to talk or something. He's like, okay. So then he spells his name. And immediately after him spelling his name, I go, Boogs, thank you, Boogs! Thank you, Boogs! Thank you, Boogs. I, was so, I was so excited for Boogs. I can't wait to see what they do with the Boogs on Friday Night SmackDown, AJ. Hey, I, so I don't know for sure, but does he like all the extra attention that you and the boys and, and all of us give him? I'm not sure. It, it does, I, from I'm what, not, the little bit I, yeah. I saw of him, I didn't get to interact with him, unfortunately. He's a big, big jacked up dude. I, I'd love to know what his workout regimen is like. He didn't seem like he was all in on Like, he was not as excited as you guys were to see us as we were to see him. Yeah, I think yeah. that is uh, pretty – that – that feeling has sustained by him, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did I, cut that promo seems, for us, though. Yeah, he said what's up to the boys and yeah. everything like that. But you're right. I don't know exactly how to read his feeling on me, you know, and the like, let alone the whole group of us. But me in specific, I'm not 100% sure how he feels. Yeah, he usually looks pretty confused when you're talking to him. <laughs> well, yeah, there's always a lot of confusion. And, and what, what's that? Well, talking? I was going to say it would make sense because it'd be like, you know, going out and getting mobbed by fans. Like, we are super fans yeah. of Boog. So it yes. probably is like, you know, I don't know, like, how to, how to handle this. I wonder if we are the first super Boogs as fans. I, I think so. We've known about this guy for a long time in this yeah. office. Yeah. People on Friday night just got a chance to witness Boogs for the first time. Boogs, I saw him the first time I went down to NXT, I think. I went down to NXT. It was a Wednesday night taping. Yeah. I was going down there for something. I forget what it was. This is years ago. And he's out in front of the crowd air guitaring for four minutes. <laughs> Four minutes of him just yelling and air guitaring, <laughs> and I couldn't help but just watch. I was completely entranced. Then he comes back, and they tell him to go back out. So he sprints back out. He slides down the ramp, oh. holding a thing. The whole place goes crazy, and then he comes back. And I'm like, man, that was awesome or whatever. I find him on Instagram, on social media. This dude's doing deadlifts of like 600 pounds with 
hard rock playing in the background in his garage and he's screaming as loud as possible and it's like these guys neighbors have to hate him oh yeah but he is wide open this is a throwback this is a guy in every new piece of content that came out from boogs the bigger fans we became yeah and then all of a sudden he's on fucking smackdown now i, I this is this is huge right now aj hey when when you said you saw him uh, run back out and play air guitar for the place, was he like the entertainment during commercial break? No, I don't know if they... Look at this. Is that my... <laughs> I mean, that's a great... That little curls. bicep deal he's wearing. I had that in high school. I need to get another one. <laughs> what, did, why do you got to take a shot at Boogs right there, dude? It's not a take a shot. I, I'm legit one of... I, I forgot that I had that. It's a great little concentration curl thing. Well, he... By the way, there's more where this came from. Him in that gym, he transformed into one of the most muscular humans I've ever yeah. seen. Actually, when I was describing him, I said, massive muscles? Just because he was standing right in front of me and I was just trying to figure out ways to describe him. He is. Because he said, uh, he said, uh, what did he say to Big E? He said, uh, Zito, this is your new thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nonstop. He was beating the shit out of a dummy a couple weeks oh, ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is. He killed he Deadpool. Live? Florida? Florida, yeah, for sure. He lives down in Florida. He's a Florida man. He was a very accomplished collegiate wrestler, though. Oh, yeah. Wisconsin. Very accomplished wrestler. Mm -hmm. I think he finals, was that nationals. Will, was that Wilson peeking over the fence? Who's looking at him? I do believe Wilson, by the way, was way ahead of his time when it came to this COVID mask thing. Only yeah. see the eyeballs. <laughs> Let's go to Steven up there in Maine. Steven, congrats to the Maine Celtics, dude. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, you, Red Claws. Uh, great. How are you? Uh, AJ, the boy, I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? I'm not too shabby. The, the, everything listens to you, though. I'm getting recommended Meekum auctions to follow right now on all my accounts. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Hey, hey, stop that, listening, that, bitch, that, Siri. That, okay. <laughs> sorry, dude. Sorry. What, what do you want to talk about? Uh, well, for one, um, as of today, we oh, are fuck. no longer mandated to wear a mask in Maine. So I, I think we beat COVID. Be yeah. COVID! Yeah. New York City looked wide open in Madison um, Square Garden. I've also seen footage of the bars popping off. Mm -hmm. I believe it's probably for vaccinated folks. You come in, you're good to go, no mask. Indianapolis, I believe, is about four to five weeks away from that. Okay. Close. Yeah, he's going. He's going to make sure that we we you know we're yep. the safest place of all time. Twelve days. Is it really twelve days? Thanks, June sixth. I heard. He'll push that some bitch back though. <clears throat> this guy. <laughs> Sorry about that, Stephen. Congrats to you. Kind of sucks oh, to be us. Awesome. What do you want to talk about? Dude, it, it is awesome. I, I actually, I want to switch it up. I was going to talk obviously. Bruins Penguins, but um, there's been a lot of talk about Julio Jones. So if I, so I'm a Cowboys fan, obviously you're a Colts fan. So do you think if Julio Jones went oh, to yeah. either the Colts or the Cowboys, it would be a big enough impact for them to actually make a, like a deep playoff run or probably even like a Super Bowl run? Thank you for your question, uh, Stephen. Colts, yes. Cowboys, no. Even though AJ had the Cowboys in the Super Bowl just last year. Yeah, you might be right. If if I had to choose a team that gave him a better chance to go to the Super Bowl, yeah, it's the Colts right now, but you never know, man. Let's see what Dak looks like. Dak could be comeback player of the year slash MVP all in one year. Slash Super Bowl champion, to be honest. Yeah. That's why the NFL is so great, but they do have a loaded roster down there. I mean, if Dak is all systems go. Which he said he is. Yeah. He could play today if he had to. Imagine Jerry World with Julio oh. highlights going. No. Oh. Is Julio going to play safety for the Cowboys? Yeah, or? Bingo. But if you score enough points, it doesn't matter. They also got their, his former teammate, Keanu Neal, up there playing yeah. safety. Let's go to Matt in North Kakalaka. What's going on, Dan Matt? Dan Quinn, too, his former head coach. Uh-huh. Mm. Does he like him or hate yeah, him? Yeah, it might not be a good thing. I'm sure. I bet he likes him. Everybody likes Dan Quinn, right? Yeah, and, and, and Dan Quinn, he's a defensive guy, so it's not like he was hands-on with Julio telling him how to run routes. He was a head coach, though. Matt, North Carolina, what's going on, pal? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's going on, Pat and boys? Hey, thanks for all that you guys did over the last year listening to you guys at home and everything. Hey, you, you were talking about uh, all the uh, the drunks and the spectators of the championship this weekend. I was wondering if you guys have thought about doing a live show this year and getting some of us drunks and spectators to be uh, in studio or in a big arena with you. The answer is yes, Matt, and can't thank you enough for asking and acting as if you would go to one if we had one. I've had a lot of calls with people at venues Around the country, by the way. Ooh. Okay. We are, we are potentially trying to put something together. I'd like to go out and see the people that spent quarantine with us. I'd like to go and chat 
intermingle, maybe set up some great nights, some entertainment, everything like that. Uh, yeah, I've been trying to figure that out as we go. But it's interesting because each state and county have different protocols with different projections. So the amount for how many people we can sell now at a place versus maybe three weeks from now might completely change, which, by the way, changes the budget, which changes everything about it. So it's been a very fluid process. I appreciate you asking, but we do plan on hitting the road and coming out and saying, Howdy doody. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm pumped up about it, AJ. It's well, been- and, hey, aren't we also at some point going to start going to some of these big events like national championships, Super Bowl week, things like that? Yeah, because last year, remember, we had a lot of great ideas. We had a yacht. We are going to do that yacht week. Oh, oh, yeah. Forget the yacht, but remember <laughs> what we were going to do in uh, – we are going to tailgate for some big games in a parking lot that we are going to rent out, mm-hmm. have people come. And then COVID said that nobody's going anywhere, <laughs> including mm-hmm. you. What the fuck? Get in your house. Not on my watch. But now. But now we have a chance to do it all, and we can't wait to meet everybody. AJ, any final words to say to the SiriusXM listeners before Chris Mad Dog uh-huh. Russo comes on? Big show tomorrow. Tuesday's always usually our biggest day. Well, Huge. especially after yeah. Kenny Mayne and Aaron tonight. Who knows what Aaron Rodgers yeah. is going to say? I heard him sing. He sounds great. Looks happy. He seems to be moving in his hips well. Is he ready for season? It appears so in Hawaii. But will he be a Packer? We'll know more tomorrow. Also, where's Julio going? And I think O.J. Howard's joining us tomorrow. Okay. Oh, oh, hey. Pretty big Tuesday. Not as good as Chris Mad Dog Rooster's mm-hmm. show, but we'll be close. You have six minutes. Go ahead and take a shit. A legend's on the other side. That was a good one. Anytime you can tell people you gotta take a shit, it's good. Oh yeah, it is. Hey, you got six minutes, you can go do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? AJ, by the way, I paid a lot for that Jeep. I just wonder, what's the, can you give us a range of what you paid? No, it's out there. I mean, people will find out. In- no less than, so, okay, if I said between 50 and 180K, would that would it fall in there? Yeah. Good job, AJ. Right. 50 oh, let's and go to Ryan. Let's go to Ryan in Canada. Ryan, what's going on, dude? It's in 2012, too. Hey, exactly. AJ, boys, how you doing? 100,000 miles on it. Are you serious? Yeah, I found that out when I got in yesterday. Hemi engine. Wait, you didn't, you didn't know when you bought it how many miles it had? Come on, the Hemi's new engine. It doesn't have the miles. Just the potential car does. Yeah. Relax, Jesse, bro. Dude. All right, relax. Jeez. Jesus. Come on. Dude. But no, I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. That is not something I mean, you, you put you on the bike. <laughs> I huh? understand. You went there. You had to come home with something. Had to. I mean, literally, they did an interview with me as soon as I walked in there. I had just woken up like 35 minutes before that. I was. <sighs> hey, did you have to prove? Did you have to prove somehow that you had the money? No, they knew I was. They knew. Well, I guess you're a public guy. Yeah, but I wonder. I, I would assume you have to give some kind of something from your bank to show that I have the fund. I think normally you do. Yeah, they do an entire check thing or whatever. Yeah, like 2.4 million dollar guy. Like what? Is the steps for that? This is probably he's not his first time. Yeah, I would imagine sure. he's a recurring. Well, it's like a because you like have to register at a, at a casino. You know, when you have those huge markers, you have a line of credit already with the casino. And it's like Ursay at like a music auction. Yeah, you know, like oh, this guy probably wants this car. There's there's somebody or, or woman or or family or whatever. I think there's estates that are buying stuff too. I think there's family. You know what I mean? There's. I assume they know. Like okay, yeah, you're good. But yeah, you can't just walk in and. You got to, to get one of the passes, I think there's a big process. Yeah. For me, they let me just bypass it. Shout out. They don't know what I make. You could Google it. It's wrong, but I appreciate them for sure. They had like a bit of registration. So I'm sure that's Four. where they find out. Yeah, like, hey, okay, this guy is a big swing and dick, or this guy's really not going to be buying anything. By the way, very impressive, very impressive operation. Yeah. We said that, but it's real because that has to be so difficult to manage. The vastness of it, the amount of money involved, the amount of, you know, logistics and statistics, because they have like a coming up next thing up on the TVs as well for like the next five cars that are in line. There's holding bay areas. It's just there's a lot. There. And then the the actual purchasing of it, you go to this back area. You wait, you, you like pull a number almost. They'll text you, they said, whenever you're close. For us, it took a, an hour, but we went over into the other rooms and saw the other stuff, kind of just passed time. Then you go back, and there's a buying a car is not easy. There's a lot of paperwork you got to do and title exchanges and all that shit. They had it very efficient. It was just like, boom, boom, boom. Here you go. Have a good one. See ya. Here's the keys. Take it. All right. How long were you there? Am I on? <laughs> Ryan, you are on. Yeah, we're just having a little convo. Shout out to Pat Agee and the boys. I was just not sure if I was like five hours, six hours. I would just yeah. You're, the um, he's on hold now. The, well, Ryan, we'll get you back. The, uh, we're there probably like four hours. I'd say. Okay. Three, like, so, how many cars do a lot of cars go unsold? 
Um, we were one of the last days because it was all week. Le- and then Saturday, I was a little bit worried we weren't going to have yeah. any kind of. I think we did kind of miss a large prop of Few cars. Jams. But they did a hundred million dollars in sales there. <laughs> so many cars came. There were so many cars lined up. There was no way to like for me to actually purchase. There was probably only three cars in there I could have purchased. Yeah, I mean it was definitely the Jeep was definitely the one that day. The um the fucking uh, H one note. There was a Hummer. That, oh, that oh, had that AJ's sweet. That almost, <laughs> yeah. that, I almost bought that for you. Like, How much? How much did it go for? It ended up going like ninety-seven or something like that. Yeah, but okay. I, I almost bought that for, while I was sitting there. The, the, I was looking at it. I was literally looking at it, and I was doing like. A, as soon as the ring guy saw me do this, he like came over to the table. He was like, "What are we thinking? What are we you thinking?" Want it? And I was like, "Ah, I don't know. I don't know." There's actually one of those ring guys who went like this talking about AJ to get it yeah for. yeah yeah one of the guys came <laughs> yeah, over he came over a guy came over he's like AJ's gotta have this doesn't he and it was like oh my god that's what it's like in there though oh that's all it, oh, yeah it's why because there were people in there it's I think it's in Nebraska I think it's in Nebraska or Iowa I'm not 100 percent sure where the where the home is but it's in an area where we're pretty you know well known so you know there's probably like five six people that worked for Meekum that knew who we were and then in the crowd, there were sporadic people that knew who we, we were. A lot of like, there's a lot of olds in there yeah. that are moving cars. It was very, but they had energy still because they're all car dealers, you know? So the car dealers have an energy. It's very, it was, it was awesome. I, I, I'm very proud that I was a fan of that show before going and then experiencing like, yeah, this is real. Like it is a, it is a really good Wisconsin. show. Wisconsin, there it is. Do you know for the guy who uh, like they didn't sell the 2.8 million, like once that goes off, can he go back there? And I mean, I assume he wasn't going to go any higher than that, but like, would he, would those guys have a chance to rebid or does that just go to the next auction? Then? I think it just goes to the next auction, but I assume he'd be on the phone or on the internet if he wasn't there. And there's a reserve on all of them, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you, or some of them have no reserve, which is, very aggressive. You're just putting it out there and seeing what we're going to get. I'd assume the person that built my Jeep, he was Mr. Stevens. I think it was DwayneStevens.com or something like that. I forget who it was. He sent me a message and was like, hey, I built that thing. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. I was like, I mean, I got thousands of questions. <laughs> a lot of them, actually. Uh, what type of gas am I supposed to fucking put? <laughs> <laughs> what am I, what, is this diesel power? It sounds like it's a diesel. 87, 89. Was this the Hummer? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that's the one. That one was going to get it. Sweet. That was the only other one that I think I could have bought. And would Man, like, and that went that went just for a little bit more than you paid for the Wrangler, huh? All right, let's get well, to the phone. There's a couple of tractors that also oh, could have yeah. gone as well. There was, oh, there was a three-wheel ice cream car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, Pull we almost... Well, we're it, they had a projection for like thirteen thousand to eighteen thousand dollars or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, I was going to get that just for the new office, but. Yeah. I wasn't going to wait around for it. I mean, there was... No way. You see, they give you an entire book that tells you all the cars that are coming next. It was a lot of, like, collector's cars or whatever. It's like, I'm not in it for I that. I mean, that Jet Limousine was also one of those ones. I was like, yeah, that one's pretty sweet. I don't know how you don't bid on that. Yeah, well, the Jet Limousine, very easy not to bid on that. <laughs> Whoa! It, it does not fly, it turns out. No, no not, wings on that thing. Has no wings. Also, the, the uh, ice cream car was not actually made of ice cream. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. That's rude of him. What's that all about? He's calling me fat. Why do you do that? I don't know. Because he's your neighbor now? He is my neighbor. Because the guy hasn't had a sip of water in three weeks. <laughs> Did you see I that, AJ? That. He tweeted that out that he hasn't had water in three weeks, and his liver and kidney were screaming. Then he tried water, and he said it tasted so good. It, we <laughs> forgot what it tastes like. Listen, I, I had a what full... What do you drink, Z? What do you What do you Arnie drink? Arnie Palmy Alerts and uh, Gatos. <laughs> <laughs> Gatos as in Gatorade? Yes, sir. <laughs> Not Gatorade Zero either. We're talking diesel. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Extra sugar, baby. We're talking diesel Gatorade, yeah. Did you see that Burt Kreischer, Tom Segura, 64 ounce Kool Aid bit? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was crying. Like a gallon so of Kool Aid a day. And I think that's why Zito thought to himself, like, that's not that weird. <laughs> 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 I haven't had water in three weeks, dude. Hey, Z. Call me Moses. We need you to have some water. We need you to take care of yourself. Come on, Z. Come on, Z. We love you, Z. Thank you, guys. We love you, Z. Thank you, Z. But there's not saying it. You don't deserve to take the thrashing that Nick tries to throw at you. No. What you say? You'll text them. Yeah, Z knows I love him. Pat, I actually have a question for AJ, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. AJ, uh, what were you doing Saturday afternoon, and why were you not on Brett Michaels' private jet down to Tampa Bay? Mm I'm unaware of what Brett's plans. Was Brett having a concert down in Tampa? Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, yeah. I think he led a chant or two, if mm-hmm. I had to guess. Oh, yeah. oh, man. I'll tell you who can play that guitar better than him. 
Who? Boogs. Yeah. yeah. Boogs. What's yeah, Boogs can play, man. Boogs. I was not Nick. I'm sorry. I was not a part of this. I did not know what. Uh, I didn't know Brett's schedule. He. Wait, he's going to Tampa. Doesn't he live in Arizona? What's he doing? Yeah, and he's a Steelers fan. He's from Pittsburgh. He's a Tampa fan. Fuck him. Zoom in. Hello. <laughs> that hair. Zoom in on. On, behind him there to the left. Is that a bathroom? What is that? What plane is this? Is this a hawker? Sidekick? There's a little bathroom in there. Or is there an extendo on that thing? Look at this flowing at blonde log. Yeah, and he does look good. And you remember, the hair is attached to the hat. Like, hey, <laughs> fake as can be. He looks like Downey Jr. kind of if you just focus on the face. He does a little bit. I mean, that's, that's a compliment. Is that a fake yeah. plane? I just... It's a fake guy. <laughs> <laughs> Brett... How are you, a Tampa Bay Lightning? Get out of here, dude. This guy. He fucking grew up in Butler, didn't he? Is it Butler, Connie? I think so. It's messed up. <laughs> Hockey Tan, this guy's down there riding a lightning pal. What's his name again? Who? Brett Michaels. Him. Thank you. I was going to look up where he's from. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Brett didn't deserve that, dude. Here Butler, we go. PA, yeah. Here, where's he from? Butler. Oh, this son of a bitch. Doesn't even like the penguins. How far is that from Plum? Uh, 45 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's north. It's north. If you watch any Penns game, you'll see Dio Automotive all over everything. Mm -hmm. That is a lady named Karina Deal, who is a legend. That's all you need to know. A friend of ours, awesome lady. She's in Butler. She's like one of the sponsors of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Like one of the sponsors of the Pittsburgh Penguins. This guy, same town, fucking going down to Tampa Bay on his plane. Get out of Unbelievable. here. Unbelievable. Stop. Butler County's like the closest thing to Ohio in Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's pretty close. It is pretty close to Ohio. It, it is. It is an Ohio like feel up there. Same vibes. What, is that, what does that mean, Nick? You know what it means. It's I'm trying to figure out. We don't play deck hockey. I know that. Oh shit. shit! Why'd you Whoa. say it like that? Yeah, because yeah. I'm just saying I don't. I wasn't aware of deck hockey until Pittsburgh has a lot of things. I feel like that are like that are Pittsburgh. Like this is what we do here. And yeah, I, people take a lot of pride in being from Pittsburgh. I, I yeah, and you know what we don't do? We don't what? fucking fly down to the Tampa Bay Lightning in the middle of the goddamn play. It's probably a gig. It's probably a paid gig. What? No, what? no. He it's, went uh, down with his daughter. Turn up your cameo price, then, pal. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. I'm so mad about that. I love the people you get mad at, and compared to some people that you don't. They just do, they you don't, don't know who I don't get mad at. <laughs> Nobody. You get mad at everybody. I know. No, no, not mad at everybody. Close, though. <laughs> Only if you're wrong. This is wrong. Okay? Yeah. This is wrong what Brett did. Because they want to stand. Hey, hey, Brett, we're going to win. He's a bandwagon. That's why. Yeah, but we're going to win it again. And what's he going to do? Hop on his plane and start doing some speeches? Oh, yeah. Here we go, Penguins. Here we go. This guy. Here we go, Penguins. Here we go. Huh. Don't like it, dude. It's catchy, man. I think it's his daughter's favorite team because it was his daughter's 21st birthday or something like that in the tweet. Oh, Grow oh, back from that. Being a good That's cool, guys. Family. Cool. You guys are terrible people. I'm not. No, I'm, not I'm not a terrible no. person. No. You didn't Why am I? Who's daughter's like your parents like? Wait a second. Yeah, we knew it was, it was. By the way, my daughter. <laughs> doesn't matter where we grow up at. Okay, I don't care how spoiled to, to death. If she likes hockey, which is probably not going to happen because hockey doesn't know how to promote to her, but if she does, it is going to be the Pittsburgh fucking Penguins. Yeah. She's going to be brainwashed from a very early age. So this is the greatest hockey player of yep. all time. This is the second greatest hockey player of all time. And this is the greatest team of all time. Your dad's from Hockey Town, which means you're from Hockey Town, which means you don't hop on any private planes and go somewhere else. That's not what happens mm -hmm. around here. Yeah, I, I mean that's going to be a tough, tough day for you when whatever, however many kids you have, when they decide to turn against your fandom that you tried to brainwash in from an early age, they'll come back to you. They'll come back to Pittsburgh and and be Pittsburgh fans, but they're definitely going to have a, a moment where they're going to be non-Pittsburgh fans strictly because you have pushed it so hard. It's the only team I'm a fan of. You know, like I like the Colts. Colts. I like the Colts. I like the Colts. What about, okay, you're you're like a, a bandwagon guy, though. What if the Pirates, like, when they become good, are you going to no, be no, a Pirates fan? No, no, they're, they're never going to be good. They're never going to be good as long as this son of a bitch is the owner. Okay, and I don't need these Pirates bloggers telling me it's a lazy take. Fuck you, okay? You're a lazy take. How about that? Go be a blogger for a good team. What are we even doing? <laughs> you're wasting your time. Nothing's worry about Seven Springs, pal. Hop on the inner tube, ride down there, run your face into a little padded wall. You'll get a lot more excitement out of that than the thought of fucking Pirates in October. 
Jesus. I mean, they did get beat by 19 here. 20 to 1. <laughs> 20 to 1. They were Bobby. down 20 to nothing, though. They did scrap back Thank for you. a run. Okay, so there's a little grit. All right, show mm-hmm. a little Pittsburgh. Guy Bad with Bucks. This is a lazy take. Parts can't do that. They can't play the way other people play. Then go to the minors. Well, the, their payroll is just lower like than Cuban everybody else. Buy the it? team. Yeah, or their change their payroll the is five million dollars. AJ, <laughs> this team stinks, dude. And I got Pirates fans that they're part of the problem. They're probably on the payroll. I assume they're getting paid more than the goddamn players are. That's uh, nothing can't just play the same way that the Yankees can. And other people can't. He could. Yeah. What about Moneyball? He could if he Billy wanted Bean to. Billy Bean did it. Or sell the team. Somebody else yeah. that can yes. do it. Yes. It's a process. Hand it over. Out. Ben Charrington is a good GM that they just got. Thank you. That's I don't awesome. know if, well, if, he's, if he is worth the fuck at all, he'll be gone. Yeah. Bob Nutty. What else, does he own just the Pirates or other things? Seven Springs. Runs a great mine. It's a good mine. <laughs> oh, the, wa- the water company? No, no, no that's, that's Mountain Poland. Springs or Poland Springs <laughs> or Tyler Springs or anything Tyler. like that. But the Tyler. number seven <laughs> Springs, okay, is a mountain in up. Ski resort. Yeah, it's a ski resort where you can. I mean, it's a good time. The people go up there, party, have a blast. Obviously, it's uh, you know, it's it's awesome. It's a good family fun. All right, it's good family fun. It's good getaway. It's a nice little day at the mountain. Okay, Robert Nutting is good at doing that. Everybody has had a blast at Seven Springs. What he stinks at, and it's very apparent, is owning the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah. And I just want him to focus full time on seven springs so we can have eight springs, nine springs, Ooh. 10 springs. Instead, we're keeping the Pirates at about 10 wins a season because they're losing by 19 springs in one fucking game. And that just can't happen. Okay? That can't happen out there. Beautiful ballpark, too. Beautiful. People love to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where do they get all this money? We looked up the stats and the numbers for how many people watch baseball games. There ain't nobody watching those things. <laughs> nobody. They sold out games for. And- like a decade or so, so they were probably making a lot of money because they weren't paying any players. Yeah, well, I hey, assume Nutting made a lot of money. Yeah, I'm assuming that's the case. Don't you think the toughest thing, too, for baseball is, yeah, like people that are baseball fans seem to be diehard and they'll follow their team, but are they picking up any new fans? Like, that's what you have to do. Like, NASCAR has the same situation. They're trying to pick up new, younger fans and all of a sudden get into it. I'm not sure if they're picking up new fans. I would assume if you got Aaron Judge and Shohei Atani hitting bombs, uh, maybe people on Bryce Harper with the hair mm-hmm. and the pimping of bats and a little bit more excitement and entertainment, I assume it'll pick up a younger fan base. But we're looking up the ratings for these games. Like, there's some place, allegedly, now who, who knows what numbers are real, there's like 30,000 people watching yeah. some of these games. Like the Low. average rating is like 30,000, 50,000 for a lot Seems of these. Right. Seems right to me. Where are they getting all this money to pay all these people? Is it hats? They just sell all these. Well, there's it- 160 of them. So you add up that 30K, 160 times. Well, they have rev- don't they have a revenue they share have with the young- the guys got to get, like Pittsburgh gets taken care of by the Yankees. Don't they yeah. have to share some of it? Yeah, so mm-hmm. nothing's even more of a scumbag. But like the, the thought of, is it all baseball hats? Is that how they have all this money? How do they have so much money? <laughs> Hats, jerseys, and I feel like signing five hundred million yeah. dollar deals. Ice cream, the ice cream that comes in the little helmet, that all that stuff. Well, big League Chew is it, that helping? Is yeah, it popular big League in Chew. other countries as well? Like yeah, do other it's, countries. It's massive in Canada. Baseball is one of the like most watched sports in Canada. Like the Dominican, like when the whenever the Blue Jays got hot, like the it Dominican was chaos. Many people are, I mean, I don't know, but I think every single one of them with a TV is watching baseball and. Every day. But then you go. With That's the, where they're making all their money from. Is the Dominican I'm, Republic? I'm just guessing. <laughs> I, I asked it as a question. Oh, now, you know, I'm throwing it out there that those people might be watching. Maybe baseball. it's a collection of a bunch of country, like forty uh, percent uh, of their revenue, which is the highest, comes from ticket sales and other in park revenue. Okay. But then you get the MLB TV, which I've always had because we didn't get that many games in Canada. And there's blackouts here. Like any game in Chicago is blacked out here. Their yeah. TV contracts, despite yeah. yep. not getting a ton of ratings, tr- pay them tremendously. Well, it's all local, right? That's yeah. why they had to travel because it's all the local deals. Yeah. But how do any of these local companies keep up with airing these things if, as the world train, you know what I mean? The top four for uh, like, like basically popularity for baseball: United States, Dominican, Canada, then Puerto Rico. So if that means the, anything, yeah. To Connor's point, yeah. those Dominican and Puerto Rico are two of the top four. Twenty-two uh, percent comes from local media. They says they it says that they give so much money for the national TV deals because it's the only thing people sit through the commercials is watching baseball. Because they, they're already bored, so and it's just kind of on. Going to be Back there. To a <laughs> hey, a little bit of a change up here. The World Series is tough for numbers, though. More Good than crap. Than, more than NBA. 
Yeah, I know that. Everybody always looks at the World Series numbers, which is awesome. Which, by the way, I think I'll even watch the World Series, especially if it's something that matters. But I'm just talking about day to day. Like, how do they survive? I don't know how. Many they, when I wonder if, like, the bigger markets, they have to just kind of prop up everyone else. Because I feel like the Yankees are still probably, you Six know. Six figures, like, right? I think for, yeah, they, like, they still had, like, yeah. 150, 200,000 people. Right. And, like, the Dodgers, like, the uh, the Cubs, like, those big market teams, I feel Come like kind of just. Red Sox. Yeah, Red Sox. Thank they you. They kind of prop everyone else up. <laughs> I don't know if the Red Sox were in. Oh, yeah. Each team generates it. Almost 122 million U.S. dollars in revenue in 2020. I think it's hats. Gotta that's without that. that's without the stands though. What, what, what's it like when they have, when well, they have full capacity? Well, 40 yeah, percent exactly. is the ticket, so you start doing some math. It's got to be what, like 160 million. Don't forget about those 12 dollar pints. Yeah, but I still don't see how they make the money back. I guess it with so many games with people just kind of trickling in in a lot of these places. Mm-hmm, like ads. 30 percent. Filled forty. You still got to pay for people sponsorship, to work there, yeah, though. Like the whole out yeah. the fence and sponsorship all around the stadium. I guess they're selling that stuff for big money. The postseason deals are massive with Fox and stuff too. Yeah, the Pirates ain't never gonna be there. No, yeah. no way. Let's go to Ryan and I'm sure they get a slice of it though. Which adds to the point. Nutting. Put it right in his yeah. back pocket. Dirt bag. Dirt. Take a hike, dude. All right. Take a hike. You're profiting off the uh, postseason, but. I don't even get to be a fan of anybody in Pittsburgh going in the postseason because your team fucking stinks. Dude. Figure it out. I was told that um, my point – I was attacked by a lot of these Pens or uh, Pirates loyalists when I said that. This is after they lose 20-1, to 1, by the way. In baseball, three touchdowns to an extra point. All right, 20-1 to 1 they lose. And I – you know, who knows? I'm not keeping up with the, – the baseball season for the Pirates, but I assume that's a sign of how they've been. And, and, and yet again, here we are, the Pittsburgh team getting shit on. And, and that's just not, that's not the rest of the city in sports, okay? It is a, an embarrassment to the city of Pittsburgh, the, the Pirates are. So I say, you know, get this guy the fuck out of here. I told the social media team actually to walk into Nutting's office and tell him to take a hike. Like, it, somebody has to tell this. So I get attacked by all this, blah, blah, blah. And they said, well, he was the owner whenever they made that run with uh, McCutcheon in them. And you know what he did immediately after? Got rid of everybody. So, yeah. Got rid of everybody. He was a part of that run. National TV, the ballpark looked amazing. It was packed out. Pittsburgh fans were ready to go. We're Pittsburgh. This is Pittsburgh sports. Here you go. We're doing it. And then he got rid of everybody. So, yeah, get out. That was too much fun. Too much spotlight. We just need to stink and just continue to rake in money. That guy stinks, dude. <laughs> guy fucking stinks. Does he talk to anybody? Does he ever do any media? Yeah. Just sits back Is and Is he ranks. a newspaper guy? Yeah, that's where he made all his money to start. So he's fucking controlling the, the goddamn papers. He's never feeling the fire or anything. Where at? I thought he was Seven Springs and Seven Springs only. West Virginia, actually. This guy. Wow. Where at? What? Um, Wheeling. What? Yeah, well, is there only one Seven Springs? What newspaper? Yes. What newspaper? Uh, it's, it's, not, it's a company of newspapers. It's called like Ogden something. The Nutting Times. <laughs> 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 Wheeling is big too. Big you know? Ben loves that one. Wheeling's not that large of a place. Good people, good <laughs> casino. But I don't know how many newspapers he sold in Wheeling that got him a goddamn team. But he does probably know how to control the narrative. I mm-hmm. crack the code. Guy stinks. Would you want to, if you had, if you were one of these billionaires, would you want to own like any professional team? I feel like there's a lot of stress, man. Like a lot of stuff that I NFL wouldn't think is, yeah. hey, man, I made all this money. I have tons of cash. I'm the owner of this awesome team. And then all you're doing is just fielding people killing you, I feel like. Well, if you're owning a team, you want to own an NFL team, I think, yeah, personally. Of course. Yeah. I wouldn't want to own a team anywhere else because I don't know anything about anything else. But I do know that the NFL is always going to do this. It's just always going to be an arrow up. That's just always that's just how they operate. So you want to get in there, but like the NBA with the whole ratings thing going on, with that whole business, what they're doing. I mean, A Rod just hopped in there just to get a team. I yeah. guess. Man. I don't know. You're right. It is probably a lot of stress, especially at the age of having enough money to buy a team. You could probably just relax on a goddamn super yacht and just chill all day, you know? Yeah, well, soccer was insanely profitable until this year. That took everything away. That's why they tried to start the Super League. By the way, Chelsea fans, I wonder if they were hoping for the Super League to make a return this past Saturday or Sunday whenever it was close there. That was incredible final uh, day. It was fucking insane. I was bouncing around Golf Channel, USA Network, yeah. NBC Sports Network, and NBC. We had the Premier League final or whatever. Yeah. It, was, it was a good day. Liverpool won their last five to make it into the championship. Champions League, they weren't even close like a month ago. Good for them. Yeah. Good for you. You never well walk done, lads. Yeah, yeah. Go on, lads. Did you watch any of that, AJ? Probably not, huh? 
Not a whole lot. I was watching. I watched the last. I was in and out watching Phil on his, his back nine. Yeah, that front nine was also very good. He TV. chipped in. Would he chip in on the front nine? Yeah, uh, six or seven same? or something like that. Yeah. Brooks comes out hot. Birdie with uh, Phil Bogey. Here we go. We're flipping this thing. And I was like, oh, no, not again for Phil. Because the internet was ready for Phil to collapse on a Sunday. But everybody, but still, though, everybody I feel like was rooting for Phil from the jump. No, I disagree. Yeah. First hole, Brooks takes lead. Twitter immediately goes, it only took one hole for this to happen. Yeah, well, they like the balance. And Phil, obviously, like, can't handle the pressure. They wanted to see like a nice, close match. But I still feel like the majority of people wanted Phil to win. I See... I don't think it was until like six, seven that it really became like very pro Phil. Now, okay. this is just me kind of, you know, checking in with how things are going. But when Brooks took that lead early, it felt like a lot of people thought Brooks was about to go. Another collapse from Phil. Here we go, PGA champ. And then Brooks found some trouble and then Phil battled back. It was it was really awesome to watch. It was a two man show. Louie got in there, but it was a two man show that yep. carried for four and a half, five hours. It was awesome, man. I, it was really good TV. Really good he, TV. That shot he hit out of the deep stuff on 17, yeah. I was yeah. very concerned. Not a lot of room Holy there. Fuck. Not a lot of room there. Not a lot of room there. And the commentator said, uh, if you could have anybody in the history of golf making the shot, it's Phil. And I was like, I understand he's good with the close game, but or short game, but also like Phil on a Sunday. Like, I don't think this is... And then Phil fucking powers through, Smoked. makes a play, and then he buries... I mean, he... 366-yard drive. Yeah. yeah. Whole new Phil, dude, at 50. Here we go. He's lean, It's because he's, like, leaned into his his personality and his, his corniness. Like, he puts videos out on social, and he's just who he is. And like you said, he, he seems to take shots that you see when he made the drone move. And then didn't he say something on Twitter after that, after Saturday, when he, he made the drone get out of his shot? Yeah, I, uh, my favorite part? Dottie Pepper. What? Your daddy said zero chance. That's in his line. Oh, I did not hear that, but that's an incredible line. I did see when he was on what seventeen or eighteen, whenever he was in the rough. It was in his back, in the, behind him. Uh, and there was a bunch of people there, though, right? The, the people were like crowded, and he had to punch this thing out while doing it. Yeah. And he looked at the people and he said, "Are they in the way?" And then he like looked at it, he said, "Nah, they're fine." And then he lined up, and those people were standing fucking right in front yeah, of yeah. him. And at that point, I was like, okay, Phil's really, this is Phil Mickelson. This oh, is, yeah. just like when Phil in that, um, when him and Tom played against Peyton and Tiger, and he was like, okay, it's a little bit wet, so we're gonna have to punch this into the hill, it'll check up, and then it should roll perfectly, and then Phil, boom, bang, pow, does it. It was like he did that with that shot, with the uh, PGA Championship basically on the line. He was like, ah, they should be good, and he fucking hits like a little fade around them now, it's like, golly. Good for Phil, because that's that mentality that everybody said he didn't have, right? He couldn't yeah. do this. He said it's been a lot of work to get to this point. He was stepping on throats there, it looked like. It got close to towards the end, but he was making some shots, I think, that a lot of people would expect him to kind of fuck up, you know? I mean, his shot on 18, you see that he walk, He hits it. They're all gathered behind him. He was kind of up on a hill. His yeah, that was the shot, one. He yeah. walked into it. Like, he just walked in. Like, he, he had a little club twirl, walked into it, and that's when he knew, like, yes, I am going to win this thing for sure. Uh, that was and his brother's on the bag too i think it's cool his brother's caddying for him it was electric dude hey the scramble of drunk why wasn't his fam why didn't his family come in man i don't know he I talked to his wife on the phone i think right after I, it sounded like but i was like man this dude he's 50 maybe you could have i guess it would be weird though because normally his family probably wouldn't come i think his kids are more they're grown but at least his wife what if she's like all of a sudden flying in on Saturday night? Does that give him too much pressure or jinxy, you think? Yeah, let's not change anything. Hey, hey listen, it's yeah. been a great week. All right, I love you. I'll call you. Just go ahead and watch this whole thing. But that was a cool moment. Him also running around, dapping around mm -hmm. with everybody. He left that thumbs one up. dude. Who did he left? Yeah, the big thumbs up, both hands. He left somebody hanging very bad. <laughs> I mean, very, very I bad. I recognize that human. I don't Streelman. Think I either. think it was Streelman, another golfer. That was the name I saw in the tweet. I don't know who that human is, but I did see Phil give old Streelman a point and a thumbs up, then a walk, and then he, see, he sees somebody near Streelman that he knows, turns around, dap up that whole time, all the while Streelman's waiting for something. He just walks it off. And it seemed like he was giving daps to everybody, by the way. Yeah. So Streelman, I don't know what he did, but he is not on the good side of old Phil Mickelson. <laughs> He's out. Phil Mickelson was handing those things out to everybody. 
Just couldn't get old buddy with the white polo there, Streelman. Uh, Eli I mean, Manning said, "Eli Manning said he's good to go if you want to do another golf thingy." Because Phil and Tom said we have some unfinished business. Let's get another match and find a pair to give a beatdown. I would assume they're going to have to earn their way back into the number one contender as Tiger uh, rehabs and gets back healthy alongside Peyton, Phil Mickelson, and Tom Brady battling against Eli Manning and Brooks Kepka. Yeah. yeah. Could be pretty cool. Go ahead and hit this in a couple weeks, see how Brooks' knee is feeling, and maybe get a little payback. Brooks, there's a couple shots there where I was like, come on, Brooks, come on, Brooks. And he seemed to get hot late. It was like, all right, he's going to do it too little, too late. It was a good battle out there. The boys had a good scrap. The boys had a good scrap. Let's go to Ryan in Canada. He's been on for a long time. What's going on, Ryan? How we doing, boys? Shout out to Pat and AJ, boys. How we doing? Hey, shout out you, dude. Sorry about that earlier. We got caught up in a convo. Great to have you back, though. What do you want to talk about? Dude, I'm calling into your show. I mean, what else do you expect? Um, first things first, congratulations on uh, the Jeep with the Hemi, man. Watch out for those yellow jackets. They're going to get you in trouble. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I was a little bit wide over on that thing today. I appreciate you. We'll get it going. Uh, the next thing is, uh, you know, shout out to the beer growing back and also rest in peace to Chain Maxi. Thank you so much. Uh, Chain McAfee, you said rest in peace to it? Rest in peace, man. You know, the beard's back now. <laughs> No, rest in peace. Sorry, Connor. I actually had a, a massive allergic reaction to that joke. Oh. My entire neck had full blisters and bumps on it when I woke up on Saturday morning. Uh, I can't. I'm allergic to fake shit, turns out. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so don't bring it around me. I literally have broken out because of something that has happened. So I uh, appreciate the gift, Connor. Uh, but hey, of course. I was told by Zito that I'm going to have to rub some uh, fingernail nail nail polish. Polish. Nail polish, polish on, on that, that thing. thing yeah, yeah. Uh, I did not do that. And the neck is settling in here but boy it was a long weekend i i put like mud on it at one point because how bad it was sweating or be uh, uh, scratching and itchy it was but hey chain mcafee's not dead i just i'm allergic to fake stuff i found out this weekend what if it would have swore just, me just up just pending <laughs> just pending like uh, last show bingo thank you ryan what do you want to talk about now dude uh question i've been wondering for a while is obviously with the qb carousel growing every year uh more and more teams just going to get a good enough guy and lock him down for cheap for a couple of years like you saw with teddy bridgewater and you're kind of seeing like patriots do a camp so you think like people are just going to start doing this uh and then try to get a younger quarterback to kind of get drafted and put in there yeah just to kind of tie the waters like there's only so many guys out there that are going to be worth that 35 plus you know obviously aaron Rodgers is one of them but uh, I'm just saying, like, I mean, it's not like you're going to be able to get out and go and pay a guy with the ass like Jared Goff. You end up, you know, in that situation. If he was, you know, uh, given that Teddy Bridgewater contract, they're not in as much trouble. So, like, are we going to see more of those two, three-year kind of $20 million deals heading out to those guys? It depends on who it is. Patrick Mahomes just got $500 million for 10 years. I think everybody's looking for Patrick Mahomes. Everybody's looking for Aaron Rodgers. Everybody's looking for Tom Brady except for the New England Patriots because they think they just probably drafted yep. another one. But mm -hmm. it all depends on who you are. Situations are situational. You cannot be in a situation, though, where you pay a, a C quarterback – a quarterback money and that is not that's not saying golf is a c quarterback i'm just saying i think the price valuation of everything is very important you can overpay for something and not get enough in return for instance a jeep with a hemi maybe also <laughs> a quarterback in the nfl uh alex smith you could say he was potentially a holdover for patrick mahomes he was playing mvp like football though then patrick mahomes comes in there uh after sending alex smith to washington i just think everybody's looking for a guy Everybody's willing to pay for a guy. Some guys just have to prove it that they can be a guy and it doesn't work out. I, I just, it's hard to, to figure out quarterbacks in the NFL, uh, but I think if you find one, you gotta, you're going to have to pay them. Even though I'm a massive fan of the small QB contract, pay everybody else. That's just not realistic if you find a Patrick Mahomes or an Aaron Rodgers or something like that in the draft. Well, if you find a, a, a Patrick uh, Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers in the draft, yes, you know, like, I'm going to have to pay this guy after his initial rookie contract that hopefully you build up the rest of the team around him when he was on his rookie contract. But if he doesn't turn into be that guy, that franchise QB, where you pay him astronomical amounts of money, then you're searching for that guy. And guess what? They're not always available. You're not going to, there's a reason Pat Mahomes doesn't become a free agent. Who knows? We'll see what happens with Aaron, but Tom leaves new England after 20 years. Like it wasn't like someone came and could snatch Tom in his 12th season. 
Peyton leaving, though, he did become a free agent. Mm-hmm. Tom yeah. did become a free agent. Mm-hmm. Will yeah, Aaron, but Peyton's was like injured at, towards the end of his career. Like, there's not many quarterbacks that are like in year seven of oh yeah an 18 year career that become available. True. Let's go to Stephen in Massachusetts. What's going on, Stephen? Hey, what's going on, Pat? B- big uh, fan of the show. Thanks for having me on. Oh, we're a big fan of yours, Steven. Yeah, Steven. Hey, that's yeah, of the yeah. day. What do you want to talk about? Hey, Pat, uh, can I just say that uh, I've been a big wrestling fan, too, and, and I fucking love your commentary, man. It's, it's, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Steven. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Steven. Thank I appreciate you. the hell out of you, buddy. And uh, what I wanted to get into is uh, I just wanted to talk about LeBron. I'm not that big much of a fan. I think he's a stooge. How come? Why? Uh, uh, just just from the flop. I mean, I was so I was watching the Celtics game on Saturday. I mean, I am a Celtics fan. I also know if they're going to get smoked by the Nets. Yeah. But well, I mean, I, I saw like Kevin Durant. He fell down. Looked like he almost like broke his arm. Yeah, yeah. And the guy just gets right back up there. Oh, and then he like Le- LeBron, like oh, yeah. he get, he gets like clotheslined. Like I mean, I don't really think it was that that bad of a fall. But the guy's down there like crying for like for like a long time. He made it seem like. He got. He fell like Kevin Durant did. Stephen, you're thinking he's a little bit dramatic, Donner. Oh it, yeah. Yeah. Stephen doesn't like what he's doing. Now, Stephen, you got to remember up here in Boston that LeBron owns your baseball team. Okay, yeah, so have yeah, a little yeah. bit of respect. But that's right. I mean, it, this comes a couple of days after his eye gets gouged out. He gets yeah. his arm broken. You know, he could kind of be in trouble or whatever. Now. There was a stat that did get put onto the internet by an account that we could not give credit to because it was a bit vulgar. Now, Mm -hmm. and we don't know if this research is accurate, but there is actually an exact amount of seconds that each person was allegedly, we did not do this research, this came from a Twitter account that we could not give credit to because it is (laughs) ridiculous. Allegedly, Kevin Pillar, Pilar, 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 can put 36 seconds on the ground after getting hit right in the face with a 94 mile an hour baseball. Broke his nose, two black eyes, did the whole thing, probably another fractures. 78 seconds was how long Joe Burrow was down after suffering ACL, MCL, and other knee damage, which was probably his seventh or eighth hit of the season that could have done that to him. And then 80 seconds was how long LeBron was on the ground after getting poked in his eye. This guy thought he was blind. Okay, in the middle of he had a lot of confusion. It wasn't just pain, so this is a little bit of a misleading <laughs> stat. But LeBron is a little bit dramatic. Okay, he is trying to get the penalties or the fouls. He is trying to get free throws. He is trying yeah. to try to take advantage of the game as yep. much as possible. That's what the goats do in this entire thing. AJ, all right. I'm sure you have seen online like where everybody else most likely has that they said Kobe and, and Jordan tried to hide all their injuries, and LeBron's trying to let you know about them. Yeah. Well, it's a different time, okay? Yeah. It's a different time. Kobe, I'm, not, I'm listen, not saying right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what I've hear, I'm hearing out there from people. Rest in peace to Kobe, living legend. Congrats Kobe. on the Hall of Fame yeah. nod. Yeah. Kobe. Shout out to Jordan, obviously, legend. Obviously. Yeah. Go, go, go. Absolutely wow. legend. But their injuries weren't the only thing that they were not letting out, you know? We live in a much different time now. Okay, there's a what lot of say, what are you saying? What I'm saying is there's you know. a lot of other things that have to go along with mm-hmm. being a human in the spotlight nowadays as opposed to back then. So true. That's every, true. You know what I mean? If they were around now, I assume their injuries would be talked about at a very, very high level. I would assume. Now I've I don't a, think so. They because they wouldn't. They're not telling people about it. You're right. People wouldn't find out. You're right. Yeah. Well, people may find out a little bit, but it wouldn't be from them. No, yeah, of course. If, if you were Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan playing in 2021, nobody would know what your injuries were. <laughs> nobody would be able to find those out. Not, not in 2021. No, 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 no way. No way. Okay, Kobe played in this era. Uh, he did. Oh, yeah. I completely agree. He did. But this was, what, Twilight Kobe right at the end. Mm-hmm. Like, this is nothing against Kobe, okay? I'm just talking about what LeBron has had to do with – Social media just... You're saying the media is a lot harder nowadays than it was before. The media isn't just the media. Now it's It's every human. It's every human, you know? So it's like... It's way different. It is a different world. It's a much different time. And LeBron has exceeded all expectations that were placed on him. He had the highest expectations you could ever place on anybody coming out of high school. So... I absolutely am giving credit for that. But the things he has done that piss people off, he does do it on a regular basis that piss people off. (laughs) To his credit, though, I mean, if you've ever been poked in the eye, Mm -hmm. that fucking hurts. 80 seconds is pretty quick. I mean, in in MMA, if a guy gets poked in the eye, they give him five minutes. Hey, take take your time. What about the shoulder thing, though? I thought the shoulder thing, he was probably down longer than 80 seconds, wasn't he? Bro, his arm. Yeah, he dislocated his shoulder. Ripped off. What do you want him to do? We should have him take a fastball to the face and see how long it takes. That's a good idea. I don't think you should do that. 
No. LeBron no, James. No, no, no. Seems dangerous. Yeah. Something I would like to talk about. 36 seconds, though. Simone Biles landed the first ever Yurchenko double pike wow. in actual competition. Wow. Let's go. Congrats, Simone. Yeah. Still the GOAT, dude. You. Still the GOAT. I think we, you know, forget about gymnastics when it isn't the Olympic year and the Olympics did get moved or whatever because mm -hmm. of old COVID. Simone Biles somehow still the GOAT, still the champ, still breaking records. It didn't appear to be as difficult as some of the shit that she has done in the past. Mm -hmm. But whenever I heard uh, nobody's ever been able to do this, I was like, okay. So obviously Simone's still the greatest. It's, she ran, flipped through, and did like a double backflip straight leg. I don't know if that's a Yurchenko or whatever. I think, yeah, I think so. she could do a triple if she sticks with it. I, I think she'll be the first ever to do a triple Yurchenko. It looked easy, by the way. It did. Uh, yeah. She landed well, it. She's the great. <laughs> yeah. The announcers didn't sell it at all either. They acted uh, like it was very casual. They, they, they said it was the first time ever that it happened, but she did make it look so easy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they were taking into consideration history had just been made, and also a lot of dumb stooges, sports stooges, are going to see this and have no idea yeah, yeah. how hard right. what she is doing is doing right now. So I do what you're right. I wish the commentators would put it over a little right. bit, but Simone Biles still Simone Biles, AJ. Well, is she going to get the chance to do that in the Olympics? Are they happening? Do we oh, yeah. know? Yes. I think this is qualifying. This summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're coming yeah, up. There's... I, it seems like every week something's coming out about yeah. someone saying the Olympics should should not happen. Japan's dealing with some Just stuff. Just watch that golf. Is it COVID? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> COVID oh, no. related? I thought we beat it. We did. I think we did, yeah. Japan's a little, a little behind. Japan's an island, right? A bunch of them. I assume they would have that. They would have had that thing isolated quicker than anybody. They were in the front of it, right? Weren't they? Besides China? It was Korea, I think, right? Then uh, Korea, Korea, then Korea, and then Italy. It was Italy? Italy yeah. Italy? Because I had people from Italy tweeting me when I talked about COVID, telling me their story. Just wait. We were like you a month and a half ago, and then our entire world shut down, blah, blah, blah. You guys should be taking it serious. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. We're not doing that. And then all of a sudden, everything that was said in that one letter was the turn of events going forward. But I think Korea had a big thing. I think it was Italy, mm. Korea. I don't know about yeah, Because there's videos from Italy of those people walking around in hazmat suits yeah. like, right when it started. And guns, right? When oh, people yeah. Huh? Guns saying, hey, mm -hmm. get back in your house. Korea basically. had the net, right? Wasn't that Korea where the, the guy got... I think it was China. That was, that China. was China. I think okay. China had the net. But yeah, that was insane. I don't know about Japan. I don't think I've heard anything about Japan. No. I, I think Japan and China do not like each other. Though. Oh, no. No, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. Right. So I was right there. I don't like to dive into international relations, but... Yeah, that goes back on a long time, China and Japan's That's feet. pretty well known, you're saying? Uh-huh. Okay, good. It arrived January 2020. So, like, that was... No, so now there's reports coming out of when it actually started and everything mm -hmm. like November? that. November? Yeah, 2019, yeah. November or whatever. Oh, wow. Allegedly. That was trending yesterday for, like, two hours or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. I don't know enough about it. All I know is we fucking beat that song. <laughs> yeah! And if I would have... You know, really, maybe relax the protocols in this office so we didn't have social distancing or anything like that and potentially just toss around COVID there for a while, mm -hmm. which wouldn't have been safe at all. Mm -hmm. I probably have a Super Bowl ring right now. Yeah. You're right. People forget that. Something to think We're getting about. tested once a week. Yep. Imagine it. Twice a week there for a bit whenever it got all backed up. You remember? There was like That's... a run. There was like a one-month run where... The test results just were, yeah. like, it was no longer, they weren't coming. Like, you might as well not, they were coming, like, four days later or something. Like, it was like, holy shit, we got to start adding more testing yeah. so we can keep track of this whole thing. You get tested, and what are you supposed to do? Just sit? Yeah, I guess you were supposed to just yeah. sit. quarantine until. For four days or whatever. It's like, pfft. And that's so what we it was did. We really went down hard for to NXT. find a test. It was really, so we had to, like, find places. What's that, AJ? That's what we did at NXT. And we rode down, got tested the day we got there, and then hung out, stayed apart, stayed quarantined, then they... They sent a text to say we're in the clear. I was in, yeah, we were in that protocol for two months there, oh, yeah. three months. That's we're still time. kind of in it. Now we're back in it, yeah, yeah. again. But if we would have just, you know, tossed COVID around, mm -hmm. which happened in a lot of other buildings. Yeah. I don't have a super boring. Son of a bitch. Ah, dang it. Maybe next year. You'd be on a boat too with Tom. Oh, yeah. Not you would have. I would have been along. Come on. Time. I probably would have been offensive line, but <laughs> imagine your face when the Lombardi's being tossed in the air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, what if I die? <laughs> what if I sprint it off another boat? Yeah. <laughs> no. Then uh, that that daughter Lombardi maker. Oh, jeez. Oh, Tom throwing it disgraced our family's name. Then that drunk punter catching it and going into that river <laughs> spit on our entire legacy. That would have been awesome. But instead, since we were too good, too diligent, couldn't happen, didn't happen. We beat COVID doing this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now remember for another 12 days, you still cannot move in Indianapolis, everywhere else on earth you can, but in 12, 12 days, you'll be able to do Indianapolis. Woo. Shout out to the mayor. There's Things no way that guy set. gets voted back in, right? No way. There's no way that guy. Oh. Now, I don't think any mayor is necessarily in a good spot with their people or after coming out of the uh, COVID, but I, I think Indiana is about done with this guy. Yeah, it's time <laughs> to bring in rainwater. Make it happen. I forgot about him during the gubernatorial oh, debates. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. How long are uh, – that, that was governor. I don't know if Rainwater's going to try to do mayor. Um, but how long are mayorships? I have no idea. Two years? Depends where you are, right? This guy probably rewrote a lot to put himself in for 10. He might have. Four? Four-year term, sorry. So is, he, is the mayor going against the governor? No, he, he wants uh, – the he, governor says, yeah, do whatever you got. The governor of this entire time – Everywhere outside of Indianapolis is basically, you know, once world started opening up, businesses were allowed to operate. Now only allowed outside, mass, everything like that. Downtown Indianapolis, though, had it locked down, locked down for still. Almost. I mean, still kind of is. Still yeah. kind of Yeah, I live 20 minutes north and it's wide open. Yeah. Yeah, but every, every business in Indianapolis is just like. Getting crushed. Hey, how come people can drive 10 minutes one way or the other and they can just go do whatever, but we can't do anything? Is there any reason? Science. Okay, all right. What about their science? Is it different over there? Oh, they don't care about it. All right. Oh. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for burning our city down. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for doing what Thank you do. Thank you, did. science. Remember, there was like a seven-month period where you walked down. There's just human shit all oh, over yeah. the, oh, yeah. all over the city Brutal. of Indianapolis. A lot of restaurants shut down down there. God put the porta johns in for the homeless people. That was very yeah. nice of him to that do helps. that. Very nice of him. Yeah. That fucking. I was eating a steak dinner. I saw poop on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You had your... Uh... Victory steaks. <laughs> Not much victory there. I do. I have zero envy, though, for local oh, yeah. politicians, though. Zero envy. Like, that mayor... He's getting a lot of heat right now on this show strictly because the city's still not open and we see everywhere else seems to be open. So what do we got? Is our science Come different? On. Maybe it is. I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like it's working everywhere else. I assume he has to answer to a lot of people, though, at the mayor world, right? Yeah. Political affiliation, party, this, that, 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 that whole thing. He probably is nowhere near in control as much as we all are blaming him to be. But it is, he does seem to be a fall guy potentially. Here That's what there. happens when you run for mayor. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Make it happen if you don't want the heat. You know? Good thing I got this Jeep too, because uh, Meridian here looks like uh, Mars Jeep. with the uh, <laughs> bottles. That's great. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's great. I bet you get good gas mileage, right? Well, actually, this will be the first time I find out. I filled that thing all the way up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm going to do the math. I'm going to figure it out here. 20 gallons, though, in that thing. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, she was thirsty. She was thirsty. Take the top off. Take the top off and the doors. Already gone. <laughs> Top's already gone. Come on. Oh, good. Are the doors off? Doors are not, because they're uh, rhino-lined, so it's a little thick. I, I, I would have to, like, I think beat, you know, because it's uh, you got to pull the pin, the plug on it. It would be a little. Uh, yeah. It's way better with the doors off, though. Uh, this one. It actually kind of looks more like a tank with yeah, it. Yeah, I think you got to leave them on. Because it's rhino liner, you know? It's like. It, I'm talking about the feel. It get, driving with the doors off is a lot better than driving with them on. I agree. Letting that leg hang. Yeah. Not me. I mean, I need that for the break, but I would definitely take the doors off. <laughs> well, I actually have a clutch, so I actually have to use my left. Oh, yeah. You're right. You could, I'm glad. You, I'm proud of you being able to still drive a stick. What are you talking about? Yeah. I just I assumed you forgot. Can we mount a turn in the back? I also drive a, a motorcycle. You know, that's a lot of shifting as well. So I think that is kind of keeping uh, kept yeah. me in the game a little bit. Nick hopped in, tried to drive the thing, stalled it out, immediately upon hopping in. I had my bird dog's clogs on. It yeah. took a little while. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this guy was in a car club. Yeah, he was in a car club, which is very I mean, as we're sitting here, I was like, Whoa, 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 what's going on here, Nick? But time strange. I've never driven a Hemi. You gotta kind of you gotta kind of attack it. Yeah, first time in a hemi, that's all. You gotta kind of attack that thing. And I did almost I felt it kind of giving out a little bit as I was leaving 
And if I did that in front of all those people who already hated me, it would have been a little bit of trouble. So I had to, whoa, 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 whoa. I had to save that thing a little bit. But hey, yeah. thank you for driving with two feet responsibly. Well, that's what you do whenever you have to drive a manual. Yeah, you yeah, have not to. Like, not like some other people. Yeah, you don't do that for just standard automatic. Right, yeah. Hmm. You should see me, though, drifting gears. It's like I'm bad. I don't know. And this is limited research, and it's just my own personal <laughs> experience. But I think Hemi engines, you know, the gears, it's, it's big ass. I think they normally have short sticks, like it's a shorter stick a little bit. This Jeep one, you know, is a long guy. That's the Easy. best. That, I love that about some Wranglers. They have the big, huge stick. It's like you're driving a semi. Yeah, exactly. It feels like I'm floating gears at this point because it really is like you got to get in there, get out of there. You got to be aggressive with it. You got to. It's like the size of that mic, right? And there. there's six of them. You know, there's six gears. There's six gear now. He's a mm -hmm. big boy. That reverse, though, way the fuck over. I mean, I got to. Oh, put that thing in i'm almost in the passenger seat down there <laughs> like here we go dude it's uh can't really text though kind of a problem ah uh, it's tough really you'll have it for another four days potentially maybe sure. it doesn't fit in the garage either right <laughs> i i took it in the barn actually because i took the roof off yeah i took the roof off and it's a very sophisticated roof it's like all right don't need that as soon as i took it off it felt like old Mother Nature was like, all right, now's the time. Came in. <laughs> right on him. My wife sent me a text. The, the app says nothing, nothing, nothing. My wife sends me a text while she was on her way out. She's like, just got some rain, by the way. I'm like, ah, fuck. So I run out there. I guess this thing's got a fridge in it. It's got some boom booms in it. I yeah. mean, this thing, leather. it's got leather. I have no idea if that's waterproof. I'd assume it is because it's a Jeep or whatever. I did not have time to spray my own on, though, to find out. So I took that thing down to the barn. By the way, doing that, I got to take her a little bit. Oh, off road in a bit. Yeah, I got a text from Gertie. It was like, hey, that fucking photo looked Jurassic, dude. Such a good, <laughs> such a good description mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. So I took a little bit off roading. Took a little bit off roading. Drove past one of the neighbor's houses who throws his dog shit into my property and also has a pipe from his yard into my property to drain his backyard. <laughs> oh, nice. Flood yeah, your lawn up there. Very nice, back. that guy. So I, right as soon as I got in front of uh, or behind his house, I, I want to let the Hemi eat a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And then a couple of the neighbors who I'm friends with, they were like, yeah! I get real <laughs> deuce up the top thing there. Jeep waved everybody this morning, by the way. A lot of Jeep waves. Hell yeah. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Gotta do it. I can't wait till you run into somebody because you're so worried about giving the Jeep waves. It almost, it almost happened. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking. I was in neutral, and somebody was driving, and I wanted to go ahead and, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. All right, here we go. Got to get going. It was quite a moment. When you don't drive a manual for a long time, it's almost hard to find them. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, I bet. You forget how much. There's a lot going on. I mean, you are, <laughs> you're playing drums in a band at this point. You yeah. know what I mean? You got to really pay attention. I had those hokas on. Oh, couldn't no. feel the clutch. <laughs> couldn't, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't feel the clutch. You know, I don't know. Because if you do it, you can feel the exact moment that the gears are actually, you know, you're actually doing it. Those hokas were tough. I couldn't fucking, <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't. I was like, oh, God, I went barefoot. I was like, here we go. All right, there we go. A little feel with the Jeep here with a Hemi. It's a good life, a stupid life. I'm getting out of here. My wife's out of town. I got to go fucking hold it down with the animals. Oh, oh. Mm. Me in the zoo, AJ. I don't know how you do it with man. kids. A lot of responsibility this morning. I had to take them out to shit and piss and give them treats. I was n nervous as all hell out there. From taking your dogs out? No, not just taking the dogs out. Making sure they're fed, making sure mm. their entire, like their being is, yeah. is something. You know what I mean? Quality of life. Yeah, you don't ever yeah. do that? I do it, yeah. I take them out. But we're talking like all day yeah. here, all night. How many you, animals yeah, all together? It's on you. There's seven animals yeah. all together. Yeah. That, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Different foods. Yeah, all have different foods. <laughs> different parts of, of the house have different some sleep schedules. Some can't be schedules. fed together. Like, yeah, there's some <laughs> allergies on some of them. I mean, this is a it's fucking insane. thing. I know you have human pets or whatever, but I, I got a... This morning, the cats all like... They were like waking me up almost. Like, hey, it's fucking treat time, dude. We've been, we've been working all night. Okay, it's time to go do this. Then I let the dogs out. Chuck sees a deer, goes into the oh, woods, oh, into the woods. So as I'm going and getting the cats all their treats, you know, good morning, meow, good morning, meow, good morning to all of them. How yeah. you doing? I go back outside. Valerie's standing there. Chuck's nowhere to be found. I'm like, of course, 
Of course, I lost the fucking dog. So then I have to go poke my head in the woods. He's trapped. I got to go move some trees so his little ass can come. Then he gets through. I smack him on the butt or whatever. He looks back at me like, bitch. And I'm like, all right, get your fucking ass in the house. So I had to get him food. I had to get him water. I had to do the whole goddamn thing. I take a shower. I come back out. Chuck is standing in front of the door. And I'm like, of course. Of course you didn't go to the bathroom when you were out there. So now I got to let him back out. Sees another animal, chases it, said, fuck it, shut the door, let him run away. All right. <laughs> he comes back, shits on the sidewalk, comes Jeez. in the house, then I leave and go to work. How you doing? Keep it moving. That was my morning. So it is difficult. All right. I got bad attitudes. I got <laughs> stubborn, spoiled pets expecting everything. And it is 100% dependent upon me for them to live to see Tuesday. And I have no idea how you do it as an actual parent is what I'm saying. Val does not like those an allergy pills either. She hates them. She knows right away. She hates them. She finds them. Oh, yeah. Spits them out. I wrapped them up in cheese like six times. Does not, not care. a chance. No, it does not care. I tried to give her a treat this morning. You know, wasn't a good enough treat. She sniffed it and moved her head. <laughs> it has dog written right on top of it. So I got to go into another one. Oh, that's Chuck. Sorry, Chuck. You have this one. Then I have to go to this other one. Uh, that one, she's allergic to something in there. So I got to move that one. Let's go to that one. I put it down in front of her and she smells it. Sits back down and then she takes it and like walks away. Like, I guess. Yes. Like, what is the fucking deal, dude? What is the deal? We have the Furbo, you know? Over there by where all the treat is. You know what a Furbo is? No. So it's basically something that turns on and starts recording. Then as soon as there's any the movement, it's for your animals. And you can throw pets and, or you can throw treats and shit out of it. And you oh, can, yeah, I've seen that. Like in Sky Mall, they have it. Yeah, and you can, there yes, you know. exactly. They have Sky Mall. And also in everybody's house, basically, that has animals now at this point. But like, yeah. you, yeah. We but, all do. Yeah, basically, yeah. everybody. You I just can, hand feed them. Need a treat? Here you go, bud. Right from my hand. That's when you're not home because you can speak to the animals. They can hear you. You can still give treats and you can see them. It has like, it has very 1080 almost. Like, oh, yeah. So Sam, by the way, she gets a, an alert of all this that is happening. She gets to watch along from where she, little pop in on the furbo, ha ha, you know, okay. <laughs> Listen, don't need you. Did not feed the raccoons last night, by the way. Ha ha, yeah, <laughs> you, know, you gotta do that tonight. You know, it was all hell broke loose this morning, dude. I have no idea how she does it every day. I have no idea how you do it every day. And I just hope these things survive until mom yeah. gets home. That's all I'm hoping at this point. You got it. I, I think you'll be fine, but it does sound like a lot. And it, and it does seem like a huge pain if you have to separate animals and then give different foods, different medications. I mean, that's a full-time gig almost. That doesn't even take into consideration the frogs. Okay, yeah. well, frogs have their own. You put it on a spoon, you put it up at the top, but you gotta make sure that the one fat ass frog doesn't eat all the food because it has been doing that. It is double the size of the other frog. Oh, so you gotta make sure you hand feed the other one. Oh, no. I mean, it's a full thing, dude. Okay, and I haven't even started talking about the deer. I didn't even give them anything. I mean, it's fucked, I'm fucked. I gotta get out of here. Hammer downs in nine minutes. AJ, what do you got this afternoon? A little knockout with the kid? Well, yeah, I'll probably play a little knockout, a little practice, figure it out. I'm, I'm on my own all week, too, so we're good. Whoa. All right, we'll, we'll share, uh, <laughs> we'll share ideas, you know what I mean? <laughs> share, we'll share some war stories about what it's like. If that dog runs away this morning, oh. goes looking for its mom, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> we got a homeward bond situation. Oh. Bark twice if you're Milwaukee. Imagine Sam coming back. That's a different movie. But imagine <laughs> Sam coming back and just being like, hey, I hate to break, dude. Chuck's gone. I Chuck. thought he was going to find you. I thought you were going to bring him back. He's Ch Chuck here. left a week ago. He has not been back since. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so where he was deep in the woods too. His little ass can like. How do you get? How would you get him back? I had to go and like step on fucking like in and like open a space. He was stuck like inside of like uh, like a brush, like a bunch of shit or whatever. I was like, God, come on. He's like, yeah. He's like happy, obviously. Yeah. He's a little strut. He's like, I just punked some deer or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> Little motherfucker, you're scared to death. You're scared me to death, dude. Imagine if you're gone, I'm dead. You don't even know. You have a little fun. I'm a dead man if you're missing. <laughs> mm -hmm. My wife will kill me, dude. You don't even know. Your mom, my wife, will fucking kill me. You need to get your ass back in the house. Then he walks in, threatens the shit all over the place. I have to put him back. <laughs> it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. If he dies, just make sure you go buy one that looks just like him and see if you can yeah. fool her. I would. Yeah, or just lie and say dog. like, hey, our house got broken into. Stole they the wanted they, they wanted the, the queen dog. Right now, my car is probably being stolen. The, the Jeep oh, yeah. is probably. The I checked on it a couple times. We're good. The refrigerator. The probably cooler is gone. It's not a cooler. It's a refrigerator. Please. Cool. Well, shit! I didn't know that. I thought yeah. it was just a cooler. No, no it's a goddamn fridge. You open that thing up. You got some nice ice cold, and then there's a cutting board back there too for really? a blue shark. Yeah, yeah. that's no joke. Goddamn! You're gonna use all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs>
What was that, Bob? <laughs> You're going to use all these great accessories. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't know how to turn the fridge on or the boom booms back air. It seems to be a little bit heavy in the front. Would like to turn on the booms yeah. in the back. Don't worry about the boom booms. Those are definitely gone. That, that was stolen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If this was like 2000, yeah. mid 2000s, I think it would have been gone a lot quicker. I don't think anybody knows what that boom even looks like back there. No, yeah. And it doesn't work either, so. <laughs> It was a good purchase. All right. See you, AJ. Hammer Downs in six minutes at youtube.com forward slash Hammer Down. We appreciate you so much. Probably a massive giveaway tomorrow. Be a friend. Tell a friend. OJ Howard joins the show for the yeah. first time. And another conversation. Bye. Have a good one. Pray for me if you can. Hope my house doesn't burn down by either, you know, just happenstance or my wife having to do it because I lost an animal. Cheers. Take care. See you, Mignogna. Good show. Good show. Yeah.